by her, Gal, for your an inspiration. Here you are, right on the dot to the very last. Yeah, which is more than be said for Audrey. Oh, this time tomorrow, you'll both be having a lie-in. Aye. Well, you probably welcome it after you do tonight. Listen, we don't want folk making a fuss. If anybody knows how four crown here are fixed for cash, it is me. Just a few friendly faces, a few drinks, that'll be fine for us. Understood. Right, let's get on with it then. Yeah. Last time I've been putting this on. You get hardly an advertisement for your own products, are you, son? Hey? For a supermarket manager, you've not got much tin. Assistant supermarket manager. Probably forever. I'm up against a woman, Jack. You, you know, you miss that when you're married. Men's talk, you know. Go on, then. Well, for the job. My main competition is a woman. Oh, yeah. Elaine Fennick hyphen Greer. Oh, well, girl, as you know, I've not got a chauvinistic bone in my body, but these women have certainly put one over on us, you know. With this feminist routine. See, we give them a bit of equality and they run away with it. I mean, look how Liz McDonald's got on, eh? See, it's all changed nowadays, son. They get all the breaks. Us men got no chance, that's for sure. Cheers, Jack, cheers. I'm really ready to face the day now. Yeah, any time, Curly, us men have got to stick together. Speaking of which, just how long are us men going to stick it together here? Oh, it's up to our Vera. She'll let me know when my manhood's out of danger. Doctor reckons about... ten days or so. Ten days? Anyway, all this business of mumps and men, I thought it was a bit of a misconception. No conception at all, according to what you said. <laughs> Come on, then. <laughs> there we go. Ah, uh, how is he? Oh, he's been a right little soldier, hasn't he, eh? Hey, you've got to be extra careful, though, you know, Vera. I mean, I know from when Martin caught mumps off Nicky. Yeah, well, don't worry. I'm making our Jack keep his distance. <laughs> <laughs> he's staying next door with Curly for time being. If we're going to stay with Ivy and Don, you know, but I don't think timing were right. What do you mean? Well, I think they're going through a bit of a bad patch. Era, Ivy's and Don's marriage is one long bad patch. I mean, you're a mate, you should know. According to our Jack, things aren't right between them. Wonder why? Morning, Alf! Last day today, you know. Yeah, oh! Hey, me and Martin will have to come in shifts to your party tonight, if that's all right. Best way you can manage, love. It's, it's only a casual do. How does it feel? Well, much like any other day, you know, really. <laughs> I've a lot to do before I hand over to Brendan Scott, you know. I don't want to leave Alton behind, to do. Shall we be seeing you tonight, then, uh, Vera? Uh, no, Alf. Uh, well, I can't leave Tommy. Oh, I see. Well, no problem, we understand. I'll see you tonight, Alf. Well, let's see how she goes, eh? I mean, she might hate it after a few weeks, and then we can all think again. Yeah. Last purchase, eh, Kent? Last? Off me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't tell me, tell me, what's this new landlord of mine like, then? Oh. Hey, I might present him with that outstanding list of alterations and repairs, see if I can get any joy out of him. No, I've kept that flat in very good order. Uh, well, anyway, it's no longer your problem after today. You know, Brendan Scott is going to find it very difficult running a one-man show. He won't get the back of got at better buys, apart from Deirdre. All the responsibility will fall on him. Mm. Right, well, anyway, I must be off. Mm. Bye. they will not find it easy, you know. He certainly won't find it easy. Hey, mm. I wonder what she's saying to her. I don't know. You better watch his step, though. Uh, ladies, mm? the idea of appointing two of you to do this task is to half the time it's supposed to be done in. Oh, sorry, Mr. Watts. Look, we're just a bit concerned about Miss Fenwick. She's just encountered Sam the man. Oh, <laughs> has she? <Yeah. laughs> What's all this, then? Stop work meeting? No, 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 no. The ladies here were concerned about you. Well, it's Sam, the trolley man. He gets a bit fresh. I mean, it's all talk. He's tried to on me with all of us every now and then. Yes, I imagine he has. Mm. He just asked me what I look for in a man. What did you say? I said hair, for starters. <laughs> <laughs> I suggest you ladies adopt a similar line. You'll soon get the message. <laughs> Give you. Enough. Oh, but look, I'm married to the man. His interpretation of enough tends to leave you feeling severely short changed. We've got plenty to cover some drinks and some eats. Now put your money away, oh. lady. Fine, please, Bert. 
<laughs> Jim! About what I had to say for myself the other day. I didn't mean to offend you. Well, what exactly did you mean to do then, Audrey, eh? I'm sorry. I mean, young Steve and his troubles. What would I know about them anyway? Well, it always seemed to me, Audrey, that you didn't know very much about anything at all anyway. Thank you, Bet. Oh, I bother. I don't it to me. They never shops from there again, eh? <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, Jim, you know about this deal we're having tonight, do you? Yes, Alfie, I've heard about it. Thank you very much. They come on the go, don't they? <laughs> I remember when they first arrived in the street at McDonald's, he was a television repairman then. You remember, Audrey? Yes, yes, I remember. Bet, bet, a word. You're right with you, Jack. Anyway, what are we having? Well, I know what I'm going to have, what I always have. You're going to make an appearance at the shop to relieve Deirdre. Oh, oh you never change, do you? Oh. Oh, tech for the others, Ralph. Yeah. Hi. How slave it is, this a lunchtime tradition for him. He's tight and he's hot. Uh, Yours will be ready in a minute, love. They'd have gone under without me, wouldn't you, uh, Ben? Indeed. Well, before I commit myself to following such a time honoured tradition, I think I ought to sample the quality. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. On first impressions, I, I dare say I can offer you my patronage. And it's the first impressions that count, is it not? Took the words right out of my mouth. Brandon. Now yeah, then, Jacko. Uh, it's about tonight, love. What about it? Well, what I was thinking, I could swap with Raquel. I mean, the girls know all about the party business, don't even. I did fingers and thumbs, I'd be in the way. So, what I thought, I would put it to you that I have night off. You can but ask, Jacko. What do you say? No. What do you mean, no? Let me put it another way. No. Yeah, well, I'm not feeling 100% there, you see. I'm a bit worried. I might have got this mumps off our Tommy. I mean, after all, he did have it a few days before we realised. I mean, I could be spreading it about now without even knowing. What if you have got it, Jacko? The last thing you'll be capable of is spreading it around. By the way, have you met Brandon Scott? He's taking over from Alf. Never disturb a man while he's eating, but. You're out there, gentlemen. About the time you brought around. Hiya. Yeah. What does it say? The court case is Monday. Wonder if Kev's heard. This coming Monday? Oh well, never mind. We'll start something out so we can be with you. We? You don't mean you and Dad? Steve, he'll want to be there. And it'll look better for you if we're both there. Yeah, until he opens his mouth and decides to tell the magistrates where to get off. No, he wouldn't do that. Well, we can never be sure, though, can we, Mum? And I can't take the risk. There's no way I'm having him there, Mum. No way. Customer didn't turn up to collect oh. it. Now he's got to bring them all. Well, I'm not complaining. They're absolutely gorgeous. You did it yourself. Well, without books, was it? Right. Oh, now what is all this? Uh, Tracy brought them home with her. She's done them herself. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, very. But what did I say, dear? I said no expense, no bother from anybody. Oh well, no. They are the, the lovely they... Tracy, but he shouldn't have bothered, love. Hey, Audrey, come and look at these. Look at what? Oh, I see. Who are they for? They're for us. They're from Deirdre and Tracy. Really? Oh, I don't know what to say. Oh, oh. Actually, we've, we've had some good times working together, haven't we, Deirdre? We have. I, I know I've been all caught up in us leaving, but now the day's finally come, I feel... I feel... I don't know what to feel. Oh, now, now, now. Now, come on. Come and help me out to the car with that uh, bacon slicer. My bacon slicer. I'm keeping it as a memento, a small memento. There's nothing small about that rusty old thing. What, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to keep it. Keep it where? You're not bringing that smelly old thing into the house, Al. Audrey, there is nothing smelly or rusty about oh. it. I've kept it in ideal condition. 
and in, in line with health and safety standards. Now, are you going to help me with it or not? I certainly am not. No, I'm not going to get bait and fat on all of my lovely clothes. Oh, all right, I'll carry it. Oh. Myself, then. You, you take the flowers. Oh, right, I will. Oh, oh they are lovely. Oh, do you know, it was really thoughtful of you girls. You shouldn't have, honestly. I'm glad you did. <laughs> Cigarettes, sweets, packet and loose. Can I help you at all? Hmm? No, 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 no. It's fine, it's fine. Uh, it's greetings cards, stationery. Well, was it something in particular you're looking for? I see you stock a line in box chocolates. Do you sell many? Yes. Quite a few. Um, well, because it is the end of the week and uh, we do have some more in on Tuesday. Oh, oh. Delivery Tuesday. Excuse me? Hmm? Oh, no, just ignore me. Just, I'm browsing. I, I, I'm Brendan Scott, the uh, new proprietor of the... Alf's Minimarket. <laughs> well, we're not exactly in opposition, but we're bound to double up on the odd item. Oh, I, I hope you don't mind. I'm just doing a, a rough inventory. Give us a copy. Save us a job. Oh. <laughs> no, it's, it's sketchy. No, it's just to give me a vague idea. Well, if you've got the time, we're open again all day tomorrow. Give you a much better idea. Oh, uh, are you about to close? Ten minutes ago, officially. Oh, re oh really? Good. Fine. Thank you. Yes, that's uh, early closing. We do start at 5 a.m. Ah, oh, up with the birds. We wake them, actually. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, I, I won't uh, hold you up any longer. Rita Sullivan, Mavis Wilton. Oh. Mavis. Rita. I'm sure Alf had a good few years left in him yet. Better the devil you know, eh, Mavis? Oh, Mr. Watts, um, shouldn't there have been an announcement that the store will be closing shortly? What? Oh, yes, I was just about to do it when you stopped me. Oh, fine. Mm. Oh, a Wednesday. Could you make sure that the office is set up for interviews? You know, enough seating, coffee, water and so forth. What interviews? Ours. I've just been informed they've been brought forward. Do you have a problem with that? No. No, not at all. No, I'm, I'm, um, I'm more than prepared. Yes, well, I'm raring to go myself. All the best, then. Yeah, yeah, all the best. Break a leg. Hmm. Oh, you've done a good job there, Mrs Brennan. Thank you. You can go home if you like when you finish that. Better buys will be closing in 15 minutes. Please make your way to the checkout. Thank you. Look, next time I didn't see you there. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you. Do you care for a wee mint? No, I don't uh, accept sweets from strangers. Strangers? Well, we could always do something about that, couldn't we, Ivy? <laughs> there, you're a good lad, you're a good lad. Come in and have a sit there down. Neither, no, lads, I can't. Now you've got to be back at work in a minute. Look. I just want to give you these and say something. What are you on about? Well, reception you got at our place when you're looking for somewhere to sit. Get over. Come in and have a sit down. <laughs> hey, Luke, I'm sorry that Curly's not really set up for entertaining now. You sit me down there and I'll just turn this down. The fact yeah. is that things between me and Ivy are not the way that she likes to present them. But, you see, I only came back to house, not to Ivy. It was convenient. Her in one room, me and other. I thought she understood that, but she seems to cling to the idea that things could work out different. Now, your stay was just the excuse she was looking for. Yeah, hey, lad, lad, well set up here, aren't I? Truth or known, I think Curly's happy with a bit of company. Well, let's face it, Don. You and Ivy, not so different. Half the marriages in the country. I think, yeah. I know it, can. Here he is, the worker. Thank you. Tough day, son. Hi. Yeah, very. <laughs> These executives, they don't know what work is, do they? I mean, they sit there lounging about in the big offices. Here, get this one down here, kid. Shouldn't you be at work, Jack? You know, that was amazing. Could hear our Vera from here, then. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm on this one. 
Hey, hey, so come, on. come on, you donkey! Oh. Yo this horse should light the ground, but it's struggling to find the pace as they come down round the final turn. And the goofer goes on Yeah, can I speak to Les McDonald, please? Just hang on. Les McDonald. Hi, it sounds busy. Oh, yeah, it is a bit. Oh, well, uh, sorry, I don't think. Uh, I was just after a quick chat with Steve. You know what I mean? I mean, I know he's keeping his distance and all that, love, but I'm still interested in what happens to him, you know? I mean, has he, uh, has he found out when he's going to court or what? Yeah, it's uh, Monday. It's nice of him to tell me. Well, he only got the letter today. Are you going? Oh, of course I'm going. Well, so am I. You can count on me. Um, listen, can you can you put him on? He's down at the Rovers. Oh, is he, um... Was he thinking of calling in the White Pass or what? I don't know. Look, go and find him and sort it out between you. You think it'd be worth my while, aren't you? I'm coming! Look, I've got to go. Yeah, yeah, listen, I understand. He doesn't want me there, OK? I can't talk about it now. Yeah, later then, eh? Yeah, later. Cheers, Jack. Ciao, Ciao. 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 About time. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Roberts have entered the building. Everybody, our guests of honour have arrived. Jack, will you get them a... Jack, the usual, is it, Audrey? Yes, please, Bert. All closed up, Alf. Aye, that's it. The end of an era. Oh. Yes, what I think you probably found when you inspected the property that it could stand, let's say, a few improvements. Well, I'll be rather concentrating on the shop for the first few months, but uh, when the next lease period is up for renewal, we well, can review the state of the flat and the rent. Ah, yes, oh, yeah, we meet again. Oh, yeah. oh you have met. <laughs> no, don't, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, it's uh, Mavis. Right, right, and Rita, yes. Excuse me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I was just wondering, now that the interviews have been moved forward, whether yeah. that's got any significance. I mean, now that it's Wednesday, does that mean that the board have more or less made up its mind? Oh, well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it, Norman? Who can say if, as one career in shopkeeping ends, another can't be launched? You mean you've not heard now yet, Curly? Oh, well, that's all in the lap of the gods, isn't it, Norman? You never did get married, Norman, did you? No, no, excuse me. Do you know, on reflection, Brendan, I'm glad it was you and not me, because after only a week as area manager, I now know that I've found Alfred Robert Shop more than uh, restricting. Restricting? You don't know the half of it. Bad sportsmanship is a very ugly characteristic. Can I have some service, please? Oh, who asked her? Oh, I am like that. Hello, look, come over here. <laughs> Looks like I got the right place. Oh, I'm glad you got it. You know, Audrey, don't you? Oh, I'm thoughtful of you to be here, Vivian. Wouldn't have missed it. Uh, and everybody, this is Vivian Barford. Oh. She's one of the leading lights with Watts. Oh. Oh. What? <laughs> Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders. Oh, <laughs> now, don't say you don't know about that. Bro. Well, it soon will do. Listen, if you've got an enrolment form, get him signed up because he's just bought my shop. Yes. <laughs> come to think of it, nearly everybody is here. Is in trade. Yes. yes. Well, we do tend to gravitate towards <laughs> one another. It would seem to be the perfect opportunity to make a rather special announcement. Oh, no. Al, you may be hanging up your apron, but we at Warts had a secret meeting without you. What we unanimously decided was to make you an honorary life member. Oh, well, <laughs> I, 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 
Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, that is wonderful. Well, you deserve it, Alf. He was, after all, one of our founding members. Oh, now, you don't know any permanent cure for wolves, do you? Oh. So you didn't manage to catch Alf before he closed up for the last time, eh? Well, I told me I had a long sleep, you know. Mind you, I needed it. <laughs> Are you sure you can spare it? Uh, well, look, I'll, I'll just keep a bit for myself, eh? And what about Ivy? Eh? Ah, oh, well, we'll get some more in the morning. How's this little fella, then? Well, keep away if you haven't had mumps. <laughs> can put a fella out of action, you know. And Ivy would never forgive me if it did. <laughs> uh, excuse me. There's something going on in this house, yeah, you know. Well, yeah, Smell well, the atmosphere. Yeah. Well, I'm to be Man, she takes her for granted, yeah, you know. I told her with this it, afternoon. I did, yes. Right, see you then. He wants to pull his socks up. Sorry about that, Vera. Now, oh. what else you need? Uh, and a couple of eggs. A couple of eggs, yeah. I think I'll do a lot for you. So, where did you say Ivy was? With a secret admirer? I think she's at some <laughs> meeting for church or something. Yeah, well, she'd say that, wouldn't she? Yeah. Oh, sorry, love. Right. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the stuff, love. I'll see ya. Bye. And I would like to thank everybody who's helped me through the years. I mean, there's uh, Ivy Brennan, and of course, Deirdre Barlow. Couldn't have done it without you, Deirdre. <laughs> and lastly, my wife. <laughs> oh, as usual. Yeah. Well, she's just about to start a real job now. She's going to uh, give me her experience of living without having to work. <laughs> uh, no, it has been. It's been a marvellous few years with you, and uh, it's been a great privilege to serve you all. And I will remember each and every one of you. Oh, that reminds me. Jack. Yes. Uh, I've got some fizzy stuff out there on ice. Will you uh, do the honours? <laughs> oh, damn timing is everything. The drinks are on out. Uh, hey, hey, hey. Just, just one each, you know. We are retiring. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on before you start. Just in case nobody else is saying anything, I am. Audrey, Alf. I just want to say that Mavis and I are certainly going to miss looking through our window and seeing you there. Because you've always been there, Alf. You know, not just for that last loaf of bread or emergency bottle of wine. You've been there as a friend and good neighbour for most of us. And that little flat above your shop has been a refuge for anybody in trouble. Mm -hmm. And in happier times, you've given us ladies away. <laughs> in the nicest possible sense, of course. <laughs> uh, Bet, Deirdre, Mavis. <laughs> and for me personally, Alf, since being best man for Len Fertile for our wedding, I couldn't have had a more loyal or a better friend. Thanks, Alf. And I'm sure I speak for everybody here when I say, Audrey, Alf, we wish you a very long, a very happy and a very healthy retirement. Yeah. 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 Now, come on, where's them bubbles, you promise? Yeah. 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 Is Ivy not coming? Uh, no, some meeting at church, I think. Is everything all right? What, at church, eh? At home. It's just that Vera said something about Jack Oh, going Vera, no, everything's as it always is, girl. No news to report, no major developments. Oh, that's what I said to Vera. Here we are, folks. Something for the whole. Where are you? Come and visit our mercy. Out with Jack. Jack, isn't it to the gents, look? Well, that's very impressive. Better, did you make it yourself? She did indeed. She's got half the contents of Al Son shop in there. No, it's not there, love. Well, I wonder where it could have done. I think I might know. Shall I go and look? No, it's all right. I'll go. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Well, have they gone then? Good luck to them. So, how much did you own then? Oh, oh the shop then? Not worth mentioning. Good walk is off, you know. So you're feeling better now, are you? Some of the world, but. Ah, but the world turns jack. You want to watch you don't fall off, cock. <laughs> There's this lovely cake, and they're waiting on you to cut it. Oh, I forgot my overall. I know it's hard letting go, love, but we'll just think of all the lovely things we've got to look forward to. Yeah, I can't think what those things are, though. I can't think beyond tomorrow morning. I mean, I'll wake up, I'll get up, and then what? Hey, come on, we'll have a lovely time, you'll see. 
How am I going to fill all that time, though? Well, like you said in your speech, just let me worry about that, eh? <laughs> Come on, let's get some of this rotten cake, then. Not too much for, for me. You. expect me to be too jolly oh, in here. No, I mean, I was lovely. quite willing to just go home and mm. get a cake. And that is all of I've a lot of work to do before we go. Did uh, Mr. Prosser say how long we'd be there? Three minutes in court and three hours hanging around, if I know them. Are you going into work first? Oh, it's not worth it. I'll go this afternoon if they've not clapped me in irons. It's a shame they don't still deport you. I wouldn't mind a trip to us on Her Majesty's expense. It's not funny, Steve. No. Sorry. You can do without this, can't you? Well, the king is dead. Long live the king, eh? Good morning, Mrs. Barlow. All set to brush away the cobwebs, eh? And to master the latest in marketing techniques. I'm always ready to learn something new. Oh, and it's Deirdre. Ah, uh, now, uh, no offence, but in my experience, informality in the workplace invariably leads to sloppiness. No, I think uh, Mrs. Barlow and Mr. Scott would be appropriate. You're the boss. Oh, I like to think of us as a team, with myself at the helm as the captain and you as the... Uh, Cabin boy? A uh, crew, Mrs. Barlow, crew. My very capable crew. Aye, aye, sir. Welcome to Coronation Street. <laughs> Wilton's the name. Derek of that ilk. <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Wilton. I trust we can count on your continued custom. Oh! Uh, but before you reply, uh, let me add that it's my intention to shortly enliven the present stock, which is, to put no finer point upon it, somewhat prosaic. <laughs> As it happens, my wife and I do take rather a keen interest in the culinary arts. Oh, oh, well, then you'll be pleased to hear that high on my agenda is the installation of a small but comprehensive range of continental delicatessen. Ah, chorizo sausage? <laughs> Game pie? <laughs> yeah. Prosciutto di Parma? <laughs> <laughs> then, my dear chap, you may rely on us beating a path to your door. <laughs> Splendid. Well, good day to you, Mr. Wilton. Oh, good day to you, Mr. Um, Scott. <laughs> so what was the long goodbye like last night, then? Oh, rather sad, really. I mean, that shop's been Elf's entire life. Out to get up for now in the morning. Well, he's got his council stuff and his warty stuff. Oh, Elf's only got himself to blame if he doesn't have any stimulating outside interests. He's just let his mind go as flabby as his body. Where is your Derrick's a coil spring? Am I right? <laughs> Oh. He's a decent chap, that new fella. It's going to be a big plus to the neighbourhood. Right? About what? Uh, we, we were just saying that Alf's going to find retirement hard with nothing else to occupy him. Well, a man with no hobbies has only himself to blame if his mind goes flabby. Do you suppose it's telepathy or they're just born like that? Oh. I'll see you later. <coughs> see you, love. ta -ra. You're looking very smart today, Derek. Well, I've got a meeting with Mrs Jeffers after school. Oh, oh I forgot to say, I, I might be a little late home. 
Who knows, she may see fit to break open the sherry. Oh, well, I hope she yeah. does, Derek Fowler. Well done, Mavis. You know, I doubt if I'd be so laid back if my husband had an alcoholic assignation in the headmistress's lair. Oh, it's just to confirm his appointment to Harry Potts' job. We definitely got it, then. Well, yes, Derek's the only candidate, but this afternoon's meeting's really just a formality, but procedures have to be followed, as Derek always says. <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> yeah, come on through, yeah. Curly. Morning, Good Sally. Morning. Good morning, Curly. Morning, Rosie. Hey. Now, what have I got for you? Here you are, don't eat them all at once. Oh, hey. oh, now, not till after your breakfast, madam. Nice. Say thank you to Curly. Thank you, Uncle Curly. <laughs> Say thank you. I just came round to wish you luck for later on, mate. Yeah, well, thanks, Curly. I reckon we're going to need it, aren't we? Oh, yeah, there's so many bad people in the world. Yeah. We make one little mistake and the thunderbolt comes down on us. I keep asking myself, why us? I mean, what have we done to deserve it? I honestly don't know, Sally. If only I hadn't pushed you into going along with it. If only Steve hadn't used your name in the police station in the first place. Look, there's no point in if only. It's the thing to do is to deal with it and move on. Yeah, well, we have to. For this one's sake, if nothing else. Mm. But it doesn't get any easier, does it? Oh, Pearl, by the way, good luck for tomorrow. Oh, I didn't expect you to remember. Not with all that you've got on your plate. <laughs> Thanks. And you're right. You two, you don't deserve it. The Queen's? That's me. Oh, Jim. How are you? Well, as well as can be expected, you know. Now, listen, I've been thinking about what you were saying, and, uh, well, I think I should be there, you know what I mean? Even though his lordship was rather I was somewhere else. It's just this stupid pride, you know what it's like. Oh, well. His pride and my pride seems to me you got enough to cope with. So should I come round or what? Uh, we'll pick you up there. But don't worry, I'm not going to set foot over the threshold. It's not that. It's just <laughs> Coronation Street's on the way. Uh, we'll pick you up in about an hour, OK? Yeah, OK. Mum, I've told you he's not coming ringing back. I'll do no such thing. You're his son and he wants to support you. Like he supported you, you mean? What happened between us has got nothing to do with this. Look, Steve, we've hit enough bad patches lately. Don't do anything else to make things worse, please. Don't be ticked the bottom oh, around, yeah, stupid. Go on, you daffy. <laughs> Hello. Hey, yeah. Oh, washed and iron, so don't be saying I'm neglecting my wife for the As if I would, my little sweetheart. <laughs> Ask Tommy, lovey. Oh, well, he's on the mend, but his face is still swollen. Oh, dear. So you better get used to our day of staying with Curly a bit longer. Well, as much as I miss your company, my little stocking top, I shall try to bear up. I know, Pat. I feel sorry for you. <sighs> he misses his own comforts, does Jack. Mm. He keeps remarking how different it is, you know, not living with you. <laughs> I'll be in the back if you want me. You've not left him on his own, have you? As if I would. No, he's sleeping. Little Sally's looking after him. Bless oh. her. Well, if you take him for a walk, will you go past Better Buys and get me some fatty bacon? Cos all those Curly's got for breakfast is flaming birdseed. No, oh, there's no need to trek up there now. Alf's obviously forgotten about the money we owe him, so we can go back in corner shop. Why? Oh, now your pal's taking over, eh? What? Ren and Scott were hardly a pal. They were area manager. Right prone face with it and all. But at least now that he's running it, we didn't clear that way. Hey, see you, Mum. Ah, is that our lovey? Oh, modernising, eh? About time, too. I'm glad you approve. Oh, I'm all for change. I keep up with all the latest trends. You ask Deirdre. I'm a woman of the 90s, me. <laughs> see you right tomorrow, Mum. Yeah, all right, Phyllis. Just one moment. Am I right in thinking this lady has not paid for her goods? Yeah, but we always let Phyllis have a few items when a pension runs out. Pension day's Tuesday and I usually run out <laughs> but on Monday. We, Mrs Barlow? Well, Alf, um, Mr Roberts, he never minded. Yeah, he always knew that she paid up when she got her money. I don't like owing money. I never did. No, well, that's my philosophy exactly, my dear lady, so I'm quite sure you'll understand. I think that was a bit unnecessary. I mean, there's only about three quid's worth of stuff in there, all told. Three pounds or thirty pounds, Mrs Barlow, the principle is the same. 
To give unsecured credit is a thoroughly bad business practice. Have you ever asked yourself why so many small businesses have gone to the wall in recent times? Hmm? Poor cash flow. And why do they have poor cash flow? Because they have bad debts, which in turn make it impossible to pay their own debts. Debt, Mrs. Barlow, is a vicious circle and not a trap into which I intend to fall. Please replace these items on the appropriate shelves. I wish I could come with you. Well, I'll leave these to their own devices. Well, I can always counsel Joe and Gail. They'd understand. Then you'd be letting them down, wouldn't you? No, I'm letting you down, aren't I? No, you're not. You're there for me. Can't ask any more than that, can you? Right, Hi, sit down. Oh, look, there's no need for this. I mean, they haven't even taken my licence off me yet. Look, I told you we're not taking any chances, right? You're no fit state to concentrate on driving, so you're not. Your dad's right, Steve. The last thing we need today is more car trouble. Are you getting in and out, Kev? Is there room for a little one? Yeah, may as well. We all won't get in the van, will yeah, we? Yeah, well, we would do if we weren't going so mob-handed. <laughs> Steve, please, for my sake. Bye -bye. Yeah, OK. Right, well, come on then, troop. Let's get it over with, eh? Don't worry, Sal. I'll be back before you know it, love. Hello, Al. Didn't expect to see you in here this morning. Uh, I thought I came around to see if there's any post. You know, some of your personal stuff comes here instead of going to the house. No, Mr Roberts, there's nothing here for you. How are you enjoying your first day of freedom? Oh, do you know, it's great. We're going out later on today, have a run round, you know, look at some more houses. <laughs> Get some fresh air in his lungs, eh? Then we'll find a little cafe somewhere, you know, and have some afternoon tea and that. Yeah, that's the life, eh? <laughs> Better than standing behind a counter all day long. Beats me why I didn't do it years ago. Well, don't let us keep you, then. Have a nice day. I see you're making a few changes. Always room for improvements, Mr Roberts. Yeah, I dare say if I come back in six months, I won't recognise the place. Very likely. Empires were not built by standing still. Empires, eh? Oh, yes, this is the beginning. The cornerstone. Ah, well, you might do very well. Mind you, I was never that ambitious, you see. I mean, this place was... Well, it was always all right for me. Anyway, I better get off before the wife has the tracker dogs looking for me. <laughs> Ta-da, Deirdre. Ta-da. Goodbye. Dodo. I beg your pardon? Oh, I don't uh, wish to be unkind, Mrs Barlow, and, of course, I respect everything that Mr Roberts stood for, but, like the Dodo, the old guidelines are now extinct. Trailblazing innovative techniques. That's what's required in today's competitive marketplace. I say, Andrea, do you know that they say garlic can put the mockers on your love life? <laughs> well, my Regino is very much that way inclined. <laughs> I say, your Eric looks a bit of a devil, judging from that twinkle in his eye. I, oh, hello, Reggie. I remember Mr Holdsworth. Oh. We've just been talking about you. Oh, yeah. You were... Uh, Come to check up on us, have you? Yeah, just to see that everything's running smoothly, yeah. organisation-wise. <laughs> Looking very lovely today, if I may say so, Miss Anna. Thank you. Well, you'll get me the sack if you... <laughs> Hardly. Yeah. Well, I'll see you tonight, then. Right. Oh, oh. Oh, Andrea. Do you know, sometimes I wonder what I've done to have such good luck. Everything running Camille far, Mr. Watts? No blip? Better buy a radar screen, is it? Not as far as I know. And I would know. Ah, that's the ticket. Keep your finger on the pulse. It's Miss uh, Fon fin F Fennick. Miss Fennick, is she around this uh, She's in the office. Um, about these um, interviews tomorrow. Interview? What interview? I don't think. For your former job. Ah, the position. I'm sorry, you'll have to forgive me. Do you know, I have so many responsibilities on my mind these days. Um, I, I was just wondering, mm -hmm. is there any, any tips that you could, you know, give me? Any 
little bits of information that you might have heard on the uh, company um, grape that might help. Well, now you've mentioned it, there is one little tip bit of news on that score, yes. Vernon Nuttalus has to drop out at the last minute. Something to do with the hiccup in human resources. So I have been drafted in onto the board. So you're on the interview board? For my sins, yes. Oh, that is brilliant, Reg. Uh, no. oh, don't you Mr Holdsworth. Yeah, yeah. Don, are you working tonight? I expect so, unless Michelle Pfeiffer phones. Why? Well, it's my night off and I've got a pack of cars going green mouldy through like a use. What do you reckon? Well, we can't use your place, and uh, I don't fancy using ours with Ivy at corner touching about the evils of gambling. Yeah. No, we'd use Curly's. I mean, I may as well make a while the sun shines, or the moon, as the case may be. Are you on? Yeah, yeah, all right. right I'll uh, knock off about six and come round. Good luck. Yeah. Just go and bite him, people into other people's houses, just like that. Mine out and live there, don't they? You've got to at least ask him first. Oh, Curly won't give me no headache. Not like Alvira, thank God. Do you want a hand? No, you're all right, I can manage. I'm off. Stay and have a cup of tea with him, please. Uh, look, I'm dead sorry, I don't have any bickies around. God, he's in a flipping tea party. Okay, okay. But I'm entitled to be annoyed, all right. I mean, I thought, however bad it was, at least I'd know. I don't have to wait a flaming year with it hanging over me head. Well, that's at the outside, it could be soon. Oh, who flipping Ray? Well, I don't know why you have to go to trial at Crown Court anyway. I mean, it's hardly crime of the century. Why couldn't they have dealt with it there? Well, that's the way it works. Mr. Prosser said it's the usual procedure. There's nothing to worry about. Oh, so that's OK, then. Look, don't be like that, Steve. Your mother's only trying to help you. We just have to put it out of our minds and get on with our lives. Oh, our happy two home two family lives, you mean? Look, Steve, I've just about had enough of all, all this. All right, Jim, don't make it any worse. And you, enough. Right, look, why don't the three of us go over to the Rovers and have a bit of lunch or something? Well, count me out, cos I've got to go to work. We both have. But thanks for the thought. <clears throat> well, cheerio. Take care. Come in, Mr. Wilton. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. That's perfectly all right. My time is your time, as they say. Well, you certainly seem to have been coping splendidly since Mr. Potts left us. Well, a happy ship is a tight ship. It's no secret that you and your predecessor didn't exactly see eye to eye. Mm. Which brings me to the matter in hand. Now, I am able to make it formal that you are in complete charge. Oh, well, that's very gratifying. <laughs> Unfortunately, however... Unfortunately. Due to cuts across the board, the post of head caretaker will no longer exist. But I thought... The new title, the one which you will hold, is simply caretaker. Oh. Oh, what's in a name? A rose by any other, etc. As long as the salary reflects the overall increase in responsibility. No. I am sorry, Mr. Wilton, but the post will remain in the same salary bracket as your present one. You mean I'm going to be doing the work of two people for no more money than I'm getting now? Well, naturally, you will have the help of an auxiliary caretaker. And I know I can rely on you to train them up to your own very high standards. <laughs> now, Derek seemed to think that Mr Scott was going to be a great asset. Asset? He's been sniffy with Betty, sarcastic with Deirdre, and absolutely horrible to poor old Phyllis. Well, he's probably not used to our funny little ways yet. I mean, give the bloke a chance. He's only been in the street a day, ain't he? I mean, already he's been tried, convicted and sentenced. You don't know him like I do, Rita. I'll come knocking on your door with champagne and interior motives. The bloke gets more fascinated by the minute. <laughs> oh, Derek, how did it go? Am I talking to the new head caretaker? No. No? Do you mean after all your hard work they brought somebody else in from outside? I think that's disgraceful. Oh, maybe, maybe, please. I'm not head caretaker because the post no longer exists. It's been demoted to caretaker. Oh. And before you say what's in a name, 
Not only does the salary remain the same, but on top of all my other duties, I've got to train up a complete novice to be my assistant. Well, at least you've still got a job, Derek. I mean, that's some at these days. And an assistant. Yeah, but what does a cleaner know about the responsibilities of management? And brandishing a mop is probably the sum total of her experience. Her? Do you mean it's a her? Yes, Mrs Copeland. She starts tomorrow. And I thought, with the departure of Harry Potts, all my troubles would be over. But see you later. What's going on? Hiya, Curl. Me and Don are just having a session, lad. You don't mind, do you? I do, actually. I wanted a quiet night in tonight to bone up and pass company reports. I've got me interview tomorrow, you know. For the manager's job. Good luck, mate. Yeah, well, we won't make any noise, will we? Oh. Hey, there's some chicken nuggets in the back. Mind you, they'll be a bit greasy now. No, thanks. Make right, cards you want. Put the kettle on if you're going through. Uh, no, no. I'm, uh, I'm going out. Well, suit yourself. Oh, by the way, son, Vera said Tommy's still not right, so I'll be able to keep you company for a few more days. He gets very lonely, the lad, you know. Yeah. Give us three, Doc. So what did Sally say? I tell you what, she's been brilliant. For a little and you know, she's got a lot of guts, my wife. Well, Vicky's gonna go well mad when I tell her. Oh, end of a beautiful romance. Uh, nah, she's too struck on me, man. She might be a bit not, though. <laughs> Hi, lads. Hi, Hi Kelly. Kelly. So, how'd you get on? Oh. I've been committed for trial at Crown Court. When? Well, it might be a flipping year, so... That's a bit sadistic, isn't it? Talk about the Sword of Damocles. Well, at least it's got your mum and dad speaking again. Nah, it's just a show of unity for their delinquent son. Nothing's changed. Yeah, but we're bound to get back together, aren't we? Well, I don't know whether I particularly want them to, you know. They go on a lot these days, how our generation should show respect for their elders. Well, how the hell do they expect me to show respect for a man who thinks with his foot hey. fist, you know? <clears throat> what was all that about? Oh, just our little secret. Well, let's say I'm not as, uh Worried about tomorrow as I was. Uh, two glasses of white wine, please, Miss Watson Hume. And yeah. make sure that they're chilled to the correct temperature. Oh, already. Oh. <laughs> right, any news on the latest recruit to the Honourable Order of the Off White overall? You are. You mean him at the shop? I've no Rottweilers make a better impression. Oh. Really? Oh, Very sad to hear that. Well, it would appear that our Mr. Scott is not endearing himself to the natives, no. my love. Oh. Odd, isn't it? Well, his horizons diminished, mine expanding. Oh, mm. really? <laughs> <laughs> On the whole, a satisfactory first day, wouldn't you agree? Apart from the incident with Mrs Pierce, you know, the pensioner you wouldn't let have any tick, I still think... Now, that. I think there's one thing we do have to get very clear, Mrs Barlow. If, as I trust, we are to work together as a harmonious team, you are here to serve the customers, I to do the brain work. That way we each of us work to our strengths. Oh. Give us a couple of cans, love. Ivy's come round, so we're going to let us air down. <laughs> I want some fatty bacon for our Jack. I tell you what, these lids are open now, as you know. It's a lot more convenient. Oh, I'm glad you think so. We do try to be user-friendly. Haven't we uh, met before? Well, you could say we've got something in common, Mr Scott. We both worked at Better Buys. Oh. Vera Duckworth. <laughs> this is Duckworth. Delighted to meet you again. Hey, it's a big improvement on last lump of lard you had in here. There was nothing wrong with Alf. You are. You will look if you've got a grunt out of him most days. Not like Mr Scott here, eh, Mr <laughs> Scott? <laughs> you know, funnily enough, if you hadn't called in, uh, I was going to knock on your door after we closed. It's number nine, isn't it? <laughs> hey, what a memory, eh? No wonder they made him area manager. Oh, you're too kind, you're too kind. But the point is, you see, Mr Roberts had unwisely, in my view, allowed many of his customers to accrue debts. Now, which debts he has since sold on to me? What do you mean? What it means, Mrs Duckworth, is that at this moment in time, you owe me the grand sum of £220. £220? Well, we haven't got it. There's no way we can pay that. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to hand the money over immediately, oh, no. <laughs> No, it, no, today's Monday, isn't it? Well, shall we say payment in full by the end of the week? Or do I have to put the matter into the hands of my solicitors? What are you doing? Hey! You, what are you doing? No, do you want a piece of toast? No, I do not. Oh, please yourself. Unbelievable. Hey! You! Look, if you really want to know, I, I would just check him, weren't I? 
All right, checking for what? Well, I've had a couple of twinges, you know. Ugh. You haven't got mumps, have you? Don't be daft. Well, what were you doing then, rummaging around in your tracksuit bottoms? Not a very pretty sight of a morning, Jack. I, I think it must be tension, Curly, because I've got a lot of trouble, do you see? Oh, you're still not going on about that 200 quid, are That you? 220 quid? Yes, I am. I thought we'd got away with it. Ah, he's a very wise man, he's Alf Roberts. Selling your debt to Brendan Scott. No, I still think it can't be right, you know, selling a fella's debt on. People do sell debts, Jack. Especially when they think they won't be able to collect them. Mind you, you won't have paid full whack for it. Eh? Well, Brendan Scott, he wouldn't have given Alf anywhere near 220 quid. How do you mean? Well, now he's got the problem of getting the money off you, hasn't he? Which won't be easy. And he'll want compensation for all the hassle. So I'd be surprised if you paid Alf, say, more than half. Half? Or even less. Now, Curly's not having Jacko on here, is he? No, Curly's not having Jacko on. I mean, on. Curly wouldn't tell Jacko the visit wasn't true, would he? No. And I've got better things to do than stand round here guessing with you all day. I've got an interview to go to. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, best of luck with that, Curly, lad. I hope you do well. Yes. Thanks, Jack. Ta-da, son. Ta-da. Half, eh? Half. It's still OK. Mm. Same me, I'll get different prices. He's put everything up. Yeah, including my rent. And my hours. Oh, well, I mean, something worthwhile's come out of it, isn't it? I don't want extra hours. Not at flat rate, I don't. Oh, you can refuse, can you? Yeah, if I want to lose my job. Mm. Yeah, I never thought I'd miss Alf Roberts so much. You and a few others. Ah, Mr Barlow. Fueling up for the academic day, are we? Something like that. Good. Well, I'm sure you'll find all the ingredients you need to keep your engine ticking over smoothly. Oh, I dare say. But if you keep putting your pump prices up, a lot of people, including me, are going to stop and fill up somewhere else in future. My baby. My, my. Everybody's looking for a bargain nowadays, aren't they? Oh, I don't think so, Mr. Scott. Just a fair deal. Oh, oh, I like this. You like this, don't you? Look, there's some music playing now. Look, look there. Stand behind me. Stand behind me. If all you love, my last friend. Morning, Jack. Morning. Would you share my troubles? Or say that I was just a waste of time? Driving without our plates, driving unaccompanied, conspiracy to pervert the course of justice. Blimey. You're looking for see daylight again. Well, you never know. Might go easy on you. What, with my record? Yeah. Car radios. Exactly. Well, like I said, I'm sorry, mate. Well, not as sorry as I am. Yeah. I'll see you later. Yeah, see ya. Half price! Less maybe. And he wants the lot all at once. Absolutely. Well, you can tell him where to stick it, can't you? Yeah, well, I could, but I want to be sure of my ground, don't I? Yeah, well, you might be scared of going round there to tell him, but I'm not. Vera, it's got nothing to do with being scared. It's got something to do with strategy. So you stay here, look after Tommy, and I'll go and check a few things. And then I'll be back round to see Mr. Brendan Scott. Don't you worry. <laughs> oh, really? Goodness gracious me. And him a councillor. Um, yeah, yeah, come in. Ah, Mrs Copeland. Uh, I was just getting rid of some stuff. Looks like you need to. Well, Mr Potts, not mine. I, I was just disposing of them. What you do in your spare time is no concern of mine, Mr Wilton. Oh, I'd hate you to get the wrong impression of me, Mrs Copeland. Listen, Mr Wilton, I have no opinion about you one way or the other. And I won't pretend I'm over the moon about working as your assistant, because I'm not. Well, that's plain enough. As far as I'm concerned, it's just a lot more work for exactly the same money. But if it's the only way I can keep my job, I'll do it. And I'll do it as well as I can. I see. Just so that we both know. Yes. Well, to be frank, Mrs Copeland, 
I had rather expected someone rather more experienced than a mere school cleaner to be appointed as my deputy. So we're neither of us thrilled about the situation? No, it doesn't look like it. Then we must just make the best of it. Yes. Yes, I suppose we must. Good Lord. Hi, Jack. Your fags, is it? Oh, I love you. Just ten, please. Oh, go on. I'll trust you till tomorrow. Oh, I've got a lot on my plate, love. Just, just ten, thanks very much. Whatever you say. I, I, I thank you for the offer, though. Thanks. Listen, I, I was just wondering, love, yeah. do you know out about the selling on of debts? Selling on debts? Mm. I was just trying to find out whether it were legal or not. Oh, I don't know. Citizens Advice Bureau will tell you. Oh, I, I... Yeah, well, you'll find the number in book. Oh, right, thanks, sir. Is there any particular reason you want to know? Well, I... The... I'll. Because he has sold mine on to Brendan Scott. Eh? What's up? You haven't, have you, Al? What? Sold Jack's debts on to Brendan Scott. I have, yes. Hey, What's up? He wouldn't fork out. It was the only chance I had of getting any of my money back. Well, it doesn't seem right. Well, it's legal. If he'd have paid up in the first place, it would not have happened. And I've lost money selling that debt on, I'll tell you. Not much, no, though I knew. More than half. You boy, you expect me to believe that? You, you? believe what you like, I'm telling you. I sold that debt to Brendan Scott for £75. You ask him if you don't believe me. I will. Thanks, Alf. Hey, right, where do you want this, Mr. Watch? Over here, Sam, by the wall. And when you've done that, go up to the office, bring down three comfy chairs and one hardback one. Right, no sooner said than done. For the interviewees? Yeah, why? Puritan upbringing showing. Uh, never mind my Puritan upbringing. Just make sure there's plenty of writing paper with pens, um, a selection of soft drinks, oh, and a coffee machine. Use the one in my office. Don't you think this is rather bizarre? A bit like building the gallows for your own execution. I was asked to supply an interview room, and that is what I'm doing. Well, you're going to a lot of trouble. I'm sure they'll be very impressed. I'll make sure that they know that you played your part in the preparation, if that's what's worrying you. I'm quite capable of blowing my own trumpet, thank you, Mr Watts. I'd concentrate on your own act, if I were you. Ah! 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 Mr Duckworth. Aye, aye. I trust you've been speaking to your wife? I have, as a matter of fact. Good, good. So I assume you're here to make arrangements to settle our small piece of outstanding business, is that correct? It is. <laughs> well, it's good to see you being so reasonable. Well, I'm a reasonable man, Mrs. Scott. I'm pleased to hear that. Which I am sure you are yourself. Oh, well, I do try. <laughs> right, good. So I propose to pay you £2 a week for a period of 37 weeks in respect of my debt starting now. Ah, no, just a minute, just a minute. One, I have never agreed to payment by instalment. And secondly, the figure you're offering doesn't come anywhere near covering the amount you owe this shop. Hey, do you know, do you know I'm forgetting myself? I mean, £2 a week for 37 weeks, that's only 74 quid, isn't it? They are 75. But uh, you owe me £220, not £75. Whatever put that figure into your head? Alf Roberts said that's what you paid for my debt. Uh, no, just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. What I paid for that debt is of no consequence. So you don't accept? No, I certainly do not accept. Well, there you see, I'm not trying to be reasonable. I mean, I've offered to pay you in front of a witness what you paid Alf Roberts for my debt and you turned me down. Well, I don't know what else to say. I, I, I shall bid you a good day, Mr Scott. Now, just a minute, Duckworth. You owe me £220. Now, unless I get payment in full by the end of the week, I'm taking you to court. Set me a court. See where it gets you. You've not got a leg to stand on, pal. <laughs> Uh, Sam, yeah. that's enough of chatting. Get these chairs upstairs, they'll be here in a minute. Thank you, Mr. Watch. Mm. Brushing up on man management, were we? I found him amusing. Oh, it's very easy to get him to talk. The trick is to get him to work. Ah, it's morning. All prepared and ready for action, Mr. Watts? Almost, Mr. Holdsworth. Good, good. Right, this is Mr. Wilkinson and Mrs. Waters from head office. They are my fellow board members. Right, uh, this is Mr. Watts, acting manager and interviewee. Thank you. And this is uh, Miss Elaine Fennick, acting assistant and, of course, also an interviewee. We already know Elaine up in head office, don't we, Cyril? Hello, Elaine. How are your parents? Oh, fine, thanks, Mrs. Waters. Yes, it's very nice. Uh, right, shall we go upstairs then, Mr. Watson, and uh, see if we can settle in? Uh, I thought we'd have coffee first. Um, 
in the office. Oh, that's very nice, isn't it? Right, OK, off we go. Um, <laughs> you all right, love? Look a bit fed up. Do you know, I sometimes get the feeling I spend my entire life pulling pints and dishing up meals for men. Well, you're night off tonight, love. Get out and about a bit, you know, enjoy yourself. Oh, yeah, Weatherfield Cricket Club. I thought you liked cricket. Oh, I do. What I don't like, spending first half at match in the pavilion making sandwiches and second half washing up. Don't they ever play away? Oh, yeah, they get to some nice little places, you know, but... Well, if I'm not on teas, I'm on Scarbook. It's mostly teas, you know. But you manage to get a little drink with Gordon after the game, don't you? Oh, yeah, I ain't rest at time. I won't mind, Betty, but all the talk about Googlers and batting half kitchens. So, uh... They're going off him, or what? Well, I don't know, Betty. I mean, he's a nice enough bloke, mm. is Gordon. And yeah, he's a very good cricketer. Mm. But, but he's not exactly the most exciting bloke I've ever met. No. They are love them. Well, you can forget about him taking it to court. He won't do that. But how can you be sure? Well, if it's under 500 quid, it's not worth it. Could cost him more than that. <gasps> Delph not warn you about selling your debt on? No. You should have done by rights. So you think I'm in the clear? As far as the law's concerned. Yeah. Usual way of collecting is to drop some big bloke a few quid, call round trying to persuade you to cough up. Huh? Usually start off politely enough, then if you don't come up trumps, well, anything can happen, can't it? You mean violence? Depends what mood they're in. You can never tell with blokes like that. I didn't think they'd be seeing so many. Oh, they nearly always see internals if they're suitable. Of course, the whole thing's a formality. What do you mean? I think they know what they want before they come. Then why oh. bother with all this? Got to be seen to play the game. Yes, well, thank you very much, Mr. Fairweather, and uh, we'll be getting in touch. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, Mr. Johnson, please. Hello there. Hello. Come in. Right. Uh, Just me and you now, then. No, it won't work. You can't put your off-license stock behind that and expect people to buy it. I mean, when people are buying wine, they want to browse, they want to look at the bottle, read the label. Yeah, well, he reckons it'll cut down on shoplifting. Well, if that's where it takes to, to earn a crust, I'm glad I'm out of it. Well, they do say every dog has its day, don't they? Anyway, I won't keep you, Deirdre. I'll uh, well, see you later. ta -da. Life in the outside world boring you, Mr Roberts? No, as a matter of fact. Uh, and what are you here for, to buy or to criticise? Oh, I won't be bothering you again. I'm afraid you have bothered me already today, Mr Roberts. In fact, you've caused me a great deal of embarrassment. Oh, if you can't take a bit of criticism... I'm not talking about criticism. I'm talking about a certain person mentioning a certain amount of money to Jack Duckworth. Shall I go? No, no, it's all right. 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 I just want Mr Roberts to realise that if Jack Duckworth isn't forthcoming with his debt, I shall hold him personally responsible and I shall be round his house seeking reimbursement. Is that right? Well, I'll tell you something now. That debt is yours. You bought it when you bought the shop. And what's more, it's your own fault for not paying a fair price and getting it cheap. Mind you, looking round, cheap's a very good word for you. See you, Deirdre. See you, Alf. You seem to be enjoying it here. Oh, yes. I, well, I like Weatherfield. And from what I hear, you're doing a very good job. I hope so. Well, let's hope you can keep up the good work. Thanks very much. Bye. Mr. Watts? Sorry? Would you like to come in? Oh, yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. After you. Uh, thank you. Sorry. Who is it? It's me, you daft apeth. Let me in. Go 
wait, wait. What are you doing? What's all this? Did anybody see you coming in? Well, I don't know. Do I, Raquel? Said it were an emergency. Yeah, well, it is. Do you fancy a cup of tea? No, I don't. I don't want to leave out Tommy with that lot dateless streak any longer than I have to. Listen, Tommy will be all right with Raquel. Look, will you tell me what all the fuss is about so I can get back, will you? It's this Scott fella. I've just found out from Alf. He bought our debt for 75 quid. Now, that's why I offered to pay him £2 a week. So what did he say? So he didn't want to know, so I told him to get stuffed. Reckons he's going to take us to court, but I know it isn't worth his while. Oh, so that's all right, then? No, it blaming isn't all right. According to Des Barnes, he could get the heavy brigade on me. Heavy brigade? Yeah, it is. It meant thugs, broken leg job. Oh, what does he know? What does Des Barnes know about old? Yeah, well, I'm taking no chances, pal. What do you mean? I'm not going back into work. Aye. So this is what it's all about, is it? It's you trying to get out of going into work. No, this is not what it's all about. It's all about me trying not to get my face rearranged. Look, we need every penny at the moment. If you're not behind that bar tonight, you will have your face rearranged. But not by the heavy brigade. By me. So you're saying that you'd be happy with a seven percentage increase on monthly turnover in the meat and poultry department? Well, I couldn't say I'd be happy because this store returned 11.3% last month. Which, I believe, was the highest return in the entire chain. But if it was in a more depressed area, and given the present economic climate, well, then 7% would represent a very satisfactory profit margin. Thank you, Mr Watts. Anything else, anyone? Uh, <coughs> uh, Mr Holdsworth? Okay. Well, all sounds very rosy, this Mr Watts, doesn't it? Hmm? And I'm sure you're trying to convey the impression uh, that you're doing a fantastic job here as acting manager. But as we both know, this store is unique in the Better Buy chain. For one thing, there's little or no opposition locally. No other superstore for miles, so you would expect it to be doing good business, wouldn't you? But let's say a rival chain was to open a new store within spitting distance. I wonder what your 11.3% would look like there, Mr. Wise. I don't know. Absolutely, you don't know. And we don't know either, do we, Cyril? <laughs> right, well, let's, um, um, say you did get some competition. What sort of moves would you be making? And I'm not looking for some sort of vague and blanket statement here, Mr. Wells. What I want to hear is, well, precisely, and in order of, um, priority, what actions you would be taking. And using figures, you know, to illustrate your, um, your thinking about this, if that's possible. <clears throat> You keep saying she's just an ordinary woman, Derek. What do you mean by her? Can we just let the subject drop, Mavis? I have no designs on Carol Copeland, nor she on oh, me. Oh, it's Carol now, is it? Listen, if you two are going to bicker, I'm going on. I think it's a wise move, Rita. She's not going to take a blind bit of notice of anything I say. I thank you not to refer to me in the third person when you're calling her by her Christian name. Yeah, but it does need a good clean-out, Betty. I mean, you know that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I can't have you messing about down the cellar while there's folks up here want to be served. Yeah, but we're not that busy. Not at this precise moment, no, but we will be, won't we? I mean, it's Raquel's night off. What's up with you? You're not looking down your trousers. You're flinching every time the door opens. You're like a cat on hot bricks. Now, it's a chance of a lifetime, Alf. You can't just ignore it. Yes, I can. A pint of bitter and a gin and tonic. Please. Right. Well, the offer closes in three days. Good. Ow. Audrey, I do not need to spend the thick end of 800 quid on a trip to Spain or anywhere else. Now, let the subject drop. Look, if you pay by your credit card, we get free insurance and a guarantee against doubt that goes wrong. And it doesn't cost us anything for a month. No. All right. If you won't pay with your credit card, I shall pay with mine. You wouldn't dare. I would. It's a joint account, isn't it? Huh? Watch me. Anyway, hey. it came to me in the middle of the interviews. I thought, right. What? Sell my place over the shop, yeah. sell your house, yeah. buy a bigger place with a granny flat, and that solves all their problems, eh? And well. we still have our privacy, don't we? It would be great to sell ours. But how much are we looking for? I mean, how much would we get for ours? Well, the estate agent will give me some ideas. I'm looking for a first time. Did you want to say something to uh, Reg, I'm, I'm sorry to butt in, but could I ask you something? Certainly. Ask away. This Brendan Scott character. I mean, you know him as well as anybody, don't you? Yes, I do indeed, John. Yes, a nasty piece of work as our Brendan. A man to bear a grudge, actually. Violent, would you say? No, no, he hasn't got a bottle for that, Jack. No, Brendan always gets somebody else to do his dirty work for him. I want to work for you! that! You know, give me maybe that heart failure. Well, you can order an ambulance because he's going to need one by the time I finish with him. Norman, 
What can I say about this afternoon? Masterful performance. You can master. cut the soft soap, Reg. You've really put the boots in this time, haven't you? Norman, why don't you sit down and relax? Have a drink and I'll explain. No, thank so you. I... I'm very choosy about who I drink with. No offence. <laughs> Norman, you are confused. It's a precious. Are you surprised? The... Firstly, you forget to tell me that my rival is practically related to that Waters woman and then, when it's all plain sailing and I'm talking my way into the job, you put a salvo across my bowels that would have sunk the Ark Royal. There's no need to shout, Norman. And you have got it all wrong. Have I? Yes. Come here. Excuse me, my love. Yes, <clears throat> Right. What I was trying to do was keep your chances afloat. Because by the time you came into that room, the job was all sewn up. So I could tell Ginny Waters I wanted Miss Fenwick before she even got there. And she was halfway to persuading Lord Cyril. And the girl, oh, you have to give a brilliant interview, you know, Norman. I had to put you under pressure to let Cyril see what you were, well, what you were capable of and get him away from that girl. And well, did you? No, I'm sorry, Norman, I can't tell you that. That would be a breach of confidence, wouldn't it? You know who's got the job. Yes, of course. Oh, well, come on, Reds, tell me, put me out my misery. The best person got the job, Norman. That is all I'm at liberty to say. Now, why don't you have a nice little drink and keep your fingers crossed? All right, go on. Dip, dip, dip. Unless of that shouting. Shandy, please. Right, is there anything else you want while I'm at it? Why, well, it's prices. If Betsy wasn't so far, I'd go there. Forget about the shopping, Sally, here. grab hold of him. No, I'm not. Look, I have time right. to talk. Why, what's going Look, on? Look, just take him inside, I won't be long. Give over, Jack. It's starting to make me nervous. You should never set out at lunchtime. You mean you were just winding me up? Of course I was. Can you really see Brendan Scott having connections with the Manchester Mafia? Jack! Jack, get your coat on quick and get out of the bathroom. Well, what's up? What's well, you were right on? that Brendon Scott has got the heavy brigade on to you. Hey. There's one on his way now. Who is it? Look, don't just stand there. Get out the bath. He's right behind it? me. Stand back, you. Stand back. You'll take one step towards our Jack and I'll brain you. Vera. Look, keep out of this. It's not to do with you. Sorry? Vera. Look, keep out of it. And watch you brain no. me brother with a bottle. Eh? Me brother, Vera. Brother. Hiya, kidder. How are you? Hey, Jack. Yeah. Do you reckon it's a form of masochism? What? Well, it's the only explanation I can think of. Me and Reg. I mean, do I get pleasure from getting pain from a dominant partner? I mean, why else do I, I let him give me grief time and time again? Oh, your interview. Well, I'd be like he said he did it for your sake to, to make you shine, like. What? Reg Oldsworth thinking of others? Well, why else would he have done it? Because he's a sadist. He enjoys giving pain. And I enjoy taking it when made for one another. No, Curly lad. You spend too much time on your own. I'm going to start getting out of it. All these fancy ideas you get in your head, eh? All those years of faithful service. And then they bring in an underling and promote her above my head. But you don't know that. I mean, even if she is, you've still got a job. That's not the point. It's the injustice of it all. Well, I'll tell you, I will let head office know my feelings if I get passed over hey, again. I'm hey, don't you start doing things stupid, you know. Three million unemployed out there, mate. Don't care. You wouldn't even get your job back on the binge, you know. I'm not bothered. I mean, if I don't get this job, right? Not even on the bins? Not even sweeping the streets. <clears throat> well, if I don't get this job, right, then I'll do whatever they, they ever want me to, I suppose. That's my boy, realist. No, Jack. Masochist. I said you are a lady. Perhaps she said I may be. Morning. You were up early. Oh, sorry, did I wake you? Mm, don't worry about it. Ah, it's always the same when I just come off the board. I can't sit late on half five for a few days, you know, while I get back to normal. <laughs> Drives a mile at home. Listen, I got myself some breakfast. Hope you don't mind. No, no. Help yourself. Fresh eggs, eh? All we get to see is that powdered rubbish. So, um, what do I owe this unexpected pleasure to, then? Oh, no special reason. I was just passing. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, we docked Liverpool yesterday. I was on the um, train home and I thought, I haven't seen a big brother of mine for a while. I'd drop in and see how he's doing. Hey, I'm sorry to hear about you and Steph. You know, I meant to write, you know, but just never got around to it. Has it been that long? Must have been. Yeah, well, there's a lot more water passed under the bridge since then. Oh, aye, what's that then? Look, I'm going to have to go grab myself a sandwich on the way to work. No, I've not scoped everything, have I? No problem. I'll do some shopping later, get you some tea ready when you come in. Yeah, all right then. I'll be in about six. Spare keys. No time. And don't worry about us, all right? I'll make myself at home. Sure you will, mate. See ya. I right, see ya. You look full of the joys of summer. <laughs> What's left of it? I bet just got there, haven't we? Well, it depends how you look at it. I mean, two weeks ago, we celebrated the summer solstice. So now it's downhill, all the way, into winter. I mean, haven't you noticed the day's getting shorter? Can't say I have. Quite the reverse, actually. Well, that's the difference between the astronomical view of summer and the uh, popular one. I think it's more the difference between the old boss and the new, but I won't go into that. Ah, Mr Watts. Good to see you know your comparatives from your superlatives. Sorry? Your better buys from your best. The apple. Oh, yeah, see, yeah. A sign of our superior quality, I trust? No, no, it's a sign that I can't wait until I get to work. I'm starving. Ah, yes, yes, convenience. That's another advantage we have over the big boys. Mm. Any uh, news on the job front? I'll find out today. Ah. I hear that Miss Fenwick has acquitted herself well. Uh, who told you that? Ah, I have my moles. They didn't say uh, how I performed, did they? Well, if they did, I could hardly be indiscreet now, could I? No, no, I suppose not. But have courage, Mr Watts. I'm sure Holdsworth will be putting you out of your misery very soon. Enjoy the apple. Oh, it's, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. Well, it's understandable. He'll be worried about the future now he's retired. He's not going to be short of brass, Mavis. He's got insurance schemes, maturing pensions. All breakfast, they were pouring over some statement that came through the post. Eyes gleaming at to what lump sum he should go for. Why don't you spend it and enjoy it while they can? He might put big clogs oh, tomorrow. Phyllis! <laughs> oh, she's right. Do you know, I even offered to pay for this holiday myself. He wasn't having it even then. Oh. Do you know I wish my old lord had done more of that when he retired. Mm. Left me a few extra members. Yeah. Do you know, that's all you've got, isn't it, when they've gone? Thank you, Phil. Well, here it is. Have you a local paper, please? Oh, not till this afternoon, love. One of yesterday's, then? I only one for the small ads. See how much a mass of it costs on here. Oh. <laughs> no, oh. only joking. I want to see what's on at the films this afternoon. Give us something to do like Des gets back. Are you Des Barnes' brother? That's it, Colin. You know him. Oh, I've heard about you, but he didn't tell me what a big strapping lad you were. Ah, he doesn't want you to get the robe and I, obviously, once you're all for himself. It's does all over. 25p, please. I just have the films I take. Uh, near about usually, love. Thank that you. what you're gonna see. Oh, I don't know, something to make me laugh. Why? You interested? Oh. Well, I might be if I don't get this blinking holiday. <laughs> How much do I owe you? Uh, 750 for two weeks, love. See you anyway. See you yeah, tomorrow. Well, 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 well. Hey, I'd best get on my way before it goes out. <laughs> Oh, see you, Phyllis. Bye. Something wrong, Audrey? Oh, it's my credit cards. They've gone. Morning. Morning. Have you heard anything? Well, I'm seeing Mr Holdsworth at one o'clock, actually. Oh. Did you not speak to him? No. Well, he was here about an hour ago. Well, I'll probably see him later. I'm sure there's some explanation. Yeah, well, we don't know the order of these things, do we? I mean, do they tell the unsuccessful candidate first and leave the good news to last? Oh, do they tell the successful one first so they can offer it elsewhere if the first choice turns it down? I know which I'd do. See ya. Yeah. Reg! Ah, Mr. Watts. Reg, what is going on? Well, uh, look, I'll tell you what, 130 in the rover's all right. Can't talk now, I've got a dash. Oh, come on, put me out of my misery. No, that is not the better by way of doing things. These are important decisions we're talking about here. We need time to explain the thinking that's gone into it. Especially if there's a candidate to be disappointed. Oh, I've not got it, have I? Whatever I just told you now. 1.30 in the Rovers, all right. Oh, but Reggie, come on. I'll see you there, then. <laughs> hey!
Are you decent? Aye. But I can soon put that right if you like. Don't tempt me. I did the odd as this cleaning. In case you're wondering, Phyllis Pierce. Ah, oh, I thought you'd come take me up on that film I was on about. <laughs> oh, squeeze my hand like that. Back row of pictures, you never know. Just a bit of fun, Mum. Yeah, it's me game, fun. Oh, did you make up your mind which picture you were going to see? <laughs> uh, I've seen most of this lot already, abroad like. Saw this Demi Moore effort six months ago in America. America? What were you doing in America? Ah, uh, just visiting. I'm in the merch, see? Oh, hello. Girl in every port. Aye, they've got a man on every boat as well, unfortunately. Still, it suits me for now. Your Desmond didn't say he was going to have a visitor. It's because he wasn't expecting one. I've just dropped in on the off chance. Look, I said I'd um, cook him dinner at night. Does he still like your steak and kidney pie? Oh, it's his favourite. Cook properly, not out of a tin. Oh, I'll do that then. I bet you're a dab hand at that, aren't you? If I feel like it. Tell you what, if I go and get the stuff, Listen, I'm his cleaner, not his cook. This place doesn't need cleaning. And you don't want to spoil them lily white hands of your scrubbing, do you? Go on, make his day. You get it ready, I'll put it in the oven. Joint effort. I'll buy you a drink tonight in the Rovers. Grip like that and I'm anybody, so. Is it a deal? <sighs> Go on, then. Hey, don't tell your Desmond he'd shoot me. Mum's the word. You know, I've not seen Percy for ages. You've not got him locked away somewhere, have you? After what happened the other week, I think clamping him away would oh. be more appropriate. <laughs> Are you to be a good punishment, that? Like the old village stocks. We could sell rotten tomatoes to pelt people <laughs> with. I hope you're not inferring that the produce in this establishment is inferior, Mrs Barlow. Of course not. 436, please, Emily. Ah, Mrs Duckworth. Can I help you? I've come about this debt thing. Oh, yes? Well, I was just wondering if you'd reconsider our Jack's offer, you know, at two pound a week. As I explained to your husband, it's quite out of the question. Oh, please, Mr Scott. We're on a zuppers. I'm out of work. I, I've got a kiddie to feed. Look, that's all I've got till next week, four pound fifty. If I allowed everyone to take advantage Vera, of you, I could... should you be bringing Tommy out? He's still got mumps, hasn't he? Eh? Oh, yeah. Oh, poor little kid. Look at him. But look, what can I do? What can I do, eh? I can't leave him on his own. I can't afford a child, mind her. Yes, yes, but I mean, Mrs uh, Barlow does have a point. I mean, if, if, if the child is sick. Yeah, but if we could get this debt thing sorted out, I mean, yes. look. Right, right. Well, um, why don't you just leave it with me and we'll discuss it later? Can I? Oh, yes, that, that it does seem sensible. Oh, thanks, Mr Scott. <laughs> Can I take a loaf of bread with me now and put it on slate later? Why not? Oh, thanks. Do you know, Summer? I won't forget this. All that. Right. Yes. I won't. I'll tell you what, these bus chairs are a lot better than the prams we used to have, aren't they? Mm. You see these, uh, these holes in there? These yes. gaps? Mm. They don't have to put germs away, love, I tell you. Yes. Right. Thanks again. Yeah. See you later. Yes. Bye, Vera. Bye, Vera. Well, I have something to attend to in the yard. Oh. <laughs> and I thought the way to a man's heart was through his stomach. Oh, this <laughs> Oh, Audrey, are you all right? Yeah, I didn't leave my credit cards in here yesterday, did I? No, have you lost them? Oh, I wondered what could have happened to them. I've just been home and I've looked everywhere. Perhaps you should cancel them as a precaution. Yeah, I already have, actually, Emily, thanks. I just hope I'm in time. Oh, the elf is going to kill me when he finds out. Right, that's uh, 105, and please. And a packet of plain crisp. Oh, hang on, we need another box opening. Oh, well, it's, uh, it's 130 altogether. Oh, I say, I couldn't borrow them scissors from here, could I? Yeah, of course you can. And I've got this, uh, this loose thread in which I was a pocket oh. driver. It's balmy, you know. <laughs> I'd, I'd pull it loose, but I don't want to snag it. Make sure it's not all you snag. Oh. Hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> there we are. No news yet. He's due any minute. No straws in the wind. Only bad ones, Jacko. Never mind, son. Keep your pecker up, eh? Hello, love. Uh, Are you all right? Now, I promise you won't be mad. Mad? Why? What's happened? I've lost my credit card. Oh, dear. You haven't seen them, have you? 
Well... Have you finished with them scissors, Mr. Gaffer? Oh, yeah, uh, yes, uh, thank you, love. Oh. It's nice to see a man doing his own tailoring, isn't it? <laughs> What's your about? Yeah, well, what it is, you see, I didn't want to uh, get into debt over this holiday. I didn't want any more arguments, so I've uh, taken a few precautions. It's in our own interest. Do you know what I've been through this morning? <laughs> well, I didn't know you'd miss them so quick. Listen, I have phoned the bank, the police, the credit yeah, card Yeah, well, it's all lists. over and done with. Oh, it, tailoring, you call it. Ah, well, that's right. Actually, it is. It's uh, cutting your cloth a good in your pocket. Yes, <laughs> well, I'll give you some tailoring when we get home. Only it may not be little bits of plastic I cut into, right? You have been warned yeah. out. You want the gin and tonic? Audrey? Audrey! Ah. Another pint, Norman? Oh, can we just get on with it, please? Oh, would you like me to have one? I think I will. Could I have a pint, Jack, please? Right, right. right. Uh, do you want the standing? What do you think it was just... Oh, come on, Reggie. Well, uh, <clears throat> the board were very, very impressed with your interview. My putting you on the spot obviously paid a few dividends there. But, unfortunately, Miss Fenwick does have a very, very desirable profile, career-wise. She's a well-qualified, young, just the person that uh, the head office want on the old, well, you know, the old ladders. Uh, I've so not got it, Ava. I've not got it. Well, I'm coming to that in a moment. I knew it. I just knew it. Mm. Lovely pint. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, Reg. Oh, yes, it's gone. Well, what Miss Fenwick does not have, however, is your broad experience on the floor. And that, coupled with the interview which I coaxed out of you, plus my own personal uh, recommendation, of course, I think they'll find this one, you know, Jay. <sighs> You mean, you mean I've got it? Uh, Norman, let me be the first to congratulate you on your appointment as manager of the... Yes! Ah, he's got it! Yes! He's got it, Betty! He's got it! He's got it. He's got it. Uh, At last, he's got I'm it. a manager! I don't hey. believe it! Hey. Hey. Yes! <laughs> You didn't get a shredder in and stand on the bar and do it. Half the street knows what you've done to the me The rest now. of the street will know it if you go on about it like that. I told everybody I'd lost them. Do you know how stupid you make me look? Well, you drive me to it. Oh, a simple holiday out like everybody else has. That's all I wanted. How often do I have to say this? We've got to tighten his belt. Oh! If you say that once more, I will scream. Well, it's true. All oh, right. We've got to tighten his belt, have we? Right. Well, let me see what we've got here. Oh! Oh, an old emery board. You can strike your matches Audrey. on that. Wouldn't do to waste it. A oh, couple of old paracetamol. Yeah. I'm sure you can find a wall to bang your heads on to use them. Oh, yes, some loose change from my purse. Yeah. No, come on, take me purse. You could pawn that for a few bucks. Look, will you stop being ridiculous? Come on, give me the car keys. I'll drive. <sighs> well, I've got a drink to finish in there first. Oh, God forbid that you should waste that. Oh, well, I'll see you at home then. Thank you. Miss Fenwick. Congratulations. Thank you. It was rather a close run thing from what I can gather. Oh, really? Yep. According to Reg, uh, Mr. Holdsworth, they were all very impressed with you. And you thought very highly at the head office. It shouldn't be too long now before you get the promotion you deserve. Don't make me laugh. Sorry? Do you know, this is the third time in nine months I've been passed over. Oh, really? Well, you mustn't give up. I mean, we all have our runs of bad luck. Oh, it's nothing to do with luck. It's because I'm the wrong sex. You have to be a man to get on in this organisation. You have to go drinking with Reg and the boys. I hope you're not suggesting I got this job purely on Reg Holdsworth's influences. A bit convenient, wasn't it, being interviewed by your own boss? Well, you were as well placed as me on that matter. You're practically related to that Mrs. Waters. She doesn't have as much clout as the men on the board, obviously. Look, I'm, I'm sorry you're taking this attitude, but it does sound a bit like sour grapes, if you ask me. Yeah, well, it would to you, wouldn't it? Look, Miss Fenwick, strictly between ourselves, Reg Holdsworth, well, he blocked my advancement for nearly three years. Now, what would make him change now? He just got promoted, didn't he? You're no longer a threat. And given the choice between having someone here who he has in his pocket and someone he doesn't, I'd say there was no contest. Wouldn't you? What about you? Hi. Is he? So, sir. Uh, listen, I've got a bit of bad news. 
Huh? Yeah, shit, Grand Mullah, she's had another heart attack. Oh. Sorry. Well, I thought I'd better tell you, like, I'm on my way across the water tonight. To Belfast? Yeah, so, uh... You keep an eye on the place till Andy gets back, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm very grateful. Uh... Do you want any money for the fare, or cos...? <sighs> no. No, I'm fine. Thanks for asking, though. Right, well, uh, give me love to everybody, won't you? Yeah, I will. They'll, uh, they'll appreciate that. I suppose I'll see you whenever I get back, then. Yeah. Safe journey. All the best. <laughs> Come. Um, you wanted to see me? Ah, yes. Miss Fennick, please take a seat. I just wanted to say that despite our differences of opinion earlier, I've been very happy working with you over these past few weeks. Look, um, I'm sorry if I was sounding No, like no, it. it's quite all right. I know what it feels like to be disappointed. And I know we all say things that we don't mean in the heat of the moment. But you were right. Um, I mean, it must have sounded like sour grapes. No, let's just forget it, shall we? And all that remains for me to do is to wish you all the best in the future. And I hope that when we meet again, it's in more auspicious circumstances. <laughs> you do know where your next posting is, I take it? Did Mr Oldsworth tell you? No. Well, I'm not getting another posting. I'm staying on here as your uh, full-time assistant. Going to be fun, isn't it? Colin? Hello? Oh, hiya, ma'am. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Now, Colin? No, I'm... Um, if I hear from him, I'll give you a shout. We were just leaving Cherbourg when this Bentley screeches up on the quay. The bloke gets out and he hoes up the gangplank all furtively. You know, he's a real tough military moustache. <laughs> Captain says after dinner, can you give him a haircut and while you're at it, shave his tash off? It's not you're a steward. No, I have to be a jack of all trades in the Merchant Navy, missus. Anyway, white as a sheet this bloke was, like he'd just seen a ghost. Well, I shaved him. He got off at Cherbourg the next day, and I thought that was the end of it. Go on. Went on to Spain, bought an English newspaper, and there it was. Lord Lucan disappears. No. You out Lord Lucan escape? Aye, no, but keep your trap shit in mind. I don't want the police after us. How old were you? 23, 24? Oh, dead romantic. Young 43, if you ask me. Eh? 19 years ago, Lord Lucan disappeared. I remember that year, because it went my Cyril died, 1974. Ah, well, maybe I was a bit younger, you know. Well, 10. You know, more than 30. Don't spoil it, Betty. Are you pulling my leg? Can, if you like. What time do you get off? Oh, no. <laughs> do you know you're worse than your Desmond? <laughs> Ta-da, Yeah, ciao. ta, -da, ta, -da, ta, -da, ta -da. You know... You could have told me that she was staying on. I felt ridiculous. There, minor detail. Main thing is you got the job, which you would not have done without me, of course. Yeah, and she knows that too, unfortunately. It's going to be a nightmare working with her. Yes, years of my personal training, till you were ready. Years of your personal blocking, you mean, till you were promoted. You've got a strange way of showing gratitude, you haven't you? Hey, is it her that's putting these ideas into your head? Hmm? She's a troublemaker, isn't she? Who's told you that? Because I have got my ear to the ground. She's not everybody's golden girl at the head office, apparently. First reports on that were greatly exaggerated. So you swung it my way instead? No, no, no. Look, will you stop reading th things into this? Is this a wake or a celebration? A celebration, Reg, of your undying loyalty. Good. Right. To number one. Oh. Yeah, thanks for cooking supper. Oh, you liked it, then? Well, it saves me having to buy charcoal next time I have a barbecue. Well, what was it ever done? Mum's been on the phone. Why, what do you want? 
Some girl you're supposed to be in love with, worried sick about where you are. Janice. Oh, you remember her name, then. Look, what are you doing here, Colin? I told you, I haven't seen you in ages. Come on, don't give me that. You're in trouble, aren't you? <sighs> The truth is, when I got off the ship yesterday, I just couldn't face going back home. Not straight away. That bad? I don't know. I just feel I've got some sorting out to do, you know, and I can't do that with Janice, a man breathing down my neck. I need a bit of time away to think. You're not going to deny me that, are you, Des? Looks like I've got no option, doesn't it? I knew you wouldn't let us down. Come on, you can buy us a pint. Liz, have you not got your key? <clears throat> I'm not sure I've got the right to use it anymore. Oh, don't be daft. Come in. Steve told me about your mum. Yeah. Yeah, so we a bit more serious this time, I think. Time me off? Half an hour. I, yeah. Uh... I just wanted to say how sorry I was, and I hope it all goes well. You will give her my love, won't you? Yeah, of course I will, yeah. Look, he, he didn't have to come round, Lester, tell me this. He could have used the phone. It's not the same, though, is it? I'll get off anyway. I don't want to keep you. You've only just got here. Yeah, but you've got your packing to do and that. You will let me know if there's any news, won't you? Yeah, of course I will. So... Take care, Jim. Liz, look, if you want... If you... If you want... <sighs> Good luck on the first day of the rest of your life. You deserve it, Angie. That's hey, nice, isn't it, eh? Sonny, now to give you the brush up, eh? Now we're going up in the world, eh? eh? Are you nervous first down parade? Eh? No. Give all, but I heard you walking about early lights. Well, it's been going round and round my head, Jack, what I'm going to say to them. You're not getting on your hind legs giving a speech, are you? Well, I've got to get the message to these people, Jack. I've got to. Right, I'm gone. I'm gone. <sighs> What's up? Deep breathing. Give over. You're not having a baby. Well, you're supposed to concentrate the mind. Yeah. You can't be going giving speeches with egg all over your tie, can you? Now, look, Curly, listen to Jacko. There's only one thing you've got to get straight, son. What's that? You've got to start the way you mean to carry on. Right. Put the fear of God in them. Give them the lash. They've abolished flogging in the retail grocery trade, Jack. Yes, and that's why the world's been going down ever since. Look, you see, work, Curly, is unnatural. You can't say that, Jack. People are crying out for work. Oh, yes. I mean, you, you've got to work, haven't you? Because you need the money. Plus, it's somewhere you can go and see your mates, keep out of the road of the wife. And if it's half a decent job, it'll keep you dry in bad weather. But you don't go to work to work. I see. Well, otherwise, you wouldn't need bosses, would you? You keep your hand on your lash. And I want to wear that ivy calling you for all sorts. Then I'll be proud of you, curly lad. Ah. There's now in. You'll have to go over the road. No, oh, I'm not particular. Got any plans? Take it easy if that's a plan. Hey, do you fancy him in sick? We'll scoot off somewhere. Have a laugh. Colin, I've got to be there. I'm the one they're ringing sick to. Oh, just a thought. What about the barmaid then? What about her? Oh, how well, man, what does? I'll spare ribs, mine, but very tasty. You never know. She's got the afternoon off. I'm sure we could find something to do. Just, um, just stay it clear. I thought so. Well, you thought wrong. It's not like that. I just. I just like her, that's all. Well, if you're not doing that there yourself. Just keep away from her. Don't mess about with Raquel. Right, have them all assembled in the canteen before we open the doors. What, the whole shift? Yes, the whole shift. Going to have some kind of Nuremberg rally, are we? If you see any resemblance between me and Adolf Hitler, then please feel free to mention it. 
but not in company time. I see. We're not allowed to make jokes anymore. Of course we're allowed to make jokes, but only if I laugh at them. I'll get them to the canteen then. All right. Right, hold that, will you? Oh, dear me. There we are. Right. Here? Yes, that's right. That's right. Are you thinking of changing things? Hmm? Are you redesigning the shop? Well, why stop at the shop, eh? Why not redesign the British grocery trade while we're about it? Oh, uh, there was something I wanted to mention to you. I think you told me that you know everybody who comes into this shop by name. Practically. Right, right. Well, then I'd like to see some evidence of it. You know, when people come in, I'd like to hear, Good morning, Mrs Entwistle, or Nice day, Mrs Entwistle, or, or whatever. You see, it's the Mrs Entwistle that's important. Do you get my meaning? You see, I'm looking for a cheerful disposition, welcoming but respectful. Meaning I don't come over like that now? <laughs> no, no. Meaning that I see your cheerful nature as an asset that we can capitalize on, Mrs. Barlow. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen. One of the nice things about this morning is there's no introductions necessary. For those who don't know, I'll put you straight. I am the new manager. For well, he's a jolly good fellow, for well, he's a jolly good... Yes, yes thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> it's a very hard act to follow. Taking over from Mr Holdsworth, Reg was a man who's forgotten more about the uh, retail grocery trade than <coughs> all of us put together. I think I've, uh, I think I've phrased that, that, that right. Well, th this morning I got some advice from a friend of mine. He said, go in there and start as you mean to go on. No speeches, keel or somebody. <clears throat> well, he was half right. No speeches. Because speeches don't make a company work. Dialogue does. And I will be doing as much listening as I hope that you will be doing. People, people make better buys work. People working together. As a team. And from now on, I don't want to hear about shifts, early shifts, late shifts. The, the, the word shift, I mean, what does it make you think of, eh? Shifty. Shiftless. Makeshift. From now on, I want to hear about teams. Red teams. And a blue team. You'll not get me on any red team, pal. City man all my life, man and boy, this world and next. Y yes, thank you. Thank you, Sam. But I am talking. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said you were listening. Yes, well, I'll come round and give you a good listening to after, Sam. All right? OK. Well, here we are. Here we are. You're very quiet. Sorry, just... Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had a wonderful weekend. I'm sorry you're sorry. No, it was. Just... Monday morning feels a bit like sobering up, you know what I mean? Well, I do occasionally hear people say never again. Might be the most sensible thing to say. Huh? And yes, it was a... wonderful weekend. Thank you. And it was so very kind of Mrs. Osborne to give up her time for such a good cause. Hmm? I'm just replying to the vote of thanks. I said thank you, that's all. I know. Is that wrong? Yep. <laughs> I can't work you out. Oh, you can do that all right. I'll give you a call. Yep. I know. Now, if anything I've said seems confusing, 
Well, that's what dialogue is all about. <clears throat> I mean, dialogue is about sorting things out if and when you're confused. If you are. Now, if anything I've said sounds revolutionary, well, I hope you're stimulated by this. Because as we all know, the retail grocery trade is going through a revolution. Now, real revolution, in my book, is about empowering the people who make the business work. And that is you. Now, I have faith in each and every one of you. Miss Fenwick, open those doors. Now, for a man who isn't making speeches, he can't kind of have go on. Hi! Hey, can you fit me in for a little face? You can have the whole morning if you're quick. Oh, go on, but me and I'll have the works. Right, I'll just arrange someone to look after the spaniel. I didn't know you had a spaniel. Neither did I. <gasps> oh, sorry! sorry. Morning. Just about. What time do you call this? Flippy neck, it's only five minutes. Yeah, and that's five minutes late, and that's five minutes too many. Hi. Hey. I want to get to Denise. It's for a facial. Oh, why don't you? Oh, bugger He follows me everywhere. I could scream. You wanted him to retire. Nothing at suit you till oh, he did. Oh, I can't even have a bath. He's tapping on the door. Oh, I see you lock it, do you? Even when it's only out. Especially when it's only out. I'm there with all my oil and my lovely bubbles and the radio on, and it's knocking up. You're going to be long. How long are you going to be? Oh, it's not like he wants anything. It's just like a dog scratching. Morning, all. Oh. Morning. Alfie, love it. Now, you didn't have much breakfast this morning, did you? Well, a note in the house. But so used to taking stuff home from the shop, you don't think, do you? Mm, well, I could look at some on a plate, I'm telling you. What, good. the good old English breakfast, isn't that what they call it in the hotel? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, bacon, egg, tomatoes, sausage, mushroom, tea, toast, marmalade, everything. Oh, I dare say it'll see me through till dinner time. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go and install yourself. Oh, right. Well, is that, is that both of you? No, no, just the one. And keep it coming very slowly. I don't care if it takes him all morning to get it down because uh, he won't follow me while there's food that's paid for. Oh, mm. all right, all right, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to, it's no good to me. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have dropped it if you had been so funny with me. You've got me all on edge. That's a daft excuse. What went wrong? Nothing went wrong. Gone off him? Just... Never you mind. Come on, then, what kind of time do you have? <sighs> Wonderful. In every department. So why are you being all empty? Because there's more to life. And next time you break something, break the cheap stuff. There's a lesson in there for me. Right, sorry. I'm here, I'm here. Oh, come oh. on, I want the works. Hands, face, legs, the lot. Oh, and I want to know everything that's going on and all. And please, if Alfie comes looking for me, shove a tar around my head and say I'm not here. You come in, love. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you something? Feel free. Why did you buy a corner shop? <laughs> You know, I think a more relevant question, Mrs. Barlow, would be whether a mop cap wouldn't set off that distinctive coiffure of yours. You know, I rather believe it might. Pardon? You see, soon in this trade, there are going to be two kinds of shops, the future and the past, the nightmare and the dream, the vast hypermarket and the tiny little corner shop smelling of coffee and apples and dried fruits where people know your name and give your child a sweet. You see, when people go shopping, they have needs beyond mere provisions. And more and more, they're going to want to step out of the nightmare into this tiny oasis of the past, or any one of a chain of little oases. And I'll be waiting for them. And so will you, in your mop cap and your gingham, or better still, perhaps, Bombazine. Come on, then. Oh, you haven't met Jo, have you? Hi. Hi. Uh, I think we have, yeah. Gail's a career woman, aren't you, Gail? <laughs> Is that what you call it? You are. I'm a high-powered skivvy, that's all I am. Why? Oh, she's just embarrassing me, yeah. 
Yeah, I was saying, if I was a woman and it was a choice between a career and bringing up children, there'd be no contest. Well, there's not many around here have the luxury of a choice. No, but I mean, people are all trying to be happy in their different ways. And, uh, well, Sally here is about the only person I know who seems to have the neck of it. <laughs> he doesn't know me. <laughs> well, I noticed, a, I noticed a difference in Jonathan, you see. Yeah, well, that's because he's settled. Yeah, well, it's been around somebody who's happy in life. It rubs off. Oh, I'll take it out on Kevin, though. I'll give him a dog's life, don't I, Gail? No, you're just about the happiest couple I know. I bet that's because you're daft enough not to know better. <laughs> that's probably what it is. Come on, then, my ladder. Let's get you home. See if some of it rubs off on me. Yeah. yeah. Bye, bye. All right. Oh, bye, bye. 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 What are you making? Vegetable and cheese souffle. Oh, well, if it's any good, you can stop the night. And the fellas didn't speak two words of anyone's language. A bit of filth is all. Well, it'd be all right working in a betting shop, then. Well, I might take you up on that. You're really thinking about chucking it in? It's finished, man. There's me and the boards. You said that the last time I saw you, whenever that was. Your wedding. Aye. That'd be right. Sorry about all that, man. Oh. We never did speak the same language. Uh, you told us different when you first met her. Well, it's a different language altogether, isn't it, when you first click? Aye, funny language it is isn't all mine. Just about the time you're getting fluent, you kind of realise there's nothing left to say. Hey, can you whisk a couple of egg whites? Can I what? Come on, I'm going to educate you. Yeah, I know it's surprising, but the attraction between men and women has got nothing to do with sex, it turns out. Says who? Oh, well, they've been into it and everything, you know, brainy people. So what is it, then? Well, you know, if you take a mirror and stick it up your nose... Eh? Like dividing your face, and you look into another mirror, you can sort of make one big face out of half of your face. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of with you, but it's not a thing I do that often, you know. No, 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 they do it with photographs, don't they? I mean, they put two left halves together and two right halves, and it makes a completely different person. That's it, yeah. Uh, so? Well, that's it. And? And? Ah! Yes, so, well, one of them's more what your face would be if you was a man, and the other's more what it would be if you was a woman, if you weren't already, sort of thing. Is that right? Mm, so when you fall for somebody, what you're seeing, I mean, you don't realise it, but what you're seeing... Now, hang on a minute, because this bit's complicated. You see the face made up of the halves that they'd be if that person were the same sex that you are. Well, now I'm gone. So what it is is, you see, your brain is sort of imagining, if you know what I mean. And if your brain sees that person unconsciously as being the sort of person that you think you like yourself, then you fancy that person and... Well, it's as simple as that. Who was telling you this? Oh, it's a fella down at Gardens Cricket Club. Some blokes have all the chat. Did he have his hand on your leg? No, he didn't. He works in market research. <laughs> Any chance over here, Jack? Yes, Cook. Listen, give us a whiskey while she's not looking. Right. No, you see, and it has been proved, because you know when people draw a face? I mean, even if you can't really draw, but... When you draw a face, you always draw what you think you like yourself. And boys always draw boys, and girls always draw girls. Yeah? <laughs> uh, is it just me? Or is she from another planet? Do you know, I think I'm halfway with her. <laughs> then we'd best get you sat down. <laughs> oh, Rita, what that man needs is a hobby. Now, what uh, would be a good hobby for him? Uh, well, uh, what about fishing? Oh, no, that has maggots, doesn't it? I don't think it has maggots if you go fly fishing. No, oh, well, I don't want flies all around the house, neither, thank you. Get him from under your feet. <sighs> well, he went fishing before with Don Brennan and the other idiot. They had the police from five <laughs> counties looking for They did, I remember. So how's it suiting you, then? Oh, well, I find plenty to do, you know. Well, as long as you take an interest, that's the thing, isn't it? Of course, she thinks an old but spending. I don't know what to do with herself. Oh. She's driving me to distraction. Just mentally going across the shelves in the cabin. I mean, they're all hobbies. Well, that's why I thought you may have some idea. Well, there's woodworking, if he's any good with his hands. Well, if he is, I have never had the benefit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we keep model engineering for somebody. Mrs Davis collects that. Now her husband has a, what do you call it, a lathe, a relays. Anyway, whatever it is, he does it all in his shed. Oh, now that sounds promising. You see that fella over there? Which fella? My new boss. Oh, yeah, yeah, what about him? I think he's Balmy. Oh. 
Ah, Mr. Watts, what might your pleasure be? Oh, champagne, please, Brendan. Ah, alas, on this occasion. Oh, just a pint, then. <laughs> How did it go, sir? Jack, somewhere between triumph and disaster, the nightmare happened. The nightmare? The dog do. Oh, oh the nightmare. What kind of dog it was, I don't know. A Great Dane, I shouldn't wonder. It was up and down three aisles. Oh, the grocer's nightmare. Entrance blocked, barricade of trolleys, all hands to the pumps. We had disinfectant, mops, the biggest operation since the D-Day landings. And your finest hour, I'm sure, Mr Watts. In fact, I, I'm almost sorry I begrudged you the champagne. <laughs> Restoring old cars. Now, that's a shelf on its own. Over my dead body, I keep thinking. A lot going for hi-fi. And spend a fortune. Anyway, I'd have to listen to it. How about headphones? Headphones? Oh, I like that. Now, what could he do with headphones on in a little shed? Oh, that was cracking, Cull. Very simple, Desi. Right, are we off to the pub, then? I think we'd better keep you and Raquel apart. Then you can tell me what you're really doing here. No jobs back home, man. Oh, yeah, come on. Yeah. And there's Janice. Can't easily explain to you. What? You haven't left her under a floorboard somewhere, have you? Wouldn't you shield us? No chance. <sighs> now, we had a bit of a fling when I was home one time. The earth wasn't moving exactly, you know, but nice. So? Yeah? But I started writing letters. Now, you've got to understand, right? You're sitting in a big tin can in the middle of nowhere. No one speaks English. Well, you go down to your glory hole and you start writing. You start pouring out all kinds of stuff. Never wrote any letters. Never any good at it. Yeah, I never knew I was any good at it. Some of it was, well, like, poetic, you know? I mean, that's a corner of the last, not me. Yeah, laid it on a bit then. Oh, I tell you, man. The other side of Valparaiso, you get raptures of the deep. Then you catch sight of Ellesmere Port in the drizzle. And it dawns on you what you've been saying. So she thinks... Oh, well, she would, man. She's found the perfect little love nest. Got the deposit. You mean it at the time when you're writing it, you know. So you've been kidding her along. You weren't even there taking advantage of it. <laughs> I used to phone up, ship to shore just to say, you know, sleep tight. Cost us a fortune and she'd say, I got your letter. And it was like, well, I can't describe it. It just made her go sort of all. Mm. I think I'm with you. And I'd be back in me glory hole scribbling away. I mean. You mean it at the time. So you are. You're on the run. Well, she's found a house. Well, that's all right. You wanted to settle down. She wants to settle down with the bloke that wrote the letters. I mean, she's a nice lass and everything, but... Well, there must have been blind in letters. Yeah, well, I still got the tough one to write. And I can't go back till I have. Do you know, I don't want to sound envious, but he does sound like the kind of fellow who can give a girl a good time. Oh, doesn't he? Well, if I let myself, I could be a bit smitten, you know. But that's my problem. I do let myself. Do you know, I've never let myself get smitten, not my whole life. Just like I've never let myself catch a cold. Either way, I always end up sniffling. I'm waiting for the phone to ring. Oh, hey, listen, you. You've had a great weekend. It's only Monday. What's your problem? OK. We're coming back down the motorway. Imagine it now. And it just starts. Well, what starts? Al, he's incredibly busy and he's got a lot on. Just slipping it in like it's not about anything in particular. And you know... Oh, do you know, I'm beginning to recognise this. Yeah, he thinks he's wrapping it all up very crafty and you know the punchline. I'll call you. You've been there. Yeah, well, once or twice. It was just listening to him, snaking his way round to saying it after the time we had had. <gasps> oh, and the things... Never mind. After all that, it's Monday morning, and there he is, massaging it all back to... I'll call you. And he said it. He actually said the words, so that by the time they popped out, I could have brained him. You'd no idea why. Am I going to have another drink? No. Mm. Quite right. Early night, and read me a book. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you know the richest man in the country is a grocer? Mm, he's your biggest competitor. Ah, no, 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 no. He's Norman's big competitor. No, uh, better buyers has no chance in the long run. Too small to be big and too big to be small. But the little shop, on the other hand, it's due for renaissance. You reckon? Oh, yes. 
Well, ask yourself this, Brendan, eh? Where is the Renaissance, eh? Where is it today? You swine! I thought you had something dead important on tonight. And it wasn't until I got halfway down the motorway to Bradford before I realised what it was. Oh. Yeah, well, balmy's a relative term. I mean, compared to the rest of us, he may be balmy, but sit him down with a couple of High Court judges and who'd know? <laughs> Tomorrow, love. Uh, would you give her this? Well, I think she's just gone out. You'll catch her if you're ill. Uh, yeah, I think she's a bit busy at the moment. Uh, you know your theory? Yeah. Well, sorry. <laughs> Mrs. Pierce, good morning. And may I congratulate you on being the very first customer of the newly refurbished Scots Provisions, home of traditional values and old-fashioned service. Now, what can I get for you? Something from our bread basket, perhaps? Hey, they used to have bread like that when I was a girl. Weatherfield Cathedral, they used to call them. Man, they had another name for them, but I won't mention it in mix. Uh, <laughs> may I uh, wrap one for you? Uh... Is it the same traditional price? Penny ain't it was. If only, Mrs. Pierce, if only. No, I won't bother. They're a bit too big for one person. Now, I like a loaf that's plenty of preserves in it, you know. It keeps better. I really came in for some tin stuff, but I don't see it well. Oh, now, now, Mrs. Pierce, Mrs. Pierce, please, please. We are here to serve you. Mrs. Barlow, will you please come and help Mrs. Pierce, please? Oh. Now, in the meantime, may I introduce you to our mature customer's voucher scheme? You see, every time you spend more than £10 at Scott's Provisions, you will receive a 50p voucher redeemable at Christmas. Oh. Bye, uh, Don't say another word, Phyllis. Oh, words fail me. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Pierce would like uh, some of our tinned produce. Yes, Phyllis, what can I get you? Uh, those pastas. You know, those funny shapes with fangs and witches and all. They come in blood red sauce. No, I don't think we stock those anymore, do we, Mr. Scott? They're not traditional, you see. We do have tagliatelle verde. Oh, but I like my shapes. I like somewhat to look at. You do when you're on your own, you know. Have you got the dinosaur ones? Ah, welcome to Scott's Provisions. Hey, I like the new look, Deirdre. Please. May I uh, point you in the direction of the tasting table, where you may let your taste buds browse amongst our traditional delights? Real traditional food? That'll be interesting. So it'll be um, tripe and trotters, will it? Oh, now I love tripe and sweetbreads. And what happened to all those giblets? Do you know you never see them now? I used to make lovely soup out of giblets. Yes, I, I'm afraid not. I only wanted a yoghurt for me lunch. Oh, over here. Hey, and listen, don't mention this to anybody. <laughs> I'd hate them to see me in this rig out, especially Ken. And he turned up unannounced last night and I ended up clubbing it in my work clothes. Nobody's looking at you but me, he said, and I think you look fabulous. Well, I heard about this. It sounds as if he's getting a bit serious, doesn't it? Oh, I think it's got more to do with showing off than showing affection. The only one he's in love with is himself. You wouldn't have to worry about your looks so much if you got some sleep from time to time. I slept last night. For two hours maximum. I would say you went to bed at five o'clock in the morning. And how do you know? A mother knows. Who were you with? Denise, I suppose. Uh-huh, Mummy G, I was with Denise. OK. Listen, are you sure this is OK? Because I'm going to drop you wherever you want to go. This is where I want to go. Just a couple of minutes walk. OK. I'll see you later. Bye. OK? Bye. Please. Hey, 
How's it going, Jonathan? Hey, hey, don't shoot me. Don't you shoot me, eh? Uh, actually, he doesn't play with guns. Oh, so? I do play in. with oh. guns! Hey, are you coming to feed the ducks with me this afternoon? Yeah. Good lad. Hey, look, uh, you're going to have to have your tea without me tonight as well. I promised the guy I'll have his car ready oh, for him. Okay. Can't you come home and have your tea and then go back to work? Nah, I've not got a willpower to do that, have I, eh? I sit in that chair, get the little girl on me knee. Oh, I well, want to go out again, will I? <laughs> eh? All right, well, we'll bring some butties across to you later on, Ooh, won't we? Good way? idea. See you later. Right. Bye. Bye. See you later. Mm. Bye bye. Yeah, you be a good girl for you, ma'am. Yeah, 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 Let's have a look. Well, I better get off to work myself, I suppose. Uh, I'll see you at the usual time. Right, OK. If we're not here, we'll be on our way back from the park. Daddy's the park. You're going to have your work cut out with Kevin working late. Yeah, well, at least I'll be in the fresh air instead of some smelly old garage. <laughs> but when he works late, that means you're working late too, doesn't it? Looking after Rosie without any help. Yeah, I suppose it does. But what time does he get back then? About seven or eight. Why? Oh, just wondering. Oh. I'll see you. Bye. Well, he's a lovely lad, is Curly, but, I mean, it's just not up to it. Don't you agree, Miss Fennick? I don't think it's really my, my place. He says the same, you know, he says he hasn't got any confidence. He has no leadership and he's indecisive. And he's here. Vera, what are you doing here? Well, I was just shopping and I thought I'd pop in and see Ivy. Is that all right? Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't stop just because I'm here. I want to hear what you've got to say. Well, we're just talking about women's things, <laughs> you know. Oh, see. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, while you're all here, I'd like to fill you in on the new cell-based management structure. Cells? What do you mean, cells? <laughs> I'm going to divide you all up into cells. Hey, does that mean they get prizes for best? Perhaps we could have a pink cell interface meeting this morning in tea break. Oh, do you mean they'll be working through the tea break? It's got nothing to do with you, Vera. Well, you asked for my input. I asked for better by staff input. Well, I think in Perhaps that case... Perhaps you could come too. I mean, we won't be working. We'll just be exchanging ideas. You see, the pyramid structure worked by keeping you down. Down. See, I want to set you free. Free to use your talents. Free to express your ideas. As Chairman Mao once said, it's like letting a, a hundred thousand flowers blossom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always said you should sell flowers. I thought the chairman's name was Morgan. I just want the ends taken off the gold split. <laughs> when the light's behind me, it looks like my head's on fire. <laughs> hey, if you think that's bad, you want to go and see what Scott's done to Deirdre. <laughs> Why, what's so? He's got her in mob cap and button boots. <laughs> looks like a jar of homemade jam. <laughs> he doesn't look any better. He's got a straw boater on. I thought he was going to say, give me the moonlight. Oh, it's <laughs> <that's> very adorable, isn't it? Well, Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's yes. Shocking. I would like to have an appointment, please, with Denise. What day? Today. This morning, if possible. It's very busy. Oh, it's just a trim. Well, I could do that for you if you like. Oh, no, it has to be Denise. Uh, a friend recommended her. I see. Right. Well, there's a gap in about an hour. If you want to go away and come back. Oh, no. I'll be quite happy with the magazine. I'll just sit down and watch. Yeah. Um, hey, what's this you made of? To celebrate the sale of your house. Oh, <gasps> have you got a buyer? Well, oh. I've got a young chap coming around in an hour or so, who is, shall we say, very ripe and ready to fall. Right. Come on, get your coat. No, 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 I can't go. Mr. Watts won't like it. I've only just got here. Listen, I'm supposed to be his um, key contact worker or something. Fair enough, dear lady. You are uh, protected by the clock of my patronage. Oh, kissy, kissy. Hey, hey, where do you think you're going? Well, you've only I... just got here and you're my key contact worker. For your information, Mrs. Nero is now going off to sell her house. She'll return when her business is complete. Goodbye. Go. Uh, well, <coughs> never mind. We can still have our little brainstorming session. As I used to say to my son, it's only the face that spoils it now. Oh, you got kids, how many? One of each. And a husband who's an even bigger kid than either, eh? Oh, they are grown up now. Do you have children? No. I've had husbands, then. Husbands? How many? Two. And that's plenty. I've learnt my lesson. So you don't believe in marriage? Well, it's men I don't believe in. I see. Oh, don't get me wrong. They're all right in their place. I just don't want them in my place. So you wouldn't ever marry again? Only at gunpoint. point. And you don't even have a boyfriend? Well, I have, actually. It's a bit like giving up cigarettes, isn't it? The next one's always going to be a last. This one's all right. For a laugh. 
Well, that's something anyway. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Uh... Ruperell? Mrs. Ruperell. Oh, the bloke I was talking about is called. Oh. oh my God. I'm his mother, Miss Osborne. Oh look, I'm sorry. I... If I'd known him, it's all right. <sighs> It might interest you to know he speaks of you in quite different terms. Well, I think a great deal of him myself. He speaks about you all the time, as a matter of fact. To be very frank, he gave me this impression that you were in love and contemplating marriage. He did what? But I can see you don't feel quite the same. It's not your fault. But please, take care. He's my most precious possession. What, the shop or the headgear? The shop, I'm afraid. Oh. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, hi. Oh, I stepped into a time warp or something. Hello, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is that really a jar of mint balls I see before me? Oh, you're early. Yeah, well, I got everything done more quickly than I thought I would. So? Oh, right. Well, darling, it's just you and me for the part now, then, isn't it? <coughs> oh, do you want your orange <coughs> juice? Is that what you want? There you go. Thanks, Deirdre. Ta-da, Lord. Ah, have you not fed the ducks, then? Well, I'll tell you what, why don't you and me take Rosie to the park while Sally Foot puts her feet up, eh? No, don't be daft. Oh, go on. I'm sure you've earned yourself a break. Well, I'm not sure what she'll be like with you. I mean, she doesn't know you very well, does she? Shall we go with them, then? To the park, eh? Yeah, that'd be nice. Make a change talking to someone who doesn't think they're a pirate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, oh, no. Oh. oh, I had to see it. Oh, you could have spared me this at least. Well, I did think about bringing my camera. Please. For old time's sake. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Barlow. And what can I offer you? Uh, no, thank you. My appetite is satisfied. Thank you, Mr. Scott. But I must say, you really caught the look. Ah, well, I believe firmly in ambience. Yeah, well, there's just possibly a couple of things missing if you want to get the really authentic flavour of the period. Oh, such as? Well, possibly uh, an outbreak of rickets would just clinch it, or a case of head lice, perhaps. <laughs> no, seriously. Have you told the Gazette about this? They're always very keen on a good picture story, and you are a picture. Ken. Oh, I say, that's an excellent idea. OK, this has gone far enough. What are you doing? I either work here in an overall, or I don't work here at all. Uh, in Bar which case, you'll have to find somebody else who knows all the customers by name, OK? M Mrs Barlow, I promise you, you will see the wisdom of my strategy when you come to till up. Uh, what are you laughing at? Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, just nice to know I can still get you to take your clothes off, that's all. If there's one thing I've learned in my time in retail, it is that the, the purchasing environment must be a pleasant Yes, I know that! But the thing... How, how can it be pleasant? With the Wicked Witch of the oh, West... Oh, really, Rome, giving, giving, giving for the evil... Look, I guess all right, I know a heart isn't in selling it. Absolutely. That is why you must keep her out of the way while I show these people around. How can you show people around? You don't even know the place. Don't be so silly! Well, I can't look after a girl. How can I... Um, look, um, you take her into the kitchen and I'll show them upstairs. Have you gone deaf? There's someone at the door. Yes, we know that, Mother. Now, listen, well, when I come down the stairs, yes. you take her into the garden. Yes. That's but, it. Oh, someone but... from the home, I suppose, come to take me away. Look, we are not going to put you into a home, Mother. We've already told you that. No, come into the kitchen and I'll make you a nice cup of tea. You'll enjoy that, won't you? It's trying to poison it's me, Maureen. It's trying to poison you, just get on with it. Nice cup of tea. No, no, not tea. She'll want to go. Well, what else then? Well, I don't know. Just go, for goodness sake. Do you come in? Come to view the house. Uh, yes, I've been going and coming all day. So please come in. Shall I show you Thank upstairs you. first? Yeah, look, they're married. Look, that one's following that one round. No, he's married to someone else. He's just after her for a body. <laughs> <laughs> look, here comes his wife. <laughs> oh, I think you're right and all. Well, Rosie and Jonathan are getting on nicely. Yeah. He had a lot of problems sharing at first. Yeah. He's not used to other kids. Well, it's not just that. It's to do with security. He used to make a big pile of toys at the corner of the room and not let anyone near him. It was like a nest, you know. It must have been really difficult for you. Well, he's been through such a lot. If making a nest helps him, then that's great. You understand him better than I do. You're being daft. No, no, no. You've got an idea about him, a plan for him. I, 
I just improvise. You're his dad. That's what you're supposed to do. I mean, this is my job. But I really appreciate what you're doing for him. Thanks. It's nice to be appreciated for a change. Does um, Kevin not appreciate you, then? He's just working hard at the moment, you know. Oh, I certainly do. There's no end to my work at the moment. Except for this afternoon. What? Oh, well, yeah, uh, this afternoon. Well, this afternoon was, um, well, it was very unusual, very unusual, and uh, I'll probably end up working tonight at home. Listen, uh, if Kevin's not coming home for supper, why don't we take the kids for a pizza? Oh, no, no, I don't... No, go on, my treat. A thank you present. We can get them big ice creams uh, when we could sneak a glass of wine for ourselves, what do you say? No, honestly, I, I don't think it. I mean, it's Rosie's bath time and she gets grumpy if I mess with a routine. And I did say I'd take Kevin some sandwiches, so... Well, maybe, maybe some other time, then. Yeah, some other time would be nice. Come on, Rosie, are you going to finish the... doing the ducks? You got some more bread? Through there is the kitchen and there's a door, you see, that opens onto the garden. Uh, who's mm. this? Have you come to take me to a home? Oh. Well, I... No! Mother, this is Mr Stevens. He's come to see the house. He's taking photos, look, to show his wife. He's got three children. Now, isn't that nice? I hope they don't grow up to betray you like mine have done. Mr Stevens has got a buyer for his house, so he could move in very quickly. I see. So, as you've got it, see, it's very reasonably priced. I hope so we buy like it. Step this way. Because we can't stay in this flea pit for another minute. <laughs> My mother gets so confused sometimes. Oh, I'm sorry, Maureen. <laughs> she asked me not to mention the mice, didn't oh. you? She said, no. don't mention the mice to the man who wants to buy the house. If you ask me once, you ask me a thousand times. I'm so forgetful. And I'm not to mention the rising dam. Oh. oh, there is no rising dam. No, I'm not. See the... <laughs> no. Now, why didn't you come and see the kitchen? Oh, no, thanks. I think I've seen enough. Have you see the garden yet? Really? Must no, get Mr. back Stevens. to work. You can just see I the need house. to go. <laughs> no, you'll be lost to see yet. But, Daddy, why are you waiting all the time to run? Don't... Everyone has been talking about you and Hanif last night. Have they? Yeah. So, things must be going really well between you two, then. I'm going to finish with him. What? Tonight, I'm going to meet him in the Rovers tonight. And I'm going to finish with him. You're joking. Well, why? Because he's getting too serious, that's why. This was supposed to be a bit of fun. And he's gone and fallen in love with me. Oh, dear. Poor you. I don't know how you cope. I should have learnt my lesson by now. I have learnt my lesson now. I am going to finish with him. Hey, have you tried these? Go on. Give us a do while he's quiet. What is the point? If you're going to finish with him, well... I want to look good when I do it, don't I? I want him to regret it. Besides, I've got to look my best now, haven't I? I'm on the market again. Mmm. <sighs> Aw. Oh. Must be awful for Joe having no one to cuddle up to in the evening. You know, when he came in the shop today, I could just see that he just didn't want to go home on his own, you know. Hey, did I tell you? In the park, he tried to get me to go for a pizza with him. I said no, but I mean, then afterwards, I thought, oh, he's got no one to eat with him, has he? I mean, I wouldn't have gone anyway. I'd, I'd feel funny going out for a meal with somebody else. So, just since we went out for a meal, oh, I'd love to go out, Kev. Just you and me, be waited on. Even if it was just for a pizza. Wouldn't you, Kev? <sighs> he wants to marry you. Mm. Just change that Santa Claus. Yeah. Well, he hasn't asked me how such. He's told his mother. Oh, well, then he must be serious if he's told his mother. I know. Don't get excited. I'm not going to say yes. Oh, is that why you haven't bothered to get your hair done? Well, I'd be stupid to say yes, wouldn't I? It may seem exciting now, but it'll all end in tears, won't it? I don't know, would it? I haven't got a clue. So is he planning to pop the question tonight, then? Oh, stop it. I'm trying to be serious. Well, I just thought you wanted a bit of fun, you. I did. But now I know this. Everything's changed. Well? 
Is that good or is it bad? Well, that's just it. I'm thrilled. I keep telling myself I shouldn't be, but then I look up in the mirror and there I am with this big soft grin across my face. Oh, dear, you have got it bad, haven't you? And then I did this terrible thing. I told his mother I didn't love him. What did you do that for? I didn't know she was his mother at the mm. time. Never mind that. I'll probably never see him again. Oh, well, then you won't have anything to worry about then, will you? <sighs> what am I going to do? Listen, you've already had two unhappy marriages. You've only just got out of one of them. Mm. I mean, you like your independence, mm. don't you? I mean, you'd be crazy to tie yourself down again. You're right. Say yes. No! <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> Everybody thought that I was crazy when I married Mike. You know, I'd been with him before and he'd run off and married somebody else. And he tricked his way back into my life by buying the lease on this place. And you're happy now? Well, I don't know if I'm or I'm not. I mean, I just can't imagine things any other way. I mean, even if it was the worst decision in history, still the only thing that made sense to me. I don't know. I don't trust myself to make decisions anymore. I've lost faith in myself. The idea of him having faith in me, well... Makes me feel like I'm not such a mess after all. Say yes. But that's just it. He probably won't ask me now. He probably hates me. You see, he's wrong about me. I am a mess. Well, you'll have to tell him then, won't you? Tell him what? Tell him you didn't mean what you told his mother. Yeah. Tell him you love him. I mean, this is not my natural environment. I only really look my best in ultraviolet light. If you wanted to see me at my best now, you'd have to ask me out to a nightclub sale or one of these raves. Can't you take yourself? I'm a stranger in town. Have you tried tourist information? <sighs> if I was to bump into you in Valparaiso, say, or Rio, you know, a city that's more my style, well, I'd give you the guided tour without having to be asked. Is that dead? Uh, yeah. Dad. Aren't you going to ask us if I want another? You know something, if you think he's any better than his brother, he's not, you know, a thought told a pair of them. What'd you do to her? Just offered to show her a bit of fun, that's all. What's up with people around here? Doesn't anybody believe in doing things just for the hell of it anymore? Why don't they tell you everything is so serious? Mister, you just said the magic word. Grab your coat, take your dancing. Oh, what am I going to say? I can't say, I'm sorry I slagged you off to your mother, but I do love you really good. Can I? Look, I just can't help you with that. Do you want a gin and tonic? Oh, please. Oh, so cool. Evening, ladies. Can I get you a drink? Ah, uh, no, actually, I was just going. Oh, don't be daffy. Don't have to. No, well, I shouldn't really come in in the first place. I've, I've really got to get home. Right, uh, bye. She's in a bit of a hurry. Have I said something wrong? No, no. Taking your advice tonight. Gather your rosebuds, eh? Good luck. Something is wrong. Have you spoken to your mother today? Not since this morning. Why? Because I have. What? What? Well, she came to see me. She told me something about you. Oh, God, she didn't tell you why I get expelled from school, did she? No, no, it wasn't that. First of all, I said things to her, and I know she's going to tell you about them. I want you to know they are not true. <laughs> you make it sound as if you were tearing each other's hair out. Well, she told me... You were serious about me. She said you talked about me a lot, and you'd even mentioned marriage. <laughs> what? It's nothing. What's so funny? <laughs> it's your face. Look, ever since I was about ten, my mother's been pushing me to go out with this girl. She never gives up on it. It's not the girl's fault. She hates me. So, to keep Mama off my back, I told her I was in love with someone else. <laughs> Poor Denise. She must have had you worried. Well, a bit... You know. I'm surprised you even turned up tonight. Look, I promise you, I'll never ask you to marry me. You OK? Happy now? <laughs> Ecstatic. God, that's so funny. Yeah, I know. I laughed all day. <laughs> For you. Can you turn a knackered middle-aged chip fryer into a sexy young girl about town? No, but I can do you a nifty cut and blue. Oh, 
Well, I suppose that's cheaper than a facelift. What, about 5.30? Yep, fine. So what's up, Petal? I thought yesterday you'd rediscover the joys of true love. All I've discovered, Alma, is that I keep on making the same old mistakes. Oh, well, you see, it's like my old granny used to say, the only thing a girl can put her trust in is good, strong knicker elastic. So what's the problem, eh? Me? For being such a wimp? I said I would never let my defences down again, and bingo! One whiff of the Barbara Cartlands, and I'm anybody's. Is this the same woman who just dumped two husbands? I was beginning to hope third time lucky. Which, according to Hanny from Avar, you were about to get a crack at. It seems that was just a tale he told her to keep her from pushing him into the arms of some no doubt well-connected young filly the family's got lined up. Hanny thought it was a big hoot. I hope you told him that you didn't think it was quite so comical. Alma, this may surprise you, but I have a remnant or two of pride left. Oh, that old thing. It's caused more heartaches than all the fellas in the world strung in to end that. Which I wish they were. Oh, don't be bitter, Petal. It'll only give you wrinkles. Mm. Anyway, all's not lost. He's obviously still keen, even if he isn't ready yet to show his undying love. You know, just stick with it. All I have for Hanif is a diversion, a bit of fun. And, you see, I can't blame him because I've always cracked on. It was the same for me. Well, tell him you changed your mind. It's girl's prog. I'll tell you something even more stupid. I lay awake all night, hoping he'd ring to say I didn't mean it. Well, maybe you will. <sighs> no, it was just one of those fantasies we make up in the wee small hours to stop us from crying. So, you ring him. I mean, fellas get scared of rejection too, you know. Just leave your cards on the table, girl. I mean, what do you got to lose? How's Tracy enjoying the job? Huh? The damn sight better than she ever enjoyed school. We can't wait to be independent these days. She was born independent, that one. But she never was that academic. I can understand her not wanting to stop on. It's Ken who's got the ump. He only wants the best for her. Yeah, but you can't live your life through your kids. He just wants her to be all the things he could have been and never was. Oh, that's hardly fair. Well, who says I always have to be fair? I quite like being a monster sometimes. It's therapeutic. <laughs> and if there's a Ken-type word for you. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we forgotten something, Mrs. Marley? She got good morning the minute she walked through the door. It was good morning, Mrs. Bishop. How are you, Mrs. Bishop? Wasn't it, Mrs. Bishop? The Queen couldn't have had a better reception. The uh, headgear. It's not only there to look attractive, you know, but for hygienic purposes, too. Sorry, I must have forgot. There, yeah, that's better. Doesn't she look charming? You should have said no. I think she looks a right Burke. <laughs> bye, bye bye. Hello, oh, Evelyn. Hello. Love. Hey, kid. The last time I saw a get up like that was what the butler saw Blackpool Pier. But when she turned round, she'd a bare backside. You haven't got one, have you? <laughs> I thought you weren't coming in here anymore, Phyllis. Well, now he's seen the error of his ways. I can forgive and forget with the best. And now he's given those free vouchers. Well, morning, Vera. Tom's back on form, then I take it. <laughs> with knobs on. I should have said without knobs on. Hey, but you should have seen where his little face swelled. <sighs> I take it my house guest knows he's fully recovered. Oh, yeah, I've told him. I see he can come home now. But he wants to wait another couple of days, you know. Make sure there's no more germs lurking around. Well, you know what it's like. Mm, only too intimately, Vera. Only too intimately. Yeah. Funny thing, families, aren't they? What, mine are yours? Oh, mine. Oh, the Adams family look normal next to your lot. I'm talking about Ivy. So was I. And me, ma'am. I mean, there's Ivy, can't get Don to give her the time of day. There's me, ma'am, can't get out from under her feet. What they ought to do is swap. I mean, Alf and Ivy could moan in close harmony and Audrey and Don could have a ball. That is a very immoral suggestion, Mrs Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad one, though. <laughs> now, what are you two girls giggling at? Oh, <laughs> wife swapping. I, I noticed they never say husband swapping. <laughs> have we been invited to a swingers party? No, we have not. Anyway, I wouldn't go if we had. I well, don't you know. Might make a change. <laughs> no, it's just Alma's flights of fancy, rearranging other people's lives. Oh. You're, uh, you're not doing an alpha on me, are you? Oh, heaven forbid. 
What, what's an elf? What, dogging your wife's footsteps like a devoted bloodhound. I thought I saw you an hour ago. No, as much as I do, it's not my scene. I just popped in to tell you we're going out for dinner tonight. Posh frock job. Oh, do you know, I must have had a premonition. I made myself a hair appointment. Oh, good girl. I'll tell them we'll pick him up about eight, then. Them? Yeah, Ted Ferguson. He's a pop impresario. You never know, play me cards right, might be onto a nice little learner. Didn't I tell you it's a foursome? Might invite him in for a nightcap after, eh? <laughs> Is that ready to come off yet? No, not yet. About 12. What time is it now? 10 to... Which means I've probably only got another few minutes of freedom. Half's council meeting will be over by now. I thought you had all the freedom you wanted these days with your husband retired. No, oh, sweetheart, half is not a husband. He's a human sniffer dog. <laughs> well, wherever I am, he traps me down. Don't knock it. At least he cares. Oh, come on, you can't complain, lady. Hey, young single with a gorgeous boyfriend panting after it. You've got it made, girl. Morning, Emily. Oh, Haven't morning, Alf. Haven't you my lady wife, have you? I haven't, Alf. Why have you lost her? No, no, not worry. She'll turn up. <laughs> We're always together these days. Anyway, you know, between you and me at lamppost, I think that's why she was nagging me to retire. You know, she likes a bit of company as Audrey. Mm -hmm. What the heck is that? Mr Scott's new sign. Thought he had a new sign. That was only temporary. He's gone all Edwardian now. Wait till you see Deirdre. Hey, I say. What do you think you're doing with that? That's not rubbish. Here, give it here. Here, I say. What do you mean by throwing this away? Really, Mr Roberts, what do you expect me to do with it? Take it home and put it on my mantelpiece? Well, I think you might have asked me if I wanted it before you consigned it to the rubbish dump. It represents a good part of my life, does that? Well, in that case, my dear sir, take it with my compliments. Right, I will. Alf, that's silly. What do you want it for? I'll treasure it. Anyway, it's not half as silly as you, dressed up like old Mother Riley. I tell you what, your mum knew what she was doing all right, naming you after a movie star. My name's Wollstone, not Welsh. Mind you, the same initials, though, I never thought of that. Same ravishing good looks and all. Always got all the chat up lines, aren't you? Yeah, in every language from Swedish to Swahili, I should think. Yeah, don't you believe it? Not all the sailors have got a girl in every port. Oh, fool them then, son. Right, the heck, I wish I'd had half the chances he's had. Yeah, but you still have married your Vera, though, wouldn't you? I mean, who else would have had him, eh? Miss Frank, would be so good as to take over here while I have a private word with Mrs. Nenner. I'm sorry? Uh, to the till, please, Miss Fennick. Uh, you know, we all have to pull our weight here. <laughs> um, well, actually, I was just going off for my lunch break. Um, half twelve to half one. Really? Well, I don't suppose taking it an hour later would stop the earth spinning on its axis? Ah, uh, but it wouldn't fit in with Mr Watts's roster either, would it? The thing is inflexible, Elaine. Not even Mr Watts's roster. Didn't come down from the mountains on tablets of stone, did it? Well, obviously not. Besides, they will chop, chop, chop it there. Come on. Don't keep the customers waiting. It's getting good. Ah. May I compliment you on your excellent taste, madam? It's a vintage year, is that, you know? <laughs> oh, right. Mm. You'll be right, Reg, really. <laughs> nonsense, nonsense. Flexibility is the essence of good teamwork. Come on. Where to? Well, we have an appointment to see a house in exactly, uh, well, 20 minutes. A mock Georgian Bijou residence of great charm and... Uh... <laughs> What's going on? Our area manager has just changed my lunch hour. You what? He's just whisked his lady love off again. You know, I thought you were supposed to be the manager here, Mr Watts. I am the manager here, Miss Fenwick, and I fully intend to remind Mr Holdsworth of that fact on his return. Now, carry on. If you're quick chicken, I might just escape before his lordship comes looking uh, for... Oh. Ah! So that's where you've been hiding, eh? Hi, Alfie. Managed to trap me down. Oh, I usually do. So she's been telling me. What the heck's that? Oh, this is for Nicky. That is part of his heritage. Oh, come on. The land won't want a mucky old thing like that any more than I do. Sling it in the bin. I've just rescued it from there. Well, put it back. I think it's senile dementia setting in early. You see, the trouble with my wife is she's got no sense of history. Oh, come on. Anyway, you ready for home, love? I could murder a poached egg on a potato cake. Oh, well, look, why don't you go home and have that? And I'll just nip round to the cafe and have a little girly gossip. Well, that's a good idea. Gail does a nice potato cake. No, I think you'll be much happier, nice and quiet on your own, instead of listening to us shrieking, eh? I mean, that's what he says we do, you know, shriek. <laughs> well, I'll have you say I never take you nowhere. Come on, love. Oh, right. This we made, yeah. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thanks Bye. to me. Bye. 
Why don't you just give the man a bell? What man? Denise, she'd been on pins all morning waiting for someone to ring, and I don't think it's the fellow who fetched its firm solution. You're getting a bit lippy these days, young lady. Simp yourself. All I know is that if I wanted to talk to a bloke, I wouldn't sit mooning round all day waiting for him to call me. All right, Marge Proops. Make yourself useful. Hanif, it's me. I was just wondering if you were free tonight. Oh, terrific. Pick me up about seven. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Oh, what can I do for my friend Don? I just wondered if you could fit me in later for a quick trip. So, still going strong with the boyfriend then, eh? Well, it's still going. I don't know about strong. Uh, half three any good? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Well, it's nice to see somebody's happy. Excuse me. What is going on? Sorry, Mr. Watts, we've been very silly. There's no need to apologise, Maureen. We've done nothing to be ashamed of. Only because I came in when I did. I'll go back to work. Right? Yes. <laughs> Have you known hmm? that I take great exception to you speaking to me like that in front of my fiance? And may I remind you that I am the area manager? And yes. may I remind you that I'm in charge of this store? Only because I taught you everything you know. You learned at the feet of a master, Norman. Never forget that. Oh, yes. And when I came here, I was a green, young kid. And you'd been in the business for years. <laughs> well, I'm not a kid anymore. And contrary to what you might think on occasion, I am not a complete nit either. I doubt whether I got this job if I was. And furthermore, I will do this job my way. Mm -hmm. I will not be manipulated as your flaming little puppet. Norman, Norman, I never called you a puppet. Wait, wait, oh, wait, no, wait. oh, no, you come in here, you pull down my rostrums, you haul off my staff on personal errands, and then, and then you use my office, my office as your personal snogging parlour. You're absolutely right, of course. Mia culpa. I have overstepped the boundaries. You have my full apologies. It will not happen again. I should think so, too. So what's his house like, then? Flipping diabolical. Mm -hmm. Good swing a cat round in it. Well, one more wrong word and you're a dead man. All right, all right. I'll take my meagre provisions and go. How, Tracy? Fine. Have you not seen her? Not lately, no. I get the distinct impression that she's avoiding me. Well, maybe that's because she knows you'll still niggle on about her leaving school. Well, not much point now, is it? It's a fait accompli. Ken, Tracy's practically a grown woman. We can't force her to stop on. No, but it might have helped if you hadn't taken the short-term view. She's happy now and that's all that matters. It's all about ambition, Deirdre. Making the most of her abilities. Oh, well, your ex-girlfriend seems to have done all right for herself in a flower shop. Well, Maggie's got a degree in business studies. Oh, bully for her. Oh, all right, we're going to be childish. You're just disappointed because you can't brag to your pals in the staff room about my daughter, the brain surgeon. You just wanted Tracy to do better than you did. Yeah, you just wanted to stand behind a shop counter for the rest of her life. Oh, like me, you mean? Well, if the mob cap fits. Oh, I... In future, Mrs Barlow, I would appreciate it if you could conduct your private affairs out of business hours. Come. Rajiv wants to know if he can go early. His wife's just gone into labour. Yeah, of course he can. Tell him hope she's OK. You sure you don't need to check it with Mr Holdsworth first? It's got nothing to do with Mr Holdsworth. You know, it reminds me of when John Major took over from Maggie and she said she was a very good backseat driver. What is your point, Miss Fenwick? Just that you must know how he felt. For your information, Mr Holdsworth and I had a full and frank discussion on our respective areas of responsibility. How frank? I told him to keep his hooter out. Is that frank enough for you? Perfectly. So when do you leave? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but he gave me his full apology. He said he'd overstepped the boundaries and it wouldn't happen again. Well, good for you. Mm. Though, uh, if it were me, I'd have got it in writing. Hello, 
Hello, Don Love. Had a good day? Lousy. Why, what's it to you? Hey, who's rattled you a cage? Just fed up with people making stupid remarks. Oh, you know, that's great. Fiddle with it as I may. I can never get the back right myself. Hi. Oh, Hanif, I'm sorry Hi. I've not changed yet. We're running late. No problem. I'll find out how to get rid of my cellulite while I'm waiting. Hey, listen, I'll get out of your old then uh, you two can get off and enjoy yourself. You and old flower. Uh, Robbie's taking her out for a romantic dinner. Oh, no, business dinner more like. You know, every forkful will go down as tax expenses. I'll leave you two to the romantic dinners. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. So you're on your own, then? Uh, well, well, I'm waiting for Martin to finish his own work, and then oh. we're going to the pictures. Ivy's babysitting. Oh. Home work? <laughs> yeah, he's studying to be a nurse. Oh. Do you know what I do with Myra? It's a wonderful vacation. Vocation? That's what I said. You've met Gordon, haven't you? Gordon, this is gay. Hello. Hello. Jack, a yes. word. You can have two as long as it's what's yours. <clears throat> Joke. Joke. Jack, I'm a patient man. Some would say, too patient. You see, I let people take advantage of me. You refer them to me, so I'll sort them out. Jack, have you ever heard the expression, outstay your welcome? If you're saying what I think you're saying, it's very unfeeling. Unfeeling? Mm. I've given you bed and board for three weeks. Yeah, well, what difference would another couple of days make? I mean, you don't want me to get the dreaded lurk. You have to be so careful, do There's you? There's nothing to be careful about. I mean, if, if you got the flaming mumps, your so-called manhood wasn't in any danger. You don't know that for a medical fact. <sighs> Look, Jack, I'm not going to argue with you. I just want my spare room back. You're an hard man, Watts. Good. I hope you're not the only one to come to that conclusion. Is there something wrong with that? No, no, it's fine. I'll send it back if you don't like it. No, leave it. Hanif, I'm going to be honest with you. You usually are. It's one of the things I like about you, a girl who speaks her mind. That's just the point. I haven't done. Not entirely. Look, if this is something to do with what my mother said, I explained all that. It was just a device to get her off your back. I'm sorry for upset you making out we were a serious item. I know what an independent lady you are. And like all bad ideas, it seemed a good one at the time. It didn't upset me. Not in the way you mean. Well, I wasn't making assumptions. No strings, no attachments, you said. And what's great is we both feel the same way. I can't stand clinging women. How do you feel about loving women? <laughs> oh, love. As the heir to the throne once famously said, whatever that is. You were right. I did say no commitment. And I meant it, then. Go on. Things change. People change. To be frank with you, which started for me as mainly a strong physical attraction. Well, it was mutual. Well, I like if you mind as well, fair dues. Thanks. Only now, suddenly, it's more. Funny thing is, I only realised it when your mother said you were potty about me. Well, that doesn't sound like Jamila. You know what I mean. She, more or less, said that you told her that you were in love with me. And after the first shock, I had to admit I didn't find the idea too horrifying. Then, then it occurred to me it was just possible you really did care. But you didn't want to let on because I've made such a big thing about not wanting to get involved again. Oh, I see. Is everything to your satisfaction? Yes, yeah, great. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Miss Shelby. Fill them up, love. Right. Hey, why she's not Miss World, I just do not know. I was Miss Better Buys once. Yeah, that was a few years ago. She wouldn't go in for anything so degrading now. You, my friend, are talking out the back of your pointy little head. What's so degrading about being gorgeous? Well, how would you like it if your girlfriend was parading around with nothing on but a bikini cut up to her armpits? And have all the other blokes envying us? You must be joking. Oh, <laughs> I'm not really as girl. Oh. You are? No, 
I'm not. I mean, it's not as if we're engaged or out. We just go out together. Oh, I suppose you'd sooner be going out with one of these two gorillas. Hey, it's not that it gets stroppy, mate. Well, at least I treat Raquel with a bit of respect. Ooh, that must be exciting for you, eh, sweetheart? Oh, Gordon, we're only teasing. He's a sailor. It's the weather time. Suggestive smut. He's looking to have his face punched in. Yeah, go on, then. Be my guest, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, just cool it down, lads. Come on, you over there. Well, thanks, Gordon. You've just made me look a complete fool. So, I'll say something, even if it's only I've made a complete twit of myself. I must admit I'm confused. Really? I thought I'd made myself only too embarrassingly clear. So, OK, you got yourself in deeper than you expected. It's better than discovering that you hate my guts. Oh, please. No jokes. I feel stupid enough already. Of course I have feelings for you. But what sort of feelings? The crunch question is, do we want the same things out of this relationship? Denise, we're both intelligent adults. Sure, we can work something out. Oh, this is not one of your business things, for goodness sake. I'm, I'm laying it on the line that... Well... I could very easily fall in love with you. All I'm asking is, do you feel the same way? I take it you want me to be equally honest? Of course. Then the answer has to be no. I'm sorry, Denise. I like you and you're a great girl. <laughs> I know. A great girl, a good laugh. Oh, come on, don't start... What? Don't start what? Getting hysterical. I see. No need to get emotional. Just because I've offered up my bruised and battered old heart and had it chucked back in my face. Well, sod you, honey. Yeah, copies on the table. Oh, you're not feeling so good. You look a bit rough. Yeah, I've looked rough ever since you turned up. Not unlike the house. So if you've got nothing better to do today, can you just give it a bit of a clean up, eh? Yes, darling. And lay off Raquel. Raquel? The barmaid. Aye, oh, right. Why? Is she, uh... Is she in a reserved spotlight? No. But, um, I think I might be. What? Hey, don't flatter yourself, mate. It was me getting all the signals. I'm just saying that might not be the case. Me and Raquel go back a long way. I don't want to encourage you. Yeah, well, you're not. Well, neither are you. All right, OK, fine. To be honest, actually, your boyfriend puts us off a bit. Yeah, well, I think that's meant to be the general idea. No, I mean, he's a geek. If that's a first division, that's where it puts me in the Super League. Now, look, if you've only got a pound to spend, why not focus in on a single item, you see? I'm not going to stand here all day like a lucky dip. If it isn't Rapunzel, bug off their sake. Actually, that was meant to be a compliment. Didn't I hear you had two blokes scrapping over you in the Rovers? Des's brother and Gordon. Yeah, that's what I heard. Well, what if it is true? Odd. Why? Well, you ended up with Gordon, didn't you? Thanks again. Morning, morning. Hi, Don. Hello. Hello. Hey. You all right? Fine, Don, yeah. You're not working. No. No, I'm down to clinic at 11 to get my leg checked. Oh, yeah. That's my big day all mapped out. Outpatients. You fancy popping in for a coffee? Well, if I won't be away, yeah, of course I would. Come before it gets busy. Come for eating. Right, thank you. Hello. Salad sandwich when you're ready, Brendan. All right. Business picking up. Oh, well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> so long as I can see one, two, three... Uh, Oh, four unattached young ladies gracing the start of my day. I'm not complaining. Oh, thanks. I'm grateful to make the list. <laughs> Raquel's not unattached. She's got Gordon the Gopher. Actually, the way things materialised, Angela, I ended up with a choice. 
something which won't mean so much to somebody like you. Uh, no, but please, ladies, don't spoil it. It doesn't become you. Neither does supping from a pint pot. It's no wonder she's strapped for company. Excuse me. I think she's best avoided at this time of the morning. Best avoided, period. Yeah, well, Hello, I slept Daddy. straight through the alarm. I phoned work and blamed him, said he wasn't feeling too good. Sure, he looks fitter than you do. <laughs> Have you told him you're going to be late? Yeah. Well, do you want a coffee before you start? You off? You'd be a bit no. more convincing if it looked like you've been up so long. Yeah, yeah. that'd be brilliant. Are you sure you don't mind? No, of course I don't. Come on, we can go and say goodbye to Kevin before he goes to work. Come on, then. Hi, fellas. There's coffee here if you want it. I'm just going to go upstairs and have a shower. Hang on. What? I want to talk to you. Uh, how you doing, eh? Oh, not so bad. Yeah? Come on. Oh, it's a mess, Don. He dumped me. He what? I feel such a mug. Well, what did he say? The impression I get is that Hanny's happy to float about with anybody on his arm, so long as, A, they're good for business, and, B, they're on tap. Oh, look. The more I hear about that, look, the more it reminds me of Mike Baldwin. Tell him to take a running job. You're too good for all that stuff. When I said I was in it for a bit of fun, I think I lied. Actually, I'm sure I did. Oh. Oh. How much are you actually sopping? What? Come on. Oh, I'm a fit bloke, Phyllis. You know, I can stand a pint or two. Ah, it's all right for you coming off your ship and spending your brasses if no matters. Yeah, well, I am meant to be on holiday, you know. Oh, well, your desk isn't. Yeah, well, that's not my fault. I want to say this. That lad's had an awful lot to put up with. Yeah, well, I noticed he was a bit allergic to fun. Has he never talked to you about Lisa and young Tommy? Yeah, a bit. Look, I'm only trying to get his engine going, Phyllis. I'm not pouring the stuff down his throat. Uh, he picks up that habit easily, he ever does. And I don't like him doing all this drinking. Does he pay you as a therapist or a cleaner? Listen, your desk pays me two fifty an hour, and I'm worth every penny. Three now, you're here. Would you mind doing a bit of ironing then? Careful, Rosie, come here. That's it, good girls. Now stay here. Hi, sir. Hi. Hi, kids. Hi. Hello. Yeah, fine, thanks. You at the old fox home or college this afternoon? Uh, please, Sally. Residential care unit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, when I was at college, I got used to a straight eight-hour shift. I'll be there till seven tonight. Oh. Doing jigsaws, probably. <laughs> hey. Jonathan! Hey, Jonathan, Jonathan, come here. We get no reply there, mate. <laughs> um, thought this place was empty, Sally. No, I'm sure I've heard people running up and down the stairs. I think Steve's in there. Steve? Yeah. Did you see them going in the rovers? Hello? 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 Hello?
Martin? Is everything all right? I think you should ring the police, Sal. We've had some visitors. There we are. I'd give them a minute, look, because they're hot. The best things in life always are better. Ooh, where's Maureen? She'll be on her way by now. You daft devil. What? I could have kept these warm until... Oh, oh right. Yes. Hey, one of the good fortunes of my life is that I have an impeccable sense of timing, Beth. <laughs> yeah? Mine's maths. 280. Right. Uh, right. OK, Doc. I'm sorry, Reg. Hey, what did your mum say about the offer on your ass? Oh, do you know, there's not a dress I've seen that would begin to suit me. Maureen? What? If the buyers want to move in sharpish, she'll have to know. And you can't take the offer unless she's told. I don't know how to phrase it. Well, Eureka, you've made a sale in the middle of a reception. But I know her. She'll think it's one of your stunts to kick her out of the house. It's not. You and But she's a very suspicious person. No! You see, what? I wish she knew you. I wish she just. Oh, and a white wine and soda. White wine and soda? I thought you were down at outpatients all day. Uh, no, no, I, I called and cancelled. Is that because of me? No. Oh. Well, look, I didn't want to leave you in that state there. Go on, grab a seat. Hey, hi. Everything all right? Well, it is here, but I just wondered if you keep your eye on them for a bit. I found the police. Yes, of course. Uh, did Jim and Liz know? Well, Jim's still in Ireland, and Steve's gone to get Liz, so... How awful. Anyway, I'm going to pop round there now and see if the police are there. I promise I won't be very long, Emily. Oh, that's fine. Now, right. you go. All right, bye. Bye-bye. And I'll bet you haven't been fed with all the disturbance, have you? Mum, don't. You're not supposed to touch anything. Oh, hiya, Sally. Thanks. I'm really sorry. Do you reckon the insurance would believe me if I said I left two grand in the kitchen drawer? <laughs> Joke. It's um, just a telly in the video. I reckon they'd have gone for me stereo, but I think you disturbed them before they got that far. It's gone. Where is it? What? Katie! Where's Katie? The picture of Katie! They wouldn't take a picture of a baby, would they? It was in a silver frame. Oh, you're joking. It has. It's gone. They've nicked it for the rotten frame! I'll kill them! <laughs> Andy, you come a bit pricey, don't you? All the nice girls do. You should know that. You're a sailor. Hiya. Hi. Um, a pint of bitter, please, and a brandy. Right. You sobered up, then? Yeah, look, I'm sorry if I'm getting a bad name. Twice, and you're barred. Take a notice. I think to give my gin. <laughs> Des and Raquel, is that something I should know about? I'd stay clear about that. She's special for Des. No. Uh, Miss Freeman, could you come up? What? You must be joking. I'm not coming up there. No, you're right. Maureen's with me. Hello. All right. What is it? Right. I better get this glass cut. You'll be all right, Mum. 
Yeah, you go on. Thanks, Sally. Steve, I think you'd better move back in here just till your dad comes back, all right? Sure. Right, I won't be long. Well, I suppose I better ring Jim. Do you want me to ring him? No, no thanks, Sal. That would just look like I can't be bothered. It's not your fault somebody broke in, is it? No, but Jim thinks it's my fault there's nobody here. You know, to be honest, I don't really know what happened between you and Jim. You think I do? Actually, I've stopped trying to work it out. It's just been one thing after another. You start thinking somebody's got it in for you. Rocks? I don't make rocks. No, but you could if you were pushed. No just... pushing about it. I'm a designer. If you want a dressmaking, you can go to a seamstress. Oh, and she'd just knock one up out and over, would she? No, she'd just... No, no, she would have to follow a pattern. A design, in fact. And this is where more the client comes into it. Polytechnic didn't much prepare you for the outside world, did it, Miss Freeman? Oh, yeah. What it is, Alan, I'm a bit limited for choice, you see. I've been round 20 shops, and they're all full of, you know, your traditional wedding oh, gowns. That's why you want a bit of tradition. No, it is not, Reggie. I'd look like Betty Davis. I quite like Betty Dick. I'm no spring chicken, am I? I just want to get married, you know, looking dignified. You understand? OK, well, uh, once we've agreed on a design, I'll cut it out and uh, make it up for you. Hey, I said you'd have a back, didn't you? <laughs> but I would have to ask what I'm worth as a designer. I don't mind that if you think you can help. Yes, within reason, we don't. I've had one or two ideas of my own, but you know, the, from evening dress catalogues. I'll just be a sec. Outside world prices, Reggie. It's going to cost you a fortune. Oh. Hiya, it's Liz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, the lads are fine. Uh, I could do the word with Jim, is he there? Hi. Hi. I just heard what happened. Oh, I know it's rotten, isn't it? Jim, I just thought I'd better let you know the house has been broken into. Oh, clearing up at the back of the shop and I found this. I think it belongs to Liz. L listen, Jim, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ring you back. Somebody's just come. They must have whipped it out the frame and chucked it. It was on the back street, Liz. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Deirdre. Nice stay at the office, darling. Blimey. Only ask you to do a bit of tidying up. I take it you like your jeans iron side to side and not front to back. Yeah. You haven't done all this. Phyllis has been here. Oh, I am not denying that. But could I get a stitch of work out of her? Oh, God. How long have I been asleep? <sighs> she tried lecturing me on boozing this morning. I wouldn't mind, but I paid for it all. No. Are you all right now, Jonathan? Hey? I knew I shouldn't have tempted you fair by cracking on I was ill this morning. Well, actually, I think I can explain. Next door, I had a burglary, and I left my friend Emily with the kids. I know I shouldn't have done, but it was an emergency. And she gave them the dinner. But now, you see, they'd already eaten. She thought I'd been too busy, so she fed them. Then she took them to the park and gave them an ice cream. Oh, I see. So it's my fault, really. I should have told about it. I was just a bit panicked. Oh, oh, God, I mean, emergencies happen. You were lucky to have somebody to step in. I'd only use someone that I really trusted. Tonight? Well, this evening. Directly following the closing of the shop. Oh, well, um... Oh, uh, no. I'm sorry. I promised I'd have a drink with Ken tonight. Ken? Upstairs, Ken? Yes. I understood you were divorced. Well, divorce isn't what it was 20 years ago, is it? No, he's, he's having a bad time at work, and I uh, kind of offered to cheer him up. Oh, how very modern of you. No, it was just a concession to staff morale. I, I thought it would be a pleasant opportunity to unwind and to air our views on the general running of this place. Oh, I have nothing against that. I'm just sorry I'm tied up. No matter. 
That'll just have to do. Is that the end of it, you oh, think, eh? Stop. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Sally. I'll bring it back washed. Well, it's an old one, so don't worry about it. Um, shall I see you tomorrow? Um, I've got some days off soon. Just say if you don't want him to come, but, you know, today it really was an emergency and... No, I meant, um, well, I, I was wondering if you fancied a day out somewhere. Well, you know, we uh, stick the buggies in the back of the car and drive off. Yeah, that would be brilliant. Well, I'll still pay you, of course. <laughs> Give over. We'd share the petrol, wouldn't we, Rosie? Yeah. yeah, we only get weekends if Ked's not doing a foreigner, so... Oh, just say when. All right, I will. Said. Won't we? <laughs> All right, see ya. Bye. Bye. Bye, Jonathan. It's one five, please, Reg. I say, what have you got changed for? Eh? Well, you had a different outfit on half an hour ago. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I didn't feel comfortable in it, you know, it's all got me. Did it. <laughs> on your own, Sir Brendan? Briefly, Did yes. You. Um, does Mrs Scott ever venture down here? Briefly, yes. Once, actually, to look at the shop before we sign the contract. It's not an area she finds appealing. What does that mean? It's very nice. It's a wonderful atmosphere. she go a long way to beat it. Yeah, that's what the constable said shortly after he finished investigating the burglary at number 11. The McDonald's? They've been burgled? Hey, did you know that the McDonald's have been broken into? Oh, yeah, well, I saw Liz on Front Street earlier. Never said. Well, I never said I broke the door on the bathroom cabinet either. Well, it happens often enough, Betty. Eh? <laughs> Nobody tells me. Hi, right. Hiya, Martin. Hey, you haven't seen Des, have you? Des? Yeah, Colin, his brother. I just I imagine the mat popping in. No, you? no, sorry, Raquel, I wouldn't know. Uh, just give us a pint, will you, please? Uh, I'll pay for that, Raquel. Oh, oh cheers, Rich. Did you, uh, did you get it? Yep, yeah, yeah. Hope it's everything you wanted. Oh, good lad. All right. Mm -hmm. Come out, Yeah. Okay. Pint and a half a lager, please, Betty. Lado, love. Just make it look as if you're having a bad time at work. Oh, I think I need to fake that. If a pile of boxes should be marking. Just sit down and talk. We've got a coronation street, man. Thanks, Steve. Do you mind? No, no, not doing good. All this passive smoking is playing havoc with my sex life, you know. I'll see you, man. See you. All right, what are you doing here? Hey, Steve. Colin. Barnes. Brother in case is too ashamed to tell him. Hey. We had just came in for a change. Now he's trying to keep us out of trouble without actually drawing up a chance. Oh. I get the drinks in here. See, see. You off somewhere? Oh, house got broken into, so I'm playing night watchman. Oh. Sorry to hear about that. Mm. Sorry. Anyway, I'll. Hi, uh, a glass of house red, please, and a pint of. Um, sorry, better make it a half, half a lot of pity. I'm being a good boy tonight. Yeah, my brother's clean. I happened to mention that it was um, it was anti-alcohol abuse week a few months back. She, uh, she couldn't remember when because she was drunk when she told us. <laughs> Tell you think I'm kidding? Hey, 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 hey I'm sorry. Liz. I'm sorry. I never, never said a word. I don't think I did. It's got nothing to do with you. For once. That's a coincidence, so have I. Calf length are up to the knee. Support stockings. The doctor said I'd be better off with up to the knee. And I wouldn't feel like I'd deteriorated later. On the house! I know, Maureen, and I don't think it's enough. reading my mail. Well, if you leave it hanging about. It was in my shoebox, Mother. It fell over. I couldn't help noticing. Well, as a matter of fact, it is enough and I am going to take it. Goodbye, Maud, then. Don't be daft. It is. You're selling me home from under me. It is unrealistic to think that we could sell this house and Reggie's flat all at the same time. It always was. You've only decided to bring it up now so you can push me into some hovel. <sighs> Don't be so bleak, Mother. It's just going to take temporary measures. I mean, we've been looking all round to try and find suitable accommodation for the three of us. Where? Oak Hill. Where else? 
Crown Point? I mean, Reggie has got half a dozen brochures on bungalows at Crown Point. Now, he wouldn't be going through all this unless he wanted you with us, now would he? Look, I want you at my wedding. And I want you to be happy. I know when you're lying. I'm having my dress made. Just thought you might like to meet Angie, the designer, and talk about what you're wearing. Oh. I get a budget, do I? Yes. Yes, of course you do. I couldn't go through all this unless I knew you were happy. I mean, as far as residential units go, yeah. It's pretty lively. I know. They kept on the toes, are they? Oh, aye, yeah. It's all planned mm. activities. Uh, very smart, this. Mm. <laughs> oh. uh, I've got your Italian sheet here. Oh, right, right. Uh, cruel prices, aren't they? Still, no such thing as a free meal, eh, Martin? Hey? Some things are worth paying for, eh? <laughs> oh, well, uh, oh, do you want another drink? You're fine. Uh... <laughs> They're not from me. I'm just delivering them. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope them flowers aren't out of our garden. <laughs> huh? Uh, they're not. <laughs> hey, Uncle Sal, the secret I've made has brought you some flowers. Me what? Well, now, come on, be kind to him. He's obviously got it bad. My mum says she'll give you these and uh, say thank you for all your help. Oh, stuff. she shouldn't have. Well, I don't know. I'm just delivering them. Oh, well, tell her thank you, won't you? They're lovely. Thank you. Say goodbye to Jonathan and Rosie then. Oh, hey? look. They're from Liz McDonald because she reckons I helped her yesterday. Oh, they're nice, aren't they? Yeah, except she didn't need to. Hello. Oh, hi, Joe. Uh, I didn't want a reward. Uh, uh, well, look, I've got a rush. It's his brother's parents' evening tonight, so. Oh. Excuse me. Bye, <laughs> Cheers, Martin. Sal. See you. Bye. Now, say if it's inconvenient or if you'd just rather not. What? Well, I got a call from my solicitor to say the divorce is moving at last. Oh, good. Well. Oh, yeah, it's good. Very good. But I've got to go see him now, so, um, well, I could take Jonathan with me, but I thought, well, could I leave him here for another hour? Of course you can. I would have kept hold of him anyway. He didn't need to have called. Oh, wonderful. Uh, I'll be back, uh, no later than six. Thanks, love. Thanks. So what's your new boss like? Well, better than no boss at all. <laughs> yeah, I'd have said that, but, do you know, I'm beginning to think it's the best thing Annie ever did for me, giving me the boot. Force me to stand on my own two feet. Well, that's to be hoped Denise feels the same. Denise? Mm, he's given her the boot as well, from what I was hearing. No. Oh. Yeah. Tell me, uh, what uh, drew you to our meals for one range? Drew me to it? Nothing drew me to it. Uh, that is what you've chosen. Well, that's because I'm dining alone, so there's just me. One. Yeah. Excuse yeah. me. Right. Thank you, Deirdre. Thanks, Derek. Tell me, uh, do you ever take wine with your meal? Yes, sometimes. And are you aware of our new range of half bottles for those who dine alone? Two forty-two, please, Derek. Thanks, Thank Deirdre. You, love. I don't dine alone. Well, except the night, yes. But that's because I'm going back to school, and I don't think they'd be very impressed if I went back smelling of wine. Thanks, love. <laughs> Thank you, Deirdre. Ta -da. Bye. 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 I'd say there goes a very lonely man. Would I be right? But Derek? No, he's well, he's married. Quite. Oh, hello. Uh, excuse me, just a minute. I just wondered if you fancied going for a drink tonight. This will be so you can find out what happened with me and Hanif, will it? No. Well. Oh, never mind. Forget it. Right. I will forget it. it was to talk about Annie. But not for my sake. I just thought you'd welcome the chance to talk about it, just like I once welcomed the chance to talk to you about me. 
What time? Oh, well, it's only four. Oh, for goodness sake. Eight o'clock. Right, I'll see you over there. Five past nine o'clock. Well, I've done. No, you haven't, look. You've missed a bit just there. I won't miss if I go to hit your head. <laughs> so what are you doing now, then, Phyllis? Home for tea, then out for a night on the town? I might go for a drink. It's one of my vices I can still manage. I feel I ought to make the effort. Yeah, me as well. I thought you sailors had a girl in every town. Oh, we do. Only mostly it's the same one. We have to share her. Ooh. When is it your turn? Could be tonight. Hey, think on. Your dad's been working hard. Now, when he comes home, it'd be a good idea for you to make him his tea. Yeah, you're right. It'd be a good idea, but I can't see it happening. You're not going to sit there and let him wait on you and them foot? Yeah. Eey, I'd be ashamed of myself. I'll have more to be ashamed of than that. Eey, I'll bet you have. To that, love. i see you later, Phyllis. Kids with real problems when the parents don't come anyway. Oh, well, mine never went. You had real problems with you? Well, I would have if they'd been to parents' evenings. Oh. <laughs> there you are. Oh, thank you. Sorry you've had to wait. You what? He's lucky to be getting anything at this time. Oh, no, I've got to be nice to him. Put him in a good mood for when he tells us about Mickey. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, we're not we're not really open. No, no, it's Angie Freeman we've come to see. It's through there, isn't it? Yes, it's through the... Yeah, um... she's there. She got in ten minutes ago. Um, would you mind if my mother stayed down here? I shan't be long. No, 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 of course we don't mind. What's the good of me coming if I've got to stop down here? Mother, the stairs. So get her to come down them. Well, yes, I'll bring the designs down, but I told you before we came and after you leave you while I got to see Angie. You said it were a cafe. You didn't say it would be closed. Well, we can get you a cup of tea if you like. Would you like a cup of tea? Would you? Thank you. I'll be as quick as I can. Take your time. Don't worry about me. So, one cup of tea coming up. It's, uh, it's your daughter that's marrying Reg Holsworth, isn't it? You know him, then? Yeah, well, I know who he is. What do you make of him? Well, uh, he's got a very good job. Oh, yes, he has. She'll not be marrying his job. No, but it's a consideration. Yes, and he's always very, uh, smartly turned out. Yes, he is. Do you know him? Yeah. <clears throat> um, I've come across him, yeah. But you're not a pal of his? Oh, I couldn't really claim that, no. None of them seems to claim that. They all of them know him, but none of them seems to be a pal of his. I'm sure he'll make your daughter a very good husband. Yes, and he's always very cheerful. Always got a smile on his face. Yeah, and very sociable. Yeah, I'm sure your daughter couldn't have made a better choice. Well, if you say so. The idea was that it was music, but... Well, it didn't work out that way, so here I am on my own. But you must have some staff. Oh, yeah. But you're on your own as far as other things are concerned, yeah. Mm. Actually, I haven't that much in the way of staff tonight. I should have a barman here now and he's just phoned in sick. Mm. And uh, have you got the house sorted out? Mm, just about. Uh, my son's stopping there just in case they come back. Uh, there's not much chance of that. Hey, and uh, I'm sorry if I upset you yesterday. Oh, no, It was just me sounding off, you know. I didn't mean anything by it. No, no, I know you didn't. It was just me. Stay till we're in. Yeah, well, it would be very upsetting, a burglary, you know, especially on your own. Oh, well, there's worse things happen at sea. Oh, but you'll know that. All right. Actually, it's, uh, it's not true. The worst things happen on land. That's what makes most of us go to sea. But then the best things happen on land as well. That's what makes us come back. One seventy five. Thanks, please. Raquel. Sure, you don't want one, Steve? No, no, I'm, uh, I'm okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. So, are you home for good or just till your dad gets back? Well, A, it's not home, not anymore. And B, I don't know if my dad will ever be getting back. And, and C, as long as my mum's all right, I don't much care for the house, him, or any of it. See ya. And see ya. That answer your question, then. <laughs> it makes me wish I hadn't asked it. Other people's problems, Ooh. eh? Oh, aye, they're like icebergs. However big they look, you can cancel and there's always a lot more you never see. <laughs> so, I'll go and get us a drink. 
And I'll also ring Reggie to see if he's got back yet. And if he has, he can come across and join us. I'm being a nuisance, aren't no, I? No, of course you're not. I'm in your way. Oh, Mother, I want you to be part of this wedding. I want you to know everything that's going on. And the only way you can do that is if you're here with us. So, what do you want to drink? Well, go on then. A Benedictine. <laughs> Evening, what can I get you? Um, a Benedictine, please. Oh. And a brandy and dry ginger. Yeah. Um, Raquel, is it all right if I just use the phone? Oh, yeah, of course it's all right. Yeah. Um, hello? Oh, hi. hi. Who's that, then? That is Reg Holdsworth's bride-to-be. <laughs> Who's she phoning? Samaritans. Ha-ha-ha, <laughs> 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 uh -huh, so that old lady over there, that's going to be her mother. Yeah, that's right. Mm, do you know her? Well, yeah, she came in the cabinet today. Oh, well. Excuse me a minute. I'll go and have a word. What about? I'll tell you later. What about his parents even? Oh, one well, minute. <sighs> uh, Mrs. Grimes, is it? Yes. Oh, yeah. No, I was uh, having a word with your future son-in-law last night, and he mentioned you're going to be joining us soon at Pasture Gate. You what? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not really making myself very clear here. Um, uh, my name's Martin Platt, and uh, I'm training to be a nurse. And just now I'm working at Pasture Gate Old People's Home. Oh. Does it make sense now? It's beginning to. Is it? Good. <laughs> so, yeah, Reg said you'd be moving in with us, and what was it like? And I said, which is what I wanted to say to you now, it really is a terrific place. It really is first class, and I know everybody's going to make you feel very, very welcome. And so, you know, look forward to seeing you. Well, and what's your name? Uh, Martin. Martin. It's very kind of you to take the trouble to say these things. Oh, no, it's no trouble as long as it helps. <laughs> oh, it's a great help. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Right. Oh. Well, that's my good deed done for the day. What about this parents' evening? We're supposed to be there at half past six. No, 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 I told Ivy it was half six, so she could start babysitting. Give us time for a drink. <laughs> No, he's not there. So here we are. We can wait here till he is. Well, he's probably out making arrangements, isn't he? Arrangements? Arrangements for what? The old people's home. The one you're planning to have me moved into. <gasps> I don't know what you're talking about. Now, don't deny it, Al Maureen, cos I've had it from that young man over there. He says he's a nurse and he works in one of these homes. And your Reg has talked to him about having me moved in. No. Well, ask him. I don't know anything about this. I swear I don't. Well, you might not. But will you believe me now? What he's up to, your precious Reginald, what he's up to is having me shut away in some home, shut away anywhere he can get me. Then you two will be free to go and live as you please. And you won't have to give one minute's thought to me or what I might be suffering. Well, if that's the case... Oh, it is. Then I can promise you. He's going to be very sadly disappointed. Yeah, go on. Right, and I want five lagers, two with lime, three gin and tonics, two with ice, one without, two vodkas and oranges. Uh, hang on, hang on. Let's start with the lagers. How many was it? Five lagers, two with lime. Somebody's birthday, is it? Yeah. Lindsay, who works with us, it's the 21st today. All right, lucky girl. How many with lime? Uh, two with, three without. Liz, I'm coming through to give you a hand, all right? No, I can't ask you to do this. No, you're not asking us. Come on, let's be honest, you're a bit short-staffed. Yeah, I suppose I am. I am in the business, you know. I'm just not used to having a bar stay still. <laughs> right, what can I get you? Three gin and tonics. Yeah, two with ice, one without. Two with, one without. So, what happened? Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't really ask you, should I? Why not? I mean, who else do I have to talk to? No, she's uh, my wife. She's made certain proposals, and if I agree to them, then she'll get me a divorce. And will you agree to them? I haven't got much choice. You know, it just means that she walks away with half of everything and leaves me to pick up the uh, responsibilities. <laughs> but since I want the whole thing resolved, then yes, I'll agree. And she knows I will. I like the flowers. They are a present from Kevin. Kevin, no. He never buys me flowers. They're from a neighbour. Anyway, thanks for hanging on to Jonathan for me. 
Come Anytime. on, Anytime. There we go. I mean, it's because of the divorce, you... Hmm? Well, to be honest, I don't really know what happens, but... Well, I hope you never do. Unless, of course, you got rid of him already. Where's he hiding, Kevin? Uh, no, he's on a breakdown. No, but if you ever want him to stay for longer than usual, then you don't have to call round. I'll just hold on to him till I see you. Well, you're very kind, isn't she? Eh? A nice lady. What a flipping day. Hey, Barrow in Finesse, do you know where that is? No. We drive to the edge of the world and it's 20 miles further on. <laughs> do you know where I've just been? Hey, Oh, sit down. I'll have a quick wash and brush up and then we'll uh, nip out for a drink, all right? Just taken my mother home in a taxi. Oh, what a shame. She could have joined us, couldn't she? Oh, that was the idea, yes. All right, hang on. <clears throat> what do you think about this, eh? I saw this in the shop window. Thought it was a bit of me, hmm? Matches my flesh tones. Reg, what? will you listen to me? Hmm? What? I had to take my mother home. Because we went into the Rovers. Oh. And Martin, um, what's his name? You know, Gail's husband, the girl that has the cafe. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, he came up telling my mother... Yeah. ..how much she'd like it in the old people's home you're arranging to get her into. Ah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can imagine. Yes, I was going to mention that, actually. Just what on earth do you think you were doing, going behind my back like that? I'm sorry. And my mother's back. Yeah, well, I'm less sorry about that, of course. Reg! Yes, well, I am. I mean, I, I know I should have told you. I was going to tell you. I was going to tell you tonight, actually. Never to... mind you were going to tell me. You shouldn't have done it. No? No. Well, why not, eh? Why not? Because... Because you have said all along, or if you haven't said it... Mm -hmm. Oh, you've certainly given me the impression that Mother was going to live with us. Mm. You have never, never suggested putting her into an old people's home, never! No, no, well, I thought I would investigate the possibilities. But first. you <laughs> had no right to! Listen, once upon a time, a long time ago... Oh, wretch! No, no, listen, many years ago, I was deeply in love with a beautiful young woman called Maureen Grimes. Hmm? Yes. yes! Yes, and you were in love with me. Well... Yes? Yes, I was, yes. yes! But it was your mother that spoiled that. Your mother that came between us with her criticisms and her fault findings and who broke us up and denied us years and years of happiness. She just wanted the best for me. Oh, well, thanks a lot. No, I don't no, I mean, another... that's how she saw it, not how I saw it. I don't care how she saw it. She broke us up. And now, such are the vicissitudes of life, we are back together again. Yes. But let me ask you one thing, Maureen. Is it with her blessing, is it? No, come on, be honest. Wouldn't she split us up again if she could? She can't, not this time. Well, she's tried, hasn't she? She's tried already, and she's going to carry on trying. And if you think that I can be happy with the idea of us setting out on our married life together with her hung like an albatross around her neck, well, then you're going out... You're not just being fair, are you, Maureen? You're not seeing it from my point of view. Well, what are you trying to say? You'd rather in a home than living with us, then? Yes! Oh, no! Well, I don't know, do I? I... Oh. Well, I think you settled down very well. Uh, I don't know if you'd agree with that. Really? Yeah, it seems, seems to have done. Right? Which I think is the important thing where the first year is concerned. Oh, hello. Hello. Uh, sorry to interrupt. I was wondering if you had any light bulbs need replacing. Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Jolly good. You hear about Nicky? Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, he always seems happy enough to me. I don't teach him, of course, just see him out in the playground. But I think that what happens out there can be very revealing. Wouldn't you agree, Ken? Yes. No, quite honestly, I think you've got nothing to worry about. Oh, good. It's nice to hear. Thank you. And where's her husband? Why? Well, he's not running that pub with her, is he? At least he wasn't when I was in there earlier. Oh, that's where you got to, is it? I tell you, she's a good-looking woman. <laughs> Pub of her own. A man could do a lot worse than that. Yeah, well, I hope you're not serious. Yeah, well, I don't know what I am, as yet. Well, what about Janice? Well, she's yours if you want her. I don't. But just remember, will you? When you've had your fun and up sticks and moved away, I've got to carry on living here. You still haven't told me. Where's her husband? I think he's in Ireland. All right. How far enough is that?
Hi, Maggie. What are you doing here? Same as you. Oh, no. No, Mike, please. Well, what's the matter? It can't do any harm. Well, I think it can, yes. Hey! Oh. Have you many to see? Yes, only just started. Well, I'd get in there quick if I were you. We've just finished ours. <laughs> All right for some. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. Bye. See you then. Why couldn't you have rung and we could have discussed this instead of you just turning up? Well, it was very short notice. Look, don't worry. You can do the talking. I'm just here as a, an observer. Well, I'm very sorry, Maureen. I have said I'm very sorry. What more do you want? Oh, yeah. Good evening, Wickel, darling. And could I have a pint of bitter, please, and half a lager, if you'll be so kind? <laughs> what I want is to know that you'll never try anything like that again, and you won't, will you? Only if it would work. Wait. No, no, of course I won't. Make better let Ivy know we're back. Ah, oh, no, leave the baby sitting for all she knows his parents, even he'll go on to chicken out time. <laughs> oh, hi. Evening. Thought I'd come and watch you working for a change. I didn't know about this till just now, I... Uh... Well, do you want him to stay? I suppose he does have a legitimate interest. <laughs> you bet I do. OK, uh... Well, you've probably gathered from Mark's report that I'm well, rather disappointed in the way that this year has gone. He doesn't seem to have applied himself or really settled down. To be honest, I think it's a case of there being too many other distractions. Anyway, now, looking into the sort of... Uh, just a minute, hang on. Other distractions? Uh, what's that supposed to mean? All I'm saying is he's a bright boy and should be doing better than he is. Ah, whose fault's that? Hmm? Mike, please. I want to hear about Mark. Oh, so Nothing do I. else. I just want to hear about Mark. So do I. All right, well, I know that you'll be seeing his different subject teachers, but overall... Oh, but not already, surely. Can't, Meg. Can't stand here and be content, knowing the state she's got herself into. Look, you stay here, I'll see myself. No, you can't. It's not the answer my walks the streets alone. Come here. Oh! You can't uh, get away from you, can I? You want a drink? Oh, that'd be lovely, Mark. You can have a gin tonic. All right, yes, yeah, thanks. thanks. We've uh, just been to Nicky's party. Oh, was that good or bad? Gail? Uh, uh, not just yet, thanks. Okay. It's not bad. I don't think he's uh, ever going to be a genius, but everybody seems very happy with him. Oh, well, he wants to be a genius. I mean, you're to blame for everything, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Mike was there. He was just arriving as we were leaving. What? Yeah, he was with... He didn't know, did you? So, what you're saying... What I'm saying is... He should spend more time doing his homework and less time going out and about. Ah, you see? All this is aimed at me. But he does do his homework. I always make sure of that. I do too. You might make him sit there, but his mind is elsewhere. He is not concentrating. Oh, my fault again? Well, you may have had something to do with it, yes. Well, don't you come into it. You are his teacher. The problems aren't when he's at school. Ah, you see? At home. He's not only having a go at me, he's having a go at you as well. Look, I really don't think this is getting us anywhere. You are responsible because you're his teacher. I mean, who is it that's been chasing after his mother for the last year? Perhaps that's what's distracting him. Oh, I'm sorry, this is just... I mean, of course he's distracted you arriving every night. All right, that's it. Just go, please. How is he supposed to concentrate on his homework with you in the house? Chasing up and down the stairs after his mother? Get out! All right, I'm going. But you just remember this. You may have messed up his first year here but I'm going to be the one that puts it right. I don't care. You should have told me you were going. I thought I'd explained all that. Yes, well, not to my satisfaction. And I don't need an escort to work, thank you. Look, if I'd have said I was going to school to see how the lab was getting on, you'd have told me to keep my nose out of it. Very probably. No, probably about it. You would. Then we'd have had a row. Do you mean like the one we're having now? Look, I was going to tell you about it when we got home. How the hell was I to know you were going to bump into Gail first? Well, it's a good job I did. I wouldn't have a clue what you were doing if other people didn't tell me, would I? <laughs> you're impossible. Do you know that? And you're not? He's my son. I have a right to know how he's getting on. No, I'm not denying that. But, I mean, what kind of fool do you think it makes me when I don't know where you are or what you're doing? Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but let me tell you this. It's a good job I did go. I'm not too happy about him being at that school. I don't mind telling you. Oh, well, don't tell me. Tell Maggie. I mean, she's his mother. I don't want to know, OK? 
I don't know. I mean, if one minute you want to know about it, and the next minute you don't. Morning. Oh, hi, gal. Right, well, uh, I'd better get going. Yes, well, don't let me stop you. Oh, all right, I'll go then. See you later. Maybe. I hope all this is nothing to do with me. Well, as a matter of fact, it doesn't, Gail. It doesn't have anything to do with you or anybody else, OK? What, you mean he turned up at the school? Yeah, but I got the distinct impression that she was just as surprised as I was to see him there. So what happened? Well, I had to see them both together. Oh, dear. Yeah, <laughs> I must confess it got a bit out of hand. I can imagine. I mean, the trouble is, he's so self-centred. He just won't accept any sort of responsibility for the deterioration in Mark's work. And has it got worse? Well, yeah, across the board, yeah. But he, he won't accept anything to do with him appearing on the scene. Try to infer the school was to blame, or more to the point, me. And is it just Mike's fault? Oh, yeah, obviously. I mean, don't just walk into somebody's life and take it over like he did without there being some ill effects. Yeah, but uh, to be fair, he's not the only one who's been round that house. Oh, no, 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 no. I accept my share of the responsibility, but I never let my relationship with Maggie affect the boy. How can you be sure? You know, you sound as if you're on his side. Oh, no, I'm not on anybody's side. I just wonder how much all this has to do with the way you feel about Mike. Oh, no, no, no. I'd never let this affect my judgment, not when it's one of my pupils. Excuse me? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Just have a bit of a hurry, you know. Yeah, right. Sorry, I must be going anyway. Right, well, take care, love. Right, bye. Sorry about that. It's OK. I'm used to being kept waiting by attractive women. So you do all right, then? Well, on the whole, they seem pleased, yeah. Well, I've been working on it. A uh, bit more attention to detail. What? That woman that takes geography. Miss Johnson? Yeah, she said you could work hard and that you try very hard, but uh, sometimes you get a little bit confused. But she says that about everybody. Yeah, well, I'm not worried about everybody. I'm worried about you. But everybody else isn't doing all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, true. Yeah, but only a... <laughs> Last year when they said that, mm. he gave us 50p. Ah, now that's what all this is about, is it? What? Look, here you go. Don't spend it all at once. Hey, hey, did very well this year. OK, come on now. Hey, mine. zip your coat up. Okay. All right, to that. Rich! Whoa! Hey, all right. Well, uh, look, I just wanted to say I'm sorry about last night. I mean... When I opened my mouth, I didn't know that she didn't know, did I? No, well, she knows now, doesn't she? Yeah, well, like I say, I'm sorry, OK. Oh, well, don't be, cos there's no need. She'd have had to find out sooner or later, wouldn't she? Right. I mean, it is the only solution to our little problem. Yeah, well, as long as I didn't get you into any trouble, eh? Trouble? Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing I can't go with, Martin, lad. No, I mean, I know she doesn't want to go into an old people's home, but once she's seen it and gets moved in with her kit, she'll love it, won't she? Oh, yeah. Hey? Yeah. Crap, right. Old, uh, yeah. Morning. Oh, well, what's got into you? Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Well, up and dressed at 20 to 9. You had an early promise, or what? Hey, funny you should say that. I think I might have been if I played my cards right. That woman in the corner shop, she seems a bit spirited. Do you ever change? Still me mother's love of a little lad. <laughs> right, here's your breakfast. And here is your board. Oh, I don't want that. I take it, I always pay me way. Give over. Oh, go on, don't be daft. I reckon 50 quid a week should just about cover everything. Let's just keep it casual and you can... Shot us the odd tenor every now and then. Look, I'd rather we had it on a proper foot and does. Yes. Well, I would rather it was just me doing you a favour. That way I can kick you out whenever I like. Well, you're not thinking of that yet, are you? You said a few weeks. Yeah, I know. Well, so a few weeks it is. And don't try and conveniently forget, because my long-term plans don't include having you around. OK, understood. Right. What about your breakfast? You have it, Colin. I'm late for work. How's it getting on, then? Sorry? Mark, you said you were going to parents' evening last night. Has your dad been saying something to you? No, I haven't seen my dad. Why? Oh, nothing. So he's doing OK, then? Yeah, he's doing fine. Just fine. My dad always said he was a bright lad. I bet he goes on to university. Yeah, well, I hope he does. Not that I ever fancied it. In fact, I'm glad I'm finished with all that now. Hi, Maggie. What do you want? I want a word with you. I'm sorry, I'm busy. It's important. It won't take long. All right. Tracy, uh, can you finish those off in the back? Sure. You're working hard. Yeah. Still, you look good, aren't it? 
Thanks. Um, do you want me to write those cards out and stick them in as well? Yes, yes, if you could. She seems to be shaping up well. Just say what you have to say and go. All right. It's about Mark. Oh, and I thought it was an apology. And now it's more important than that. I don't know how you have the nerve to set foot in this shop after the exhibition you gave last night. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, but it did teach me something. Oh, and what was that? We've got to get him away from Weatherfield Comprehensive. Just go. Yeah, all right, I go, but I've said what I can't say. I'm worried about the boy, Maggie. He's got potential, even they say that, but he's not been allowed to achieve his potential. Now, we've got to do something about that, haven't we? Yes, well, I intend to. I mean, he's going to be working a lot harder, and that'll mean no more evenings out with you for a while. Look, I know I'm not perfect, and I sometimes let my feelings run away with myself, but, I mean, are you happy leaving him at a school where he's not achieving his potential? I don't have any choice in the matter. Oh, yes, you do. You have every choice in the matter. You can send him to whatever school you like, and I'll do the pain. Pain? Okay. Yeah. If you want the best, you've got to pay for it, Maggie. I don't know what you're talking about, private school. What? I'm not talking about private school. I'm talking about English public school. I'm talking about the best. No. Won't cost you a penny. I don't care. That's not the point. Mark's not going anywhere. He's staying here with me. Oh, come on, Maggie. Isn't that a bit selfish? Oh, I don't think so. I know what's best for my own child. I hope you do. Anyway, he, he wouldn't want to go away, leave all his friends behind. Wouldn't he? Why don't you ask him? No. And neither will you. Look, just leave him alone. Just leave us both alone. Just go away. All right, Maggie, I'm going. But I want you to think about this very carefully. Because if you deny him this chance, he might never forgive you. You might never forgive yourself. OK. Sausage, egg and chips, steak, pie and chips, cheese, salad, and two steamed puddings for two. two. Have you got that, Alma? Yes, well, I'm not deaf. Well, a little acknowledgement would be nice now and again, just so I know where I am. Oh, well, we'd all like that, wouldn't we? Oh! What is it? Nothing. Let's have a look. Damn, no, I've slipped. All right, it's not bad. Go and give it a wash out the back. Go on. Alma? Hiya. Morning. What can I get you? Uh, pint, please. Ah, you look like a pint, man. Is, uh, is Liz about? Well, she's in the back. Why? Uh, no special reason. You're a friend of hers, then? Uh, no, not really. Just that I was in last night. Oh. I only work in the daytimes normally. Yeah? Yeah. I like to keep my nights free. You know, I've got a very active social life. Well, lucky you. Well, there's a lot to do around here on a night if you know where to go. Yeah? Yeah. Could show you a few things, I'll tell you. Yeah, well, do you think it could wait till you've served that lot, Tanya? We're going to be short-staffed again. What's the problem? Oh, Barman, who phoned in sick last night. I've just tried ringing him, but there's no answer. So either he's dead or he's got another job. Not having much luck with the bar staff, eh? <laughs> Not really, no. Now, what you need is an honest, cheerful, chatty chap, preferably the uh, seagoing type. You offer him? Why not? I was just joking. I was. You did enough last night. Yeah, well, I've nothing else on, and the, uh, the place is beginning to fill up a bit. Well, if you're serious... Never more so. In that case, welcome aboard. <laughs> Where's Agro? Out the back. She's cut her finger. Oh, badly? Not really. It's the shock, I think. Is she OK? Well, let's just say she's not having the greatest day of her life. Oh, you OK? Yep. Girl said you cut your hand. Oh, it's nothing. I'll run you down a casualty if you like. No, I said it was nothing. OK. Look, uh, I'm sorry I didn't tell you about last night. I shouldn't keep things from you. It's not fair. No, that's all you keep saying. I mean it. So in future, I'm going to tell you everything. No, we're full. I'm busy, and this can wait. No, it can't. I said I was going to tell you everything, and I'm going to. I've been round to see Maggie. I said I'd pay to send Mark away to school. What? 
Well, it's the only way I can have a son of mine hanging around street corners like the rest of these jobbos. You're not serious. Deadly serious. Well, what about the money? I mean, it costs a fortune to send somebody away to school, you know. We're both working. We can afford it. We? Oh, no, not me, Mike. You. I mean, he's your son. You pay for him. I quit. Alma! <laughs> They tell me it wards off evil spirits. Oh, oh, does that mean I'll have a scot-free oh. afternoon? <laughs> I don't think it's that good, lovey. Are you eating, Emily? No, thank you. I just popped in to see Deirdre. OK, look. Mr Scott said you'd be here. He's a funny little man, isn't he? Oh, he's not so funny when you're working for him. Oh, dear, I do hope he's not driving you to drink. Well, he might do in time, but for the moment, he's Betty's hot pot that's the attraction. <laughs> now, what can I do for you? Well... It's the church jumble sale on Saturday. I just wondered if you'd be free to help us sort. Yeah, why not? You get first pick of anything going. Fine. <laughs> Bring Tracy as well, if you like. I'm sure there'll be something she fancies. Well, Tracy works on Saturdays now, Emily. Oh, yes, of course. I keep forgetting. How's she getting on? Oh, she's happy as Larry. Still doesn't regret leaving school, then? Not at all. And Ken? Ah, well, that's another matter. But it's her life, Emily, and there is absolutely no purpose in making her do something she doesn't want to do. So how's that brother of yours? Oh, alive and living at number six. Well, I know that, don't I? Just, just wondered whether he's going to come in here, you know, sometime. Well, it's a pub, isn't it? it sells beer. Well, yeah. I don't think you'll keep him away, then. It's very charming, isn't he? Oh, I don't know, Raquel, is he? Well, there's something about him, he's sort of, um, man of the world. <laughs> yeah, is that all right? You're very hard on him, aren't you? Am I? I suppose I am. We are brothers. Yeah, but brothers are supposed to be close. Well, we're not. Never have been. In fact, I don't know if I like him at all. Do you know, I think that's awful. It's true, though. Yeah, but you must love him, though. I suppose I do. Well, that's all right, then. I'm pleased that's made you happy. Well, you know, I just don't like to think of people being, well, not nice to each other, especially family. Oh, it's you. <sighs> just thought I'd pop in to see you. Well, I'd better finish off. Uh, don't want any lunchtime violence. Oh, no, look, uh, about that little incident the other night, I'm sorry. I'm... Yeah, I'm only kidding, mate. You know, I feel like thumping at myself sometimes. See ya. See ya. He seems like a nice bloke. What dares, oh. Yeah, he's a lovely bloke, he says. Yeah, different altogether from his brother. Yeah, but I think his brother's a fascinating person as well. Oh, he's like old sailors. Yeah, but he's not spent his entire life in this dump, has he? I mean, he's been to China, Russia, Hong Kong. I mean, he's travelled yeah. well. Yeah, well, so have I. Well, I had a call two weeks in Aston travelling well, God. Well, it's foreign. They speak French, you know. They speak French in Jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been there and all. Well, excuse me before my head starts spinning with excitement of it all. If he's away at school, I'll see more of you. I'll have more time to spend with you. Yes, but that's not why you're doing it, is it? No, I'm doing it because I think it's in his best interests, and if you thought about it, you'd see I'm right. <laughs> I just can't stand by and watch him decline. Well, why not? I mean, that's what you're doing with us, isn't it? Oh, no, no, don't shake your head. What, I mean, pack him off to boarding school? And then you're on to your next challenge. Oh, Maggie, maybe. Hmm? Oh, don't be ridiculous. No, I am not being ridiculous. I'm telling you the truth. I mean, you picked him up just the way you picked me up. I mean, you couldn't have me, so you chased me till you got me. And then you're on to your next thing. Well, I mean, you get bored with him in time and all. Just like you got bored with me, and then you'll be on to your next target. <laughs> I'm not bored with you. Well, if you're not... It's only because you haven't spent enough time with me to be bored with me. I love you. <laughs> I do love you, Alma, but I mean, he's my son. He needs me. He's a kid and he's going through a crisis in his life. I, I just can't stand by and ignore it. So what does Maggie say? Oh, well, uh, she'll come round. Oh, I see. So she's not keen either. Like mm. I said, she'll come round. She'll see it makes sense. Oh, like we all do. And when we all come round to your point of view in the end, don't we, Mike? Slight exaggeration. Is it? I mean, you always seem to get your way in the end, and I can't see this being an exception. 
Look, I'll tell you what. Mm. I won't do it unless you give me the go-ahead. Oh, give over. No, you're right. It's your money as well. So I won't do it unless you say OK. You really know how to do it, don't you? I mean, what can I say now? I mean, what can I say to that? Well, don't say anything. You just think about it, give it a bit of time, and then you tell me what you decide. Here we are. Thanks. Oh, it should be me thanking you. Rescuing me twice in two days. No, I tell you, I've enjoyed myself. But you're supposed to be on holiday. Yeah, uh, holidays aren't much fun on your own, are they? True. Yeah, let's give me something to do while this is at work. All the same, I uh, don't want you going away empty-handed. No, no, I don't need your money. Oh, no, take it, I'd feel better. No, honestly, please. This one's on me. OK. Thanks. Pleasure. So, uh, are you going to be around for a while, then? Well, I could be. I'm getting tired of the sea. You're not thinking of packing it in? No, oh, I don't know. It had crossed my mind, you know. Might look for somewhere like this, or a little restaurant, maybe. Give you lots of ties. Yeah, well, it'd make a change. I've been foot loose long enough. Just the opposite with me. I've never really been foot loose. Still, there it is. Have you, um, sorted out your barman? I don't think we'll be seeing him again. So, um, what about tonight? Well, now, I was wondering about that. <laughs> I don't suppose you'd come to my rescue again. Please, I thought you'd never ask. I don't want to take advantage of your good nature. Honestly, feel free. But I insist on paying you. OK, all right. If you pay me, then I'll expect at least a week's work. You're on. Hello. Maureen, you're a bit early. Is there something wrong? Yeah, well, I had to see you straight away. Certainly, my dear. Why don't you come through and sit down? been on my mind all day. What has? Well, what you said, you know, yesterday about us and our future and about Mother. I see. Well, you're quite right. She can't possibly live with us for the rest of our married lives. Oh, you mean you've changed your mind? Well, well, I, I want to be fair, Eddie. I, I want to be fair to you mm. and I want to be fair to her. Oh, absolutely. So, mm. I've thought about it. Mm. And I've decided I can't put her in a home. Not just like that. It's too cold, it's too calculated. Oh, I see. No, no, listen, please. Then again, mm. I don't want her on top of us every day. So all I'm trying to say is, is there a middle way? You know, like you said, where she could live with us, but just live separately from us. Oh, I don't know, Maureen. It's a tall order, is that? I mean... Oh, you see my problem, Reg. <sighs> well, yes, I do. And, and don't worry, my love because I'll do everything to try and solve it to everybody's satisfaction. Oh. Good day. Not so bad. All right for some moping about. Don't suppose you've made any tea? Listen, offered your breakfast this morning. You weren't interested. Look, I was... I'm sorry I was a bit shirty this morning. It's OK. If you're not doing out tonight, me and Donna go to the dogs. Why don't you come with us? Uh, actually, I've, um, I'm already fixed up, mate. Sorry. Oh? Huh? Yeah, an old uh, mate of mine just come off a ship. We've arranged to go for a night out on the town. Yeah, well, don't be bringing them back here at half past one, offering them a bed. Would I? Yeah. Yeah, well, don't worry. It won't happen tonight, you can be sure of that. Hi. What are you doing here at this time? Oh, waiting for his nibs to come back. It's five past six. I know, you know I'm working late. And me at home neglecting. Well, you've got to put some tea on. I can do better than that. When your boss gets back, I'll take you to the Rovers for a drink. Oh, you'll take me. Well, why not? I'm earning now, aren't I? Hey, I might even run to a meal. No, no, I'll settle for a drink. Right, I'll go over and wait for you okay. then. Okay. Will you be all right over there on your own? I'm a big girl now, you know. Anyone messes with me, they'll get a thump. Do you know something? I believe you. Don't be long. All right. There you go. Busy enough for you. Yeah, regular little gold mine, this place. Let's up, sir. Yeah, get some entertainment on here, but we're trying a few years. Entertainment? Yeah, a bit of live music. I think I'm a bit long in the tooth for that. Yeah, you're never too old for a bop. Oh, speak for yourself. Go on, then, how old are you? Guess. Unfair. Well, you shouldn't be so cheeky, then, should all right, you? All right, all right, all right. Well, I'd say about 28, maybe 29. Oh, now I know you're a liar. Why? What do you mean? 
I've got 19-year-old twins. Well, you must have been a child bride then. <laughs> 17, very stupid. Des tells me your husband was in the, uh, the army. Did he? No, no, it's all right. Honestly, I didn't mean to pry. Sensitive subject at the moment. Sure, I remember that. So you've been discussing me with your brother, have you? But just chit chat. He knows you're working here, then? Uh, no, he doesn't, actually. I haven't, I haven't told him. Why not? <sighs> well, he thinks I've got designs on you. Oh. <laughs> and have you? Well, you know what the Tahitians say? The Tahitians? Yeah, they say the man who doesn't have designs on an attractive woman is tired of life. <laughs> you expect me to believe that? No, of course not. But I tell you something that is true. Oh, yeah? yeah. Not life in me yet. Hello. Oh, yeah. Me entreating yourself. No, oh, just laziness, really. Get your drink. Got Tracy's at the bar getting the coffees in. Oh, well, it really makes you feel her age when you see your daughter propping up a pub bar. <laughs> it's not quite like that. No, I know, I know. How's the job going? She's loving it, unfortunately. Oh, I suppose I'm glad she is. Actually, she heard something quite interesting this morning that I thought you might like to know about. Oh? Following on from what you were saying earlier about Parents' Day. Oh, yeah? Well, it seems that Mike came in the shop this morning <laughs> and offered to pay to send young Mark away to school. <laughs> so, here I am on my own. And that's it. That's the lot. Story of my life. And I don't know why I told you all that. Oh, well, sometimes it helps to talk, doesn't it? You know, get it off your chest. Doesn't change anything, though, does it? But I don't know. It might help you come to terms a bit. I'm beginning to wish I hadn't said anything now. Why? Don't you trust me? Yeah. But I can't think why I should. Look, I won't say a word. I, I promise I'll go to bed tonight, I'll wake up, my mind will be blank. I won't remember a thing. Why should you? I can think of lots of reasons why I should. It just might be better if I didn't, that's all. Yeah. Andy. Good night. Yeah. What are you doing here? I went home, but couldn't get in. No, we've had a break inside. The lock's changed. Wise move. But all that's sorted now. Yeah, I think so. You sure about that? Of course I am. Grimshaw's enjoying Grand Canaria. Who? Emma, you know, Anne's house across the road. Oh, am I uh, Council Minister, love? No, it doesn't look like it. <coughs> Swanny here from Lytham. Oh, probably that estate agent. Well, he's faster than the mark. You only rang him yesterday. Day before, actually. Listen. I can't remember what we did yesterday. It was so exciting. It's only a possibility. I'm hoping we're that clear to them. We're just thinking about it. Oh, yes. We're good at that, aren't we? Thinking. <gasps> oh, Alf. What's up, love? Oh, look at that. 110,000. Not the price, the picture. Three bedroom. What do we want with three bedrooms? You need space for entertaining. <gasps> oh, but look, gardens all the way round. Cool. So I bet that'll be snapped up in a minute at that price. Not by us, it won't. But you like Lytham, you said so. I said it was a possibility. Well, at least we can go and see it. Well, not today, we can't. Why not? We can't just trip off to Lytham. That's the whole point, Alf. We can. Huh? Oh, what's the use? No, it was something Gail said about Alf taking up both. Oh, he used to do quite a lot of it at one time. Can't see him joining Percy's club, though, can you? There's a waiting list, according to Mr. Sugden. I know, all waiting for Percy to resign. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it'll give Alf some exercise. Hey, what's going on? Oi, talking about exercise. Have you seen this? 
You maniac! You could have run me down! Yeah, sorry, Derek, I didn't see you there. You make yourself more conspicuous next time. Oh, shut up. Well, Derek, where's the party? There's no party. I'm trying to achieve what you couldn't possibly comprehend. A lively mind and a healthy body. <laughs> I, uh, think that young man's trying to play the comedian. What? Oh, yes. Uh, he certainly saw you. Couldn't very well miss you, really, could he? Not too much, do you think? Oh, no, 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 of course not. No, no. Ignore the jive. Get on with your jog. Thank you. I'll take that as my motto for the day. Ah. We, uh, do have bananas on special offer, if you're interested. I told him to either burn it or dye it, but never to go out in it. But I thought he was on a week's holiday. Why isn't he having a lion? Oh, it was something I said inadvertently. God, I, I don't know what possesses the man. What did you say? It doesn't matter, Emily. Well, it matters to Derek, wherever it was. Well, I told him he was putting on weight, if you must know. Then oh, yeah. he's doing something about it, isn't he? I meant he should go on a diet. Not dash about the district drawing attention to himself. It's not funny, Rita. I was trying to look on the bright side. Oh, so sorry, sorry, Cop, sorry. What's up with you? It's a bit of a back problem that comes on all of a sudden, you know. It's all right, then. Wait. What? Look, well, you're not going to go around and see Mum again, are you? No. Listen, the last thing she needs is you going around and sticking your neb in on one of your occasional visits. I don't like blokes slobbering all over me mum, Steve. He kissed her, you said. She didn't kiss him, though, did she? Look, it's all sorted. I don't know what you're going on about. I'm going on about you going on about me. I'm not! But you will. No, I won't. Anyway, I'm not seeing her, am I? I'm looking for a temporary job, Steve, to be honest. How are you fixed? Not suitable, mate. I worry too much. Thanks, Steve. Just going out for a paper, love. Anything you want? No, thanks. Listen, why don't you go with me? Stretch your legs a bit. My legs are fine, but my brain's shrinking. Aye, ah, right. Oh, what's that Hello, dear. Come on in, love. Hiya, kids. Oh, Brady, Kate. I'm just going out for a few seconds, actually. No, I think you better stay for this, Alf. It's panic station. This is a nice surprise. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> oh. Rosie, is that so fresh? Oh, she's sweetheart. Oh, dear, dear. Yeah, she's gone to the doctor. Yeah, now. Sally's taking her. So, can I dump this lot with you till she gets back? Well, it's nothing serious, I Well, she's not crying with it or anything. I think Sally's just being careful. Oh, poor Lord. I wanted to go with Johnny first. Yeah, well, you can't. Sally's got enough on her plate. You don't mind, do you, Alf? No, no, of course not. Hey, put the kettle on, Alf. Oh, no, no, not for me. Oh. Alma's waiting. Um, uh, so you behave yourself to your granddad. Oh, All right, both of you. It's my birthday. Oh, I'll look for it later. Hey, get uh, her quickly, quickly yeah. now. Oh, what do you think yeah. of this? Vacant possession and all. Oh, you need to be vacant to pay that price. Oh, Do you fancy living in Lithermouth? I fancy Lithermouth if it's cheap enough. <laughs> What's that, Nicky? Green plastic stuff in the garden. Green plastic? Do you know, if we left it in, we'd never go anywhere. <laughs> go on, Chief. Yeah, of course right. you can. There's crayons and there's paper Come in there. On. All right. Bye, man. Bye, sweetheart. Don't Thanks, worry. Sam. We'll be all right. Hey, hang on, Sarah. I'll get a cloth for that. Hang on. Don't let Hey, me... now we've got to find something for David to do. Come here, sweetheart. And if you still there, come make some mess. That reminds me, Nicky. Now, your ball's underneath the stairs, right? Right. Oh, now, uh, Nicky wants to know what you did with that mesh that you got to make the sweet pea frames that you never got round to me. What do we want that for? Nets. Nets? Yeah. We've got some work. Come make some goalposts. Goalposts? Oh, oh, stop repeating everything now. <laughs> Can you colour the clown in front of Grandma? Oh, that's Grandad, sweetheart. He's better at it than I am. Is that colouring a clown in? Oh, stop moaning now. Take your coat off. You look like you've come to read the gas meter. <laughs> Staff rotors are pretty full at the moment, Mr MacDonald. I'm not sure if I can fit you in. I just thought for old time's sake, you know. Sorry? Well, old school time, then. I mean, 
us university types have got to stick together, haven't we? My managerial creed, Mr McDonald, is fairness without favour. To expect preferential treatment merely because we know one another would be a mistake. Okay, come on, give it over, Curly. That's another mistake, Mr McDonald. <clears throat> Sorry. Mr Watts. Mm. Sorry, I didn't know you were interviewing. That's all right. I've just finished. Mr. McDonald, Miss Fennick, my assistant manager. Miss Fennick, Mr. McDonald, he'll be joining us tomorrow as a temporary on the early shift. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, and don't worry, <coughs> I won't be late, love. I can't be late, can I? Boss only lives next door, but one. Thanks. See ya. Employing another of your neighbours, are we? My decision, Elaine. I'll manage. You assist. Well, perhaps you can manage to improve the deficit figures, then. Hey? Well, the losses on wines and spirits are appalling. Well, they're Reg Holdsworth's figures. It's a much tighter ship now that I'm in charge. Anyway, inform all staff to remain vigilant. re shoplifters. Fine. <clears throat> and uh, who's going to remain vigilant re the staff? Hey? Well, it could be internal, couldn't it? Well, I know that. I've thought of that. I've gone even further than that. I've formulated a new security system. I'll watch for shoplifters, and you watch the staff. And how do you suggest I do that? Well, you know, searches. Have a rummage through the bags before they go home. <laughs> I don't think so, Mr Watts. You what? Well, you manage and I assist, remember? So you search and I'll watch. OK. This is very embarrassing, Mr Scott. After all, this is my place of work. The idea was not to embarrass you, Mr Duckworth, merely to remind you you do have an outstanding debt to settle. A man of conscience like myself doesn't need reminding. I've told you, you'll get it. Oh, I... When? When I've got it. Simple economics, that, isn't it? As soon as somebody gives it me, I'll give it you, all Meanwhile, right? Meanwhile, I dance to your tune, eh? Well, I warn you, Duckworth, I'm a very poor dancer. You'll be good at whistling, son, cos that's what you're gonna be doing. Yes, Don, lad. I don't see how my jogging embarrassed you. Customers, Derek, at least half a dozen of them noticed your performance. And they lost no time in mentioning it. <laughs> Eleven dash is how one of them described it. Ah, that's very good. You've no shame, have you? Well, I'm sure you've enough shame for both of us, Mavis. Don't be sarcastic. You started it. All I said was that you seemed to be spreading out a little. Getting fat was how you put it. <gasps> it was just bantering, me. Eh? Why do you have to take everything so much to heart? Look, I'm sorry if I offended you. No, I'm very grateful. I mean, we might decide to do some walking this summer. Mm. Oh, that would be nice. Wouldn't do to be unprepared, would it? I mean, Kinder Scout can be very testing on the legs. I've always wanted to go up Kinder Scout. Well, the spirit might be willing, Mavis, but is the flesh up to it? Mm. No offence meant, but you're not exactly in peak condition yourself, are you? Well, I'm sorry. That sounded like revenge. I'm sorry. But it was a statement of fact. Has your dad sent you a postcard? No, no, but we've uh, been in touch. I had to tell him about the burglary, didn't oh, I? Oh, I'd take it. Well, there's least of his troubles at the moment. No job, no future. You talking about me again? <laughs> Give us a pie, Raquel. Oh, yeah. You look a bit chirpier today, though? Yes, well, I've got a job now, haven't I? Start in the morning at Better Buys. Yeah, okay, they must be desperate. Uh, Mr. Watts, if you don't mind. I'm mm. telling you, they were standing three deep in that bar. You know, it's a big pub, the Queen's, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, I know a lot of big pubs, Jack. Most of them are doing now. What were you doing in there, anyway? Well, that's picking up a fair one. No, look, it's Liz, isn't it? The thing she's putting on there. Ah, grub and that. Then. Yeah, and the rest, you know, pool, darts, coffee mornings. Hey, she's running a talent contest sometime this week. Oh, come on, Don. Talent contest went out with the arc. Yeah, I know. Even Liz thinks it's a bit risky. But she's hoping the prize money will pull them in. Put a prize money on. Yeah, 50 quid. Think I'm having a go, eh? Oh, aye. Yes, sir. Give us a pint, Jack. Right. Don't look now, but there's that bloke. What bloke? The one that was slobbering all around me, Mum. Are you sure that's Desi's bloke? Yeah, I'm definite. Steve. One pound, ten piece. Up. Yeah, you're probably right, Jack. Entertainment these days has got to be a bit more upmarket, yeah. hasn't it? Oh, aye, what's this? Salad night, the Queen's. Ah, where well, uh, Friday. How do you know? I'm on the pillow of the Queen's, man. I tell you, a good pint and a crack and landlady. Yes to her. Well, I'll stop you there, then, if you don't mind. You what? That cracking landlady happens to be my mum. Hey, it's steady, I mean, it's said no. Uh, come on, Andy, leave it out. Hey. What is he, some kind of nutter, or what? Oh, you'll find out what a nutter I am. Yeah, well, hey, come on down, the pair of you. What did I say? I'm just warning you in case you do say something. All right. Yeah, yeah, come on, Andy, leave it out, eh? Them two happen to be Liz McDonald's lads, in case you haven't guessed. 
Someone tell me what I said. <sighs> Terrific. <laughs> He wants, don't you? He wants you to go jogging with him. Oh. Don't fall for it, mate. Oh, don't worry, I won't. One fool in the family is enough. Well, you've had a go at him. He's had a go at you. Leave it at that, no. I would. Look, I'll not be provoked, Rita, if that's what you mean. Good for you. And if he thinks that I'm going to take part in any of his madcap schemes, he's got another thing coming. You do right. Unfit, am I? I get more exercise in an hour than he gets in a whole week. Of course you do. I'd like to see him carry a full bag of papers across the red wreck. Not to mention the flat. No, and the flat. Five flights, and I never use that lift, Reed. No. Oh, the nerve of the man. I mean, he, he can't even stir his own tea without puffing and blowing. Mm. Oh, there's a bit right. early for you, isn't it, love? Well, early finish. What? Thought old Colin might have had the tea on, but there's no sign of him. Oh. Hiya, Maeve. Hello. Saw your Derek this morning. Did he tell you? I don't want to talk about Derek, if you don't mind. Oh, you saw the tracksuit as well, then? Sure. But I'm quite happy to talk about your brother, the brawler, if that's what you want. You what? Uh, trouble in the pub at dinner time. Not his fault, by all accounts. No, but he's been taken on by Liz MacDonald at the Queen's, apparently, which doesn't please young Andy. So that's what he's up to. What about the brawling? Well, Andy took exception to something your brother said. I don't know what it was, but it must have been something to do with Liz. I see. Um, I'll see you. Yeah, bye, love. <laughs> that wiped the snigger off his face. Shouldn't you be saving this for your Derek? Or are you just practising? Can I go and watch Grandad play football? No, the game's not started yet, sweetheart. It's still marking out the pit. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gonna have to give you a good scrub before your mum says, yeah. That's a lovely picture, that, isn't it? Hey, have you seen the time? Hmm? Can oh. I go and watch... Nicky play football. Look, will you ring Sally? I mean, she's bound to be back now. No, we can't do that, Alf. It'll be like dumping them. And if little Rosie really is poor. Well, we won't know till we know, will we? Oh, sh and don't wait, David is asleep. Oh, right. What are you doing? I'm going to ring Sally, aren't I? If we can't look after our own grandkids once in a mile. Yeah, it's all right for you. You're sticking and pasting here. I'm building Wembley Stadium out there. So, what are we going to do when we have taken them back, eh? Sit here talking about what we might be doing if we weren't sitting here talking. Well, what about Lytham? I could take you to Lytham. Oh, well, I mean, Gail said that little Rosie may not be too serious, didn't she? Oh. The number is 4392. You ring, I'll get it. Oh, come on, son. Oh, he's a little fat man. Oh, oh he's a little fat man. He's a beautiful boy. Well, that's beautiful, boy, isn't it? Oh, hey, I'm not disturbing you, am I? No, no, it's all good. Hey, I've swung it. I've got Friday off for Queen, so I'll pick you up about seven ish, OK? I don't know that I'll be able to make it. <laughs> oh, come on, you haven't bothered <coughs> out, have you? I thought you were after that 50 quid. No, I'll need a latch lifter, won't I? A couple of bob to oil the tonsils before then, like, you know. Yeah, well, they'll see you that. Hey. Shh, shh, shh. How are you, Dan? Oh, hey, then. Uh, well, if you didn't back it, that's your lad, look, eh? Uh, uh, hang you. on, uh, Jack, make him a drink. No, I've got to go, honest. So what were they sauces should have about? Oh, um, no panic, just uh, odds on favourite. No, no, no profit. Yeah, well, odds on or odds off. His backing days are over. Any spare cash goes on that baby. We'll never have any spare cash if I can't speculate, Vera. Yeah, well, you've been backing horses for years, Jack Duckworth. You've never won a light. Failure should have taught you something. Hey, you don't know the lad's confidence. He's branching out, aren't you, Jack lad, eh? Fly me to the moon. Hey, and on? let me fly. No. Here. Oh. I'll need my best shirt ironing for Friday. It is nice, isn't it? Oh, we've got to have it, Alf. We've just got to have it. <laughs> oh. Mr and Mrs Roberts. Oh. George Reckley. Reuben Allen Properties. And you? This is just too much. Uh, vacant oh. possession, you said? Uh, yes. 
previous tenants holidayed in Madeira and decided to stay. Oh, nice when you have the choice. <laughs> say that again. It is so lovely, Al. Mm. Shall we go in? Oh, Trita, I'll be back in about an hour. You sure you don't mind? No, no, you go and coot your Derek is moosley. And close your ears to propaganda. <laughs> now, you sure you're not just sending me home for a rest because you've noticed my energy levels dropping? You're laughing now, lady, but he nearly got to you. <laughs> yes. Right, I'll see you later then, Richard. Right. Bye. Oh, hello, oh, Tom. Nice. Oh, oh, she's right looking on. cheerful. Ah, oh, she is now. You should have seen her earlier. Doom and gloom wasn't in it. Hey, they tell me Derek was out jogging this morning. You mean you didn't see him? I, I missed it, unfortunately. Ah. I'm not catch his act tomorrow. Oh, Don, I don't think there's any more jogging done. Well, you know Derek and his obsessions. I mean, today it could be keeping fit. Tomorrow it could be keeping rabbits. <laughs> oh, Mavis! Don't come in. Here, close your eyes. <laughs> what? No, it's a surprise. Oh, close your eyes. Don't be silly, Derek. Oh, come on, don't spoil it. <gasps> right, this way. Stop. <laughs> Open them. What is it? It's a rowing machine. Oh, Derek, you just want to get a bit trimmer. You don't No, it's need... not for me. It's for you. Now nip upstairs, get your tracksuit on, and I'll show you how it works. <laughs> no, room upstairs. It, it needs more than two plug points, you know. Well, it's only the third bedroom, Al. There is space to fit another plug point if you need it. Ah, more expense. You see, I'm not happy with the position of these radiators, neither. Well, what's wrong with them? They are against the wall, Mr. Roberts. Yeah. But if only they spent more time designing the inside of the house like they have the garden. Any road. Let's have another look at the kitchen. <laughs> you see, cosmetics are all very nice, but it's capacity that counts. I'm not with you, Mr. Roberts. Space, in other words, or rather, lack of it. Oh, there's bags of space, Alf. I mean, look at all these cupboards. This is a splendid feature of the property, actually, Mrs. Roberts. Yeah. You must have spent a small fortune in here. Mm. A 500 gram box of cornflakes. How tall? Sorry? A 500 gram box of cornflakes. How tall, would you say? I, uh, I don't know. You're being ridiculous, Alf. 12 and a half inches. There's not one of these cupboards give you more than 11 inches. Now, you'd think for the money you'd be able to store your cornflakes somewhere. Did you say there was a utility room? Oh, yes. Uh, it's towards the back. I hope he doesn't ask to see the upstairs. There isn't one. There used to be a grocer. Oh. Think about it, Andy. Your mum wouldn't look twice at a mug like our Colin. Yeah, I know. I just flew off the handle, there's that, so forget about it, mate. It was understandable. So you're hoping he'll shove off soon, then? Mm, sooner the better. Can't stop in one place too long anyway. Wears out his welcome. Can I get you one? No, I'll get them in. Uh, Raquel, two pints, please. In the meantime, just forget he exists. Yeah, all right. Bet you're talking about Colin, are you? Colin? Colin who? So Mavis is even more upset, is she? She was spitting feathers when she came back. It, um, it, it works like this, Ruined you see. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Oh, no, 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 that's quite right. You see, the more they spend, the more vouchers they're allocated. The object is to cut down the cost of the Christmas hamper. Seems like too much messing about to me. Oh, you've never gone in for inducement techniques then, Mrs. Sutton? Me? Oh, no. I didn't know what a lost leader was till I met Reg Holdsworth. <laughs> <laughs> Yet, well, there's nothing new about it, of course. As long ago as the last century, Heppel, White and Runcie were giving away free brushes with their new lavatories. Charming. Oh, yes, 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 they did. You know, I think my greatest challenge is going to be to hold on to the custom that Alf Roberts has built up over the years. He was a very fine grocer in his day. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Though why he wants to bury himself in Lytham, is anyone's guess? Lytham? <laughs> yes, well, that's where he is now. You see, they're, uh, they're house hunting. So the uh, girl next door told me. Sally? Sally, Sally, is it? Sally, yeah. <laughs> you see, uh, Mrs. Roberts is rather taken with a bungalow that, that they've seen advertised. Do you know he's got more possibilities than we thought? What else did young Sally say? How could you do that? Not just now, love. He's still watching. No, I don't care. It was perfect. Had my heart set up. Oh, 
I thought I'd drive along the front and see uh, see what's there. No, just take me home. I thought we were stopping. For what? You'd no intention of viewing that house properly. Just an excuse to shut me up about it. Yeah, well, we'll find a nice little bed and breakfast place, then we'll be on hand to put in an offer. Eh? Well, you said yourself. It's the ideal house, you're right. <laughs> Not going to tell him that, though. He'll be wants to ask him the full price. You mean you liked it? Liked it? I loved it. If we can get the right price, it's Lytham, here we come. Oh, ow! Oh, you big! <laughs> Got me all worked on. Well, what are your plans for today? Thought I might spend some time in the garden. Oh, well. Before you get that sun lounger out, do you think you could move the rowing machine? Sun lounger? Not in that sense, Mavis. There's work to be done. Well, I'd still like the rowing machine moved. Where to? Well, spare bedroom, I suppose. It wouldn't be in the way there. Now, that's a thought. Mm -hmm. What? Well, the spare bedroom. There's plenty of room in there. You know, there's a whole range of keep fit equipment. It's designed especially for home use. And if we... Perhaps the rowing machine will be sufficient for now. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm going to be tied up all week, but my uh, assistant manager is more than capable of dealing with the situation. Right. So I'll expect you at three o'clock. Bye-bye. You know, I think bigger notices might help. Hey. In the store. You know, warning would-be thieves. They can be seen on video. We've got notices up. So we'll make them more prominent, get some new ones done. Anything to make them think we're taking a closer interest in them. Oh, yeah? And what's the staff going to think of that? Well, that's their problem, isn't it? No, it isn't. It's our problem. They're not exactly chuffed little mint balls about these random searches, are they? We want them on our side. It's bad business to alienate your staff. Cutting down on pilferage is in everybody's interest. They've nothing to hide. They've nothing to fear. They know that. Hello? What's up? Big woman. Back to the camera. She looks very edgy to me. Mrs. Bridge. All oh, right. I can see her face now. Well, that would have been a turn up, wouldn't it? We caught the store detective. I could get used to this, you know. Oh, I already have, love. You didn't give me any idea then. Oh. The estate agent. No, no, no. He said he'd uh, pass our offer on, let he'd be in touch. Yeah. I just wish we knew. Oh, well, there's nothing we can do about it. We'll just have to sit tight and hope for the best, eh? Yes, yes. Oh. Do you know, it feels so right, though. What? Bungalow? Everything. The bungalow, this place. I mean, it's a whole different way of life, isn't it? I mean, it's so relaxing for one Oh, I... Is that all right? <sighs> hey. Now, you're not having second thoughts, are you? No, I'm not having second thoughts. <laughs> I'm agreeing with you, aren't I? I'm just thinking, though, it's going to be very different here after what we've had the last few years, you know. That shop won't dominate our lives, for one thing. <laughs> the shop hasn't dominated our lives for the last three weeks, and you haven't known what to do with yourself. Well, that's because we're still living there, isn't it? I mean, the shop is central to my life in Weatherfield, but once we move here, it'll be different. I mean, we'll have a new home, we have new interests, new folk, and plenty of time to enjoy it. Do you mean that? I do mean it, yeah. I'll tell you something else I mean as well. I'll be just as disappointed as you if we don't get that bungalow. Now, is that what you wanted to hear? Oh, love it, yeah. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Oh! <laughs> come on, then. Oh, come on, out with it. What? You are up to something, you. Well, if that's all the thanks you get, it. <laughs> Jack, you must have tried the breakfast pots. Yeah, well, he told me to. Yeah, well, I've been telling you for years till I'm skinny. It's like talking to that wall. Come on, what game are you on? Right, well, I wanted to do it. You what? Well, I, I couldn't help noticing how you've been looking a bit whacked lately, you see. Yeah, well, is it any wonder I'm running round after you two? Right, right. Well, I mean, I got to thinking, didn't thinking, I? Thinking? You thinking? Yeah, well, I mean, he's my grandson as well as yours, and I thought it was only right and proper that I should do me well when I've got time, that is. 
Honest? Well, I wouldn't be standing here with a pot towel in my hand if it weren't true, Vera. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry. Yes, you, you can be a bit hurtful sometimes, <sighs> eh? Yeah, well, I've said I'm sorry, and I am grateful, you know, when you try and help. <laughs> right, come on then, my lad, that's you fixed. Uh, so you're hey. off then? <laughs> yeah. Wait till Dad, you grab him, Dad. See ya. <laughs> Vera. What? This uh, talent night, Friday, at the Queen, you see. Yeah, what about it? Well, <laughs> fancy big chances, like, you know. <laughs> well, we're not yet, Vera. So what are you telling me for? Well, I'm skinny, you see. I, I, I need a soap. Only till payday, a tenner will do. Oh, you louse. So this is what it's all about, is it, eh? Doing your bit is your grandson as well as mine. And all the time you wanted to borrow a few lousy quid. Yeah, but it's 50 quid to be picked up, Vera. 50 quid? You earned the first prize. Could be mine for the taking. Look, no way, Jack. It's an investment, B. Well, if it's such a good investment, you won't have any bother getting any takers, will you? Oh, come on, Tommy, love. Before he has the best off your back. See, it's no good doing it in short bursts. True. You've got to be regular. Well, that helps a lot. You see, I've always known the value of exercise, me, with being a model like. Because you've got to keep your body supple. And it does help to sharpen the mind. Right. Something to do with the blood supply to the brain, I think. Because, of course, you get to know these sort of things when you're mixing the circles like I do. Behind the bar at the Rovers? <laughs> Oh, with top sportsmen. Well, I don't think Derek's in that league yet, because he's only just started. But he does say he's beginning to feel the benefit. Oh, lucky you are. Uh, lucky me? Hmm? Well, it's true what they say, you know, about fit men. Well, what do they say about fit men? Fit in body, fit in mind, fit in bed. Oh, really? Well, any road, good luck to him. And you just make sure he keeps at it, because it's well worth it. Well, you've just got to look at me, haven't you? <laughs> Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Why do everybody have to bring things down to their coarsest level? I mean, all Derek's trying to do is just lose a little bit off his tummy. All right. I believe you. And if I thought he would end up like her, I'd drag that rowing machine to the tip myself. If your Derek could end up like her, it'd be a flaming miracle. £37.75. Have you had your break? In about five minutes. We've got to talk. Yeah. About us. Has it all been said before you went back to Sheffield? No, it hasn't been said. Andy? Bakery, please. Uh, well, Mr. Watts told me well about here. Bakery, Andy. I think Amy can manage here. I'm going to be breaking five minutes, Miss Fowler. Yeah, and I haven't even had one yet. I am aware of that. Well, I thought I might go now. About five minutes or so. Bakery, Andy, now. Row, row, row the boat, jetty down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Ah! Hey, I said, ah, about Friday night. Friday? Yeah, talent night in the Queen's. Oh, yeah, still on, are we? Yeah, if our Vera's got out to do with it, no. Your Vera? Yeah, she won't sub me, will she? Ah, well, don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world, is it? I'd just as soon spend a quiet night in here. Well, surely I can find somebody who fancies a quick 25 quid, eh? Well, it's 50 quid for the winner, isn't it? I mean, I'm glad to share it. Well, you still fancy your chances. Do you, man? Thank you. Forget it. Now, come on, I'm not that bad, Don. Yeah, that's got nothing to do with it, has it? Of course it has. It's talent night, isn't it? Yeah, and how did they pick the winner? I don't know. I've never done one of the Queen's before. Audience reaction. But whoever gets most applause wins. Well, that'll be the best turn, so where's the problem? The problem is, Jack, old lad, it only takes one regular from Queen's to get up on his hind legs, and where does that leave you, eh? You're not going to bring the house down, are you? Nobody knowing you. Not even if you sing like Caruso. Yes, Angela. Hi, please, sir. Oh, 
Yeah, you don't support him, what? You are. A few faces from here make a night of it. I go. You come with us, won't you? And I'll bring a few mates. Where? Friday night, Queen's talent night. I was thinking of doing a turn. A turn? You? Hi, singing. Give them a turn, all right. Ah, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, thank you very much. No, it's quite good, really, considering. So what's it got to do with me? Look, you see, I reckon I'm in with a chance of winning. But to make sure, I need, I need some support, like, so I thought you and a couple of your mates... Sorry, Jack. It'll be a good night, I can promise. Well, then you won't have any trouble getting fucked to go, will you? <laughs> Ooh, Derek! It's only me. Mavis! In here! I, I called in at Peggy's pantry oh, and Mavis. got... Mavis! Derek, whatever's the matter? <laughs> it's my back. I can't move. I thought you were working in the bakery. I'm on my dinner break. What, and you're spending it stood round here? I'm waiting for Amy to finish. Ah, yes, you see, Miss Nelson, she's on a one o'clock break. Yeah, I know. And what are you on? Quarter two. What is the point of me doing all these rotors if you pick and choose your own hours? I'm not. I'm on my dinner break, all right. I'll be back when I'm supposed to be back. Well, yeah, fair enough, but I'd prefer it if you waited in the, in the restroom or the canteen. But don't hang around the store, you see, because it presents a very bad image to the customers. Right. Uh, uh, Amy. Amy, we've got some. Sorry, Andy, I can't stop now. I just want to explain. Have you got the canteen? No, I'm meeting someone. Can't you just give me five minutes? I can't, not now. I said I'd go shopping with Paula. You can go shopping with Paula any day. Well, she has to get a wedding present for brother. I said I'd go with her. Look, I'll have to go. I'll see you later. Uh, yes, number oh. four, Coronation Street. Uh, and will you ask him, please, to call into the cabin first so that I can let him in? Because my husband won't be able to get to the door. No. No. Right. Thank you. Bye. What did they say? The doctor will be round this afternoon, but they couldn't just say when. I feel such a fool. Well, what exactly were you doing? I was just rowing. That's what's so silly. I felt something give. Well, we can't do anything till the doctor's been. So I might as well start the lunch. You just stay there. Well, I'm not likely to be going anywhere, am I? Oh. So, love. Thanks. It's busy in here today. Yeah, it's um, something to do with telephones. Eh? Uh, they've got the pavement up on Rosamond Street. I think that's where most of them will come. Oh, well, he can come and ring my bell any day of the week. <laughs> It's a matter of jars, I suppose. Not your type, I take it. A bit coarse for me. I don't think it'd do much for my career. Oh, no, I was forgetting your career. Me? I'm just grateful I didn't have one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Germany! You're not just going to leave them there, are you? Yeah, I'll shift them after. It's just the woman I wanted to see. Me? Yeah, you like a good night out, don't you? Who's been talking? Friday night, the Queen's talent night. That's very nice of you to ask, Jack, but if your beer found out, she'd have us toasted no, on a crumpet. No, 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 it's, it's, it's not like that. No, 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 you see, I was, I was thinking of doing a turn, singing, like... You? Oh, I've done a lot of it before. I mean, if it was down to talent, then you no bother I'd walk it, but it seems it isn't. It seems you, you've you got to have a bit of support in the I, audience. And you, you want see, me so, to be well, that I thought, with well, you and your mates, Sorry, you know, yeah. you'd, you'd, you'd have a good, a good night. Not expecting be... anyone. Feel free. <laughs> Can I have a gin and tonic, please? Yeah. Thank you. Has Mike been in? Uh, no. No, no, he hasn't. Uh, are you expecting it? Ah, uh, no, not especially. Remind you, I wouldn't mind if he did turn up. Oh, that's nice. Goodbye to my dinner. Oh, right. Yeah. Just the woman I wanted to see. Here we are, Mrs Phillips. Two weeks' papers. Oh, Thanks yes, very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Hello, love. Hi. Is that it? Yep, for now. Any news of your dad? Uh, yeah, he's uh, coming back next week. Oh, so your grandma must be better then? Uh, seems like it. 
And it must have been a bad do. I mean, he spent a lot of time over there, hasn't he? Well, he's not got a lot to come back for, has he, really? See you. See you, love. Bye. Hi, Steve. Hi, Dom. There's a bit of fun, isn't there? Well, he's not got a lot to laugh about, has he? I mean, this court case hanging over him, Mum and Dad split up, then a burglary on top of everything else. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Do you uh, think he'll come back? Who? Jim MacDonald. Well, why shouldn't he? Well, cleared off a bit smartish, didn't he? Well, his mother was seriously ill. I know, at least I know that's what he said, but with things the way they are, you couldn't blame him for wanting to change his scenery, could you? It happens to be true, and he is coming back next week, according to young Steve. Do you know, I still can't believe them two mean him. Not Jim and Liz. Oh, I know it happens all the time, but I can't believe it's what them two really want. Well, it seemed pretty definite about it to me. I don't understand how two people who've cared for each other and loved each other and been through what they've been through together, how do you turn your back on all that? Yeah, well, not everybody sees life the way you do, do they? Why me? I mean, do I look like all I'm fit for is running the Jack Duckworth fan club? We've got news for you, kid, eh? You weren't even first choice. <laughs> I mean, you really know how to make a girl feel wanted, don't you? It's been on at all of us. And you both gave me the same answer, I take it. Mm. Well, I wish I did have something on a Friday night. Oh, you and me both. Oh. I mean, you haven't. My social life right now bears a passing resemblance to Antarctica. <sighs> Hey, it could be a laugh. What? My social life oh, oh, is oh. hilarious. No, Jack's talent contest. Hey, what have you been drinking? Hey, come on! How long is it since we had a girls' night? You're serious, aren't you? Oh, well, I'm game if you are. Come on. Right, you're on. <laughs> Jack? Yeah? You know that talent night you're on about Friday? What about? What time does it start? Well, well. Right, Derek, well... If you've got everything you want, I'd better be getting back to the shop. Do you have to go, Mavis? Yes, Derek, I do. I may need something. Well, then you'll just have to wait until I get back or get it yourself. Well, how can I do that? Look, the doctor said that you might be like this for a week. Now, oh, you can't oh. expect me to stop off the shop and be at your beck and call. I thought you might show some sympathy. Oh, look, I'm very sorry for what's happened. I can see you're in considerable pain, but well, I can't be on hand 24 hours to molly coddle you. Look, I'll... I'll try to get back later and see if there's anything you need. You think the same as the doctor, don't you? But it's all my own fault. Oh, he didn't say that. Good as. No, he, he said that this sort of thing is quite common. Yeah, among folks who suddenly take to exercise when they're not used to it. Yeah, but he was only trying to be helpful. Yeah. He doesn't want to see you back on your feet, only to be flat on your back again by overdoing things. Oh, look, Derek. Mm, I really have to go now. Oh. I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Oh, my. Oh. 7.48. 10. Thanks very much, love. Bye. Bye. Hey, you're supposed to be in Lytham. Ah, well, we were till an hour ago, and with a little bit of luck, it won't be long before we're back there for good. Your girl said you're going to look at a bungalow. That's right. Is it all right? Oh, Rita, it is more than all right. It's just what we're looking for. Oh. We've put an offer in. You don't hang about, do you? Well, there's no point. We both thought it were right from the moment we set eyes on it. Well, if it's what you want. And you're both sure of what you're doing. Because, I mean, it's a big step to take, Audrey, isn't it? You know, moving away from all your family and friends. Well, Lytham's hardly the other side of the world, is there? No, but it's far enough if one of you gets left on your own. Oh, Rita, come on. If we all felt like that, we'd never do anything. Oh, true. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Oh, take no notice of me. I didn't mean to put a dampener on it. But I, I just couldn't help think, you know, my own situation. I mean, how would I have been fixed now if I'd gone to Florida when Ted wanted us to? Yeah, I know, but, well, it was different with you and Ted, weren't it? I mean, well, you knew. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, I did. <laughs> Believe me, if anything is going to give Alfie a new lease of life, it's getting away from round here. Well, good luck to you. Both of you. Not pretend that I'll not miss you. Oh. He's been a good mate to me over the years, Alf. Well, you both have. Still, it's obvious. That's what you want, isn't it? It can't come soon enough, believe me. <laughs> well, I hope it does more for you than it has for your brother. Hey. Eh? Hey, it's been sat there with a face as long as the broom handle since he come in. 
There you go. Oh, well, you're a great advertisement for Happy Hour You, aren't you? Eh? I mean, look at you. You got a face on you like a toad with belly ink. You don't have to stop, Steve, you know. Of course, okay. What's up? After the day I've had? Oh, God, you yeah, keep forgetting. Yeah, yeah, you're working, aren't you? You know, it must be a proper shock to the system after the cushion life you've been having in Sheffield. Shut up, Steve. It's good to see them teaching you some manners as well at this finishing school you go to. Look, if you haven't got anything better to do than sit around making factious remarks, do us a favour and leave. Serving you. Who? You know who we mean, eh? eh? That you fancy it better by. Look, she happens to have a name, Steve. So it is, it? I don't want to talk about it, all right? She giving you the elbow. She has not given me the elbow, Steve. So what's up, Red? Nothing that concerns you, all right? You know, you think you've got problems. What? I remember David Myers. Yes, Steve, he was in my class. Uh, yeah, well, I bumped into him today and he's only married and he's got a kid on the way. So? So? What kind of a life's he going to be having, huh? I mean, who wants to be lumbered with a kid at our age? Ah, just the fella. Eh? Friday night? No. I'm sorry, Jack, I will not lend you a ten. No, 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 no problem. It's sorted. Sorted? Alvira. Well, she's changed the tune, hasn't she? I managed to convince her she were back in a winner. I've told you, you've got no chance. Oh, you reckon, do you? Well, I reckon you're in for a bit of a surprise, buddy boy. <laughs> Friday? Right. <laughs> yeah, we'll be in this time, yeah? All right, see you on Friday, then. Yeah, thanks very much. Bye. <sighs> you decided to come on, then? I thought you said half an hour. I know, look, and I'm sorry. Honestly, the traffic, mm -hmm. you would never believe it. Who was that? That was the estate agent. Oh, our estate agent. Yes, he's got a couple who want to look round and they're coming on Friday. Oh, does it sound promising? It does, actually, yeah. They've been trying to reach us since yesterday. Anyway, they've had a look round outside and, uh, well, it seems to be what they want. Supposing they make us an offer? Well, it depends what the offer is. No, but I mean, we won't be able to give them an answer, will we? I mean, it depends on the bungalow. <laughs> it doesn't anymore, no. That wasn't the only call I got while you were out. Oh? No, the estate agent from Lytham rang. They've accepted our offer. So, if these people like our house... We'll be on our way! <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! 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 Derek, let me help you. No, 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 The slightest touch, Mavis. I'm sorry, I just want to help. No, well, you're not doing... Oh. You, you don't know the pain, Mavis. It's... It's exquisite. It's like hot wire being thrust through, through, oh, through one's vital organs. You'll just stand there, Mavis, pull the chair out for me. Oh, yes. Don't expect me to move chairs about with this affliction, do you? No. Uh, take, take that. Uh, gently. G uh, gently. Uh, I'm going to write to the makers of that damn rowing machine contraption. They're marketing a lethal weapon. Oh. Mm. Thank you. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, now, Derek, the doctor did say you'd assembled it wrong. Doctors don't know everything, Mavis. They just think they do. Yes, well, anyway, in a week, have a rest, and he says you'll be fine. Uh, I doubt I'll ever be the same man ever again. Yes, well... <sighs> look, I've done your soldiers for you, and your egg won't be long. You're not boiling it too hard, are you, Mavis? Because you can't push the soldiers in if the no, eggs are too... No, it'll be just as you like. <sighs> look, here's your anti-inflammatory pills there. <sighs> One... Four times a day, after meals. Good Lord! I'm going to have to eat four meals a day. Oh, I'm sure it doesn't mean full-scale meals, Derek. Probably just a biscuit would do. If it meant four times a day after a biscuit, it would say four times a day after a biscuit. Well, you, you don't want to go overeating, Derek. I mean, if anything, you should be losing weight, not putting it on. I think you've done enough tinkering with my body, Mavis. If you hadn't said I was filling out, I wouldn't have got that damned exercise machine in the first place, and I wouldn't be sitting here suffering. Look, all I said was that you should be a bit trimmer. You said I was getting fat. Your fault, I'm in agony. Your fault, I've got to eat four meals a day. 
And if my boiled egg wasn't overdone before, it certainly will be now. Oh. Take them slippers off. Hey? Put these on. Oh, they pinch my feet. Anyway, I always wear my slippers in the house. Not when people are come to view it, you don't. It looks bad. Give all that. Yes, it does. I mean, if they see the man of the house all slopping about in his slippers, they'll think, oh, oh, I bet he never does a hand's turn. I bet it's been years since them drains have had a good rotted. Hey, and put a tie on, please. Look, if people like the house, it won't matter if I'm dressed in the pyjamas or a bus conductor's uniform. I don't want any arguments. Thank you, Al. I've gone through a lot of trouble to get this place clean and tidy, and I don't want you making it look a tip. You know what they say does make people buy houses? The smell of newly baked bread. Oh. Do they? Oh, yes. Well, I might have guessed it would be something that involved drudgery on my part. Yeah, well, you see, the smell of that, it uh, makes people think they walked into the, the dream home. Oh, well, do you know what I read that sells houses? If you get vases and vases of fresh-cut flowers and put it all around the place. Yeah, well, I dare say we've got the makings there. We've got flour and uh, yeast and that. Do you know, I have never baked bread in my life, Arthur, and I'm not going to start now. Yeah, well, my mum, never, she never bought a, a shop loaf in her life. She always baked her own bread. I can tell you how, if you like. Tell you what, you get your wallet out and rush down to the florist and get dozens and dozens of lovely blooms, and then when you come back, I'll bake some bread. You know, there's no talking to you some days. Oh. <sighs> you know, I never know what to do with my day off, me. Well, what about your boyfriend? Gordon, is it? Oh, Gordon. Was working. I think. Don't keep promising myself. Next time I have a day to spare, I'm going to go into Manchester and have a really good look around the art galleries. Oh, it's years since I've been. No, I don't think so. Well, another nice outing is a good browse in the public library. A browse? Mm. And not what cows do. Hello, cabin. Oh, hello, Derek. Do you want Mavis? Pardon? Yep. Right, I'll tell her. Bye. You're Derek. Is he all right? Well, no, not according to him. He has some cream, does he, for rubbing in his back? Yes, it's that sort of cream that spreads heat to the injured muscles. Oh, yeah, transvestite, it's called. It's ever so good. Yes, well, um, Derek says he can't get his hands round to the back where it needs rubbing in, so can you nip home and see to him? Oh, heck, I rubbed some cream on for him last night. All wrong, according to Derek. But uh, uh, I'm just not very good at massaging people. Oh, well, I am. I'm a bit of an expert, as it happens, cos you remember Wayne that he used to go out with the footballer? Well, he was always getting these muscular injuries, you know. And it's amazing what they can pull for ballers. So, so I believe. He used to say I had magic hands. <laughs> well, anyway, I can massage your husband if you like. Oh, no, no, no I couldn't put you to that trouble. Well, it's no trouble, no, I'm not doing out. Well, it's very kind of you, but... Oh, but, go um, on. You said you were no good at it, and here's the girl offering. <sighs> it wouldn't be right to turn her down. What's up? What do you want from me? Come and look at this. I've got another shoplifter. Oh, right. Oh, no, no. I, I don't think so, Miss Fenwick. It's absolutely classic. Look, she's hovering. She's waiting for that other woman to move away. No, no I know this woman. It's Vera Duckworth. She used to work here. So what difference does that make? Well, it's just that you're mistaken. That's look at all. that. What? She, she just slipped something under the kid's covering. Oh, no, no. You're wrong on this one, Miss Fenwick. Oh, look at her face. Look at her movements. There's guilt written all over her. She's a lifter, all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, we used to do Wayne with this, so he swears by this. Said it did him more good than anything. Ah! Oh, ah. be careful, Raquel. Oh, I am, don't worry. He's in good hands. Oh, it's all right, Mavis. It's just the stuff was a bit cold, that's all. <sighs> yeah, but in a minute or two, you'll feel it go all hot. Sh shall I take over now, Raquel? No, 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 no. It's exactly right, Mavis. Exactly right. How does that feel, Mr. Wilton? Oh, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I thought you'd be feeling the benefit. I am. I am. Are you studying this, Mavis? Raquel's technique? You just watch me, Mavis. You'll soon get the hang. 
Look, I know the woman. Like I said, she used to work here. She's my next door neighbor. Shoplift is a shoplift. You've not actually seen her take anything. Oh, look at the push chair. She's got the stuff under the baby. I'm sure of it. God. We need security, don't we? I'll get hold of Jeff. We'll let her get through the checkout, and then as soon as she gets outside, he can challenge her. Oh, hello, Curly. Hello, Mrs. Duckworth. Is that all your shopping? Yeah, why? Well, is there something wrong? You don't mind if I say hello to Tommy, do you? Yeah, I do mind. Look, he's comfy as second. Oh, well, don't that... mess around with him. It's OK. It's Look, all right. put him down. What's all this, then, Mrs. Duckworth? I think we'd better go to my office for a chat. Don't you? I don't know, you've got nerve to call me a thief. Vera, I'm just trying to understand what you were doing. Yeah, cos I could have you, you know, calling me a thief in public. You had stolen goods in the pram. You hid them underneath the baby. You can't deny that these items were in the pram, Vera. Because the basket were full. I can't push our Tommy round it and buggy him with them trolleys as well. And them baskets too old enough. Look, you've been seen before. We got the evidence on our security video, so you might as well admit it. Uh, thank you, Miss Fenwick. I'll handle this interview. Interview? Is that what you call it? I'd call it third degree. Damn disgrace. I shouldn't be stuck here. This baby wants his dinner. Well, we can get someone to look after the baby. Can you tell us, like? All right, I did put a few things in his buggy. But like I said, the basket was full. Vera. Look, I was gonna, I was gonna put them on that conveyor belt as soon as it was my turn. Didn't check out. Look, I was gonna pay for them, Curly. I what? I don't know. You can stand there and call me a thief after I took you into my own home. I don't know you can. Vera, Vera, that's got nothing to do with it. I've just got my job to do. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten that. Oh. Wonderful. Well, it's all absorbed now, Derek, the ointment. You've got amazing hands, Raquel. Well, you're not the first to say that. I think he's had enough now, Raquel. No, no, Mavis, no. I'm getting relief. Relief from the pain. Well, you've, you've been very kind, Raquel. And you've been kind, Derek, but I'm sure you've got a lot of other things to do. Well, no, not really. Nothing special. I get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people when they're suffering. Well, Mr. Wilton has to rest now. I am resting, Mavis. And, oh, I'd better get back to the cabin to help Reed. Well, you go. I'm quite all right, Mavis. And Raquel has to go now. You have to go now, don't you, Raquel? I can always tell when my husband's had enough. He gets overexcited, very tired, and, and the doctor says... I'm perfectly all right, Mavis. I'm getting a great deal of benefit. Yes, well, we, we mustn't be selfish, Derek. Uh, say thank you to Raquel. He's very grateful. Well, you know, any time, you know, if I can help somebody to pass along. Yes, well, you have been very kind. Thank you. Oh, Derek, cover yourself up. You're lying there like a, a great beached whale. Ow! Oh, me... Oh. Right. Well, I'll call the police then, shall I, Mr. Watson? We'll turn this business over to them. Police? You can't do that. We won't have to if you own up, Mrs. Duckworth. You save yourself a lot of trouble and be home with that baby a lot sooner. I'm admitting nothing. Uh, no. We won't be bringing the police in on this one, Miss Fenwick. I don't see the point in prolonging this. On this occasion, Mrs. Duckworth will take no further action. But in future, when you're shopping at Better Buys... Shopping at Better Buys? In future? Are you daft? You can't pay me to shop here again. We have a store to run, Mrs. Duckworth, which means we have to make checks on customers in certain circumstances. Come on, Tommy. I won't forget this. I think you'll find, on reflection, that you brought this unpleasant experience upon yourself. You will not tell me what I should be thinking. Because the pair of you can get knotted. There wasn't enough evidence for a court case. <clears throat> No, there wasn't. And you know why. Well, I, uh, <clears throat> I think she's learned her lesson. 
Look, I have to say this, Mr. Watts. You made a total mess of the whole thing, and in my opinion, it was deliberate. You didn't want the woman to be caught. Oh, that's ridiculous. You had no business approaching her before she reached that checkout. Of course we couldn't get a conviction in court. The woman never had a chance to pay. I use my discretion. As manager of this store, the job I'm paid to do. You jumped the gun because she was a neighbour of yours. You went totally against head office procedure. It's clearly laid down what we do in these cases. Well, I think it's disgraceful. And I'm quite sure head office would agree with me. Right, I'll go and see if Don's ready. Eh? You see me when you see me. Hey, and, and if I win, I'll bring you some chips back, eh? You all right? Listen, before you hear it from somebody else, you'd best to hear it from me. Uh... What? I had a bit of trouble in Better Buys today. What kind of trouble? Curly Watts picked on me. Said I've been thieving, shoplifting. Oh, now, come on, Vera. What the flaming hell have you been doing? Nothing. I did nothing. I went shopping with our Tommy. I had him in buggy. And I had some of my stuff in, in basket. And I had some stuff in buggy. And... God blimey, are they going to do you? No. They're not going to do me. Because I've done no. That Curly's fault and that sidekick of his, that woman. They started rummaging about in buggy saying I'd been thieving. So they're not going to do you? No, I told you. I just thought I'd tell you in case somebody else told you. Curly Watts, he wouldn't have a go at you for nothing. Have you been thieving, Vera, putting stuff in our Tommy's trolley now? Come on, tell me, love, I want to know. I don't know. I don't know what happened, uh, and that's got on his truth. <laughs> it's all right, then. It's all right. Uh, you'll have some more sherry. Uh, uh, just a drop, then. Go on. Uh, and if you are, you will, Audrey. No, Audrey can't. Oh. She's driving. I'm not, you know. Thank you, Mavis. Honestly, he thinks I'm a chauffeur. He can drink as much as he likes, and I'll <laughs> stick to orange juice. <laughs> How's your back, Derek? Well, painful, Al. I think I'm going to need a long course of massage. What do you, Derek? Oh, well, in that case, I'd better ring the doctor's surgery, get them to recommend a physiotherapist. No, there's no need for that. And we know where I can get all the massage I require, as and when I want. Uh, yes, but uh, amateurs are no good to you. What you need is a professional. I'm going to make sure you get proper attention from somebody with a lifetime of experience behind him. Mm, well, back trouble someday I've no problem with. Touch wood. I mean, it could just as well, because I'll be playing a lot of bowls when I get up to with them. Oh, oh it just sounds idyllic. Mm. Audrey, you must be so excited. I, well, I can hardly contain myself. Uh, well, I called into the local bowling club and they said I'll be very welcome. Oh. Well, you know why, don't you? Because you're classed as young blood yeah. against that lot. <laughs> <laughs> young oh. Well, that'll give you some idea of what the membership's like. <laughs> <laughs> You'll fit in very nicely, sweetheart. <laughs> and one for yourself. I'll see you in a bit, Carl. Tell us a bit. Excuse me. Excuse me, Bobby. That's such a good thing. Yes, and, and Denise, there you are. Cheers, Jack. And a little love in a pint of it. Jack! Right. And a pint of it. Cheers. Cheers, sir. What's that you're drinking, Jack? Well, I always drink this when I'm singing. It's Newton Riddle, it's all the peculiar barley wine. It kind of uh, lubricates the throat, you know. Oh, I might have expected this from you, Jack. A small one? Uh, is that only what is a miserable sin? I mean, is that all we get for clapping and cheering a teaspoon full of gin? And a shared tonic? I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring my hands together. <laughs> oh, come on, don't be rotten. I mean, it's supposed to be my mates backing me up here. I mean, I shouldn't have to bribe you. Frank Sinatra doesn't have to pay for both the clapping, oh. does he? Yeah, but he's good. Yeah, but so am I. I've done I'm good. I'm yeah, well, I just say I will, but it's like I'm sure I'm deaf, mate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Welcome to Talent Land at the Queen's. Now, let's get the show on the road, and first up tonight, seeking a grand prize of £50, your first turn, where the field's very own Mr. Billy Nuttall. It takes a whole lot of love to keep my baby happy. It takes a whole lot of love and a whole lot of hope. 
It's a lot of rubbish. You want to wear me? Hey, that's the place you're Vera. Didn't you fancy coming? No, she likes stopping in and out with old Tommy. Happy as a summer. Oh, no. No. I've no great water, have I? I'm sorry. We're going to get some better buys, won't I? I'll get you some tomorrow. I will. I don't know how I'm going to buy. Buy some, but... Oh, don't worry. Your granny's here. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. <laughs> I know someday I'll be And what's going on in the city of Scotland When my hands hold Thanks for coming. I was beginning to think you weren't going to talk to me again. Maybe I shouldn't be doing. Look, I admit it through me. You having a kid and all that. Came as a bit of a shock. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm sorry. But well, I still think you should have told me. I thought we had something special going. And I still think we could have. I know. I should have told you. It's just... Well, I thought you might get frightened and... I didn't want to see you walk away. I had no intentions of walking away. Thought you knew that. Clapping, There's no room for pity in the big time, especially tonight. Clapping is what it's about, so you save it for me. All right. Well, Jack, <laughs> it looks like you're on. Right. <laughs> Gonna listen to some real singing. Good luck, mate. <laughs> oh, it's a bit of a flop this time of night. Jack's my last term. How about you, Don? Oh, give her, I can't sing. Well, what about one of you girls? There must be somebody here can sing. Only in the bath. Yeah, that's where I sing. Well, then do a song together. I mean, all you've got to do is sort out who gets the tap end. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Well, I'm game if you are. Great, you're on a drink. Hallelujah. <laughs> I give you the one, the only, Mr. Jackie Duckworth Jr. <laughs> They won't let them. A life without care, she's broke, but so he don't. Hates California, and it's cold and so damp. That is why the lady, that's why the lady is a Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Hey, where, where are you going? You're going to give us a song. Do what? It's only a bit of fun. They've never sung before. Ah, ah, you're late. Hey, hey. After all that, their show comes to dust cart. Go on, tell me, what do you think, Mike? Well, you were experienced, Jack. You know, I think, uh, I think the expression is something else. Yeah, something else. That's what I am. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We have one final turn for tonight's talent show. Two girls I know you're going to love. They call themselves the Sob Sisters.
never know how much I love you. Never know how much I care. When you put your arms around me, oh, I get a fever that's a hard to bear. You give me fever. Bangos, you prize me, because these two are good. How would you know you're tall and deaf? Only when you're sick. In the morning, Only when you're sick. Clear off. Vera, I think we should have a little chat. Yeah, well, you've said enough to me already. No, no, Vera. Listen, I've got something to tell you, and I think you should listen. Well, you'd better come in then. Make it snappy. You may not realise this, but I put my job on the line for you today. Oh, don't give me that. My assistant, Miss Fenwick. Yeah, she's a right cow. No comment but she had you spotted, rightly or wrongly, as a shoplifter. And I've got to tell you, Vera, if you'd have gone through that checkout without paying for the items in Tommy's trolley, well, on the other side, there'd be a security card waiting for you. And after him, a policeman. But I told you I was going to pay for that stuff. Maybe, maybe not, but now we'll never know. I'm not calling you a liar. That's why I did what I did. Yeah, well, nobody asked you to do anything. No, and I wish I hadn't now. Miss Fennick can cause a lot of trouble for me over this, you know. And you've seen her, you've seen what she's like. She'd take great pleasure in dropping me right in it. Vera, look, I'm asking you as a friend, are you honestly telling me I should have let happen what was going to happen? Yes, I am. Fine. Right. Vera, look, I'm trying to help. I know you must be short on money. I mean, would a loan help? Look! I don't want your charity. Just leave me alone. 